Hi, Peter. Okay. You are a city official. We're not on the record yet. An official presenter. If you haven't spoken to Marlene about uh, your, your attendance tonight, please make sure you speak to Get on the record. All right, sir. Good evening, everyone. This is a caucus of the Jersey City Municipal Council. Today is Monday, June 10th in the year 2019. We had a five scheduled 5.30 p.m. start. It's 5.44 p.m. And to save everyone time, we have a full house. All nine members of the council are present. With that said, Councilman, Council President, uh, it's yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, members of the Council. Um, thank you all for, uh, for coming out tonight, and I'm speaking to the audience tonight. Um, this is a City Council caucus. Um, it is, uh, well, it's a public meeting. It's not a public hearing. And so there'll, there'll be no uh, public speaking, uh, just the, the members of the administration and city officials will be speaking to the City Council about the specific items that are on this Council agenda, including the items that you're, you're here for this evening, uh, whichever position or side you're on. Um, so th with that being said, I'm going to ask um, if you can, until this item comes up, if I can ask you to wait outside so we can have some seats available for our um, City Directors and others who will have some items on the agenda. We will move as quickly as we can through all of that stuff, and then so we can get to the specific short-term rental legislation, which which you're all here for. So if I can ask, if you're not here for, if you're here for the short-term rental legislation, um, if you would be kind enough to go to the council chambers, we'd appreciate it. Uh, I'll go get them when it's right. time. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. There'll, there'll be no further discussion about it until that time. So. Okay. So. Thank you. If you can, if you can accommodate us, I, we'd appreciate that. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Stacy Flanagan, who is here with uh, the Director of Health and Human Services. Right. Stacy, you want to take it away and tell us what yes. you're trying to do? Yes, I'm going to start with the, the quick and simple resolutions. All right, please, to the please order. remove yourself quietly, please. Uh, number Yogi. 19, uh, the resolution of the Jersey City Municipal Council accepting monetary gift from WellCare Health Plans to be used to fund many grants at local organizations. Um, I think you've been hearing me talk about the Healthier JC Mini Grant Program. WellCare saw that we were giving out mini grants and wanted to provide extra funding for that money. Right. Make sure we call you back. I will come get you, so yes. you'll see me, I'll wave, and I'll say we're about to do the legislation. Thank you so much. Thank you for your cooperation. Director Flanagan? Yes. Well, wait till they move. You can't hear me. We won't be able to hear Stacy. And you have to talk twice. Stacey. Okay, I think we're quiet enough to hear Stacy. Okay, resolution 19. It's a resolution of the Jersey City Municipal Council accepting a monetary gift from well care health plans to be used to fund mini grants to local organizations. I mentioned at our last uh, meeting that uh, we received $99,000 worth of uh, mini grant proposals as part of the Healthier JC plan. Uh, the city had $30,000 set aside for those mini grants and WellCare saw that we were giving this funding out so they offered some additional money so that we could fund more agencies. So this is an additional $5,000. Any questions about this, council members? Uh, just, 
This is for the uh, and, uh, So the Healthier JC mini grants cover six different um, areas based on the blueprint for health that Jersey City su supplied to Robert Wood Johnson almost four years ago. Those are maternal child health, uh, health education, STD awareness, open space and um, violence reduction, uh, mental health awareness, and, and education in general. So WellCare was interested in providing extra funds to support uh, maternal child health programming. So it enabled us to extend the amount of funding we were able to give out. Just for the record, so could I just get copies of anything on the violence reduction? Maybe so the violence grant. reduction I mini grants, yeah. The, uh, so, so just to be very clear, we haven't created any mini grant program specific to violence prevention, but what we will submit next uh, meeting is a ceremonial resolution is what we thought, but uh, Peter, Peter told us that would be very confusing, so we'll share with you the list of all of the grantees uh, and all the wards and a, a, an example of what they're covering. So there were 47 applicants um, and it took us a while to find $99,000 um, from a, a series of grants and awards that we've received so that we can fund everyone that um, has applied. Okay. So we'll Give share that on. with you. So uh, number 20 is a resolution authorizing the city of Jersey City to accept a gift from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. This is $4,000. Um, this is to cover a few more of those mini grants. Um, this was awarded to the city of Jersey City um, to as a finalist for the culture of health um, award and we will know more about that award this is just like a gift because we became finalists and if we win um, we'll get another gift in September okay next item 21 uh, enabling resolution authorizing the execution of a grant agreement and acceptance of a grant award from the American Heart Association um, last year we came to you with a mini grant from the American Heart Association to do health education in some of our communities. We did a series of activities in churches and at all of the farmers markets and we have gotten a new grant this year to do the same. Okay, and your next item, 29? Um, 29. No, I think it's 39, sorry. But it's not. 34. So, 34, then 39. 34, then 39. Yes. Sorry. So 34 is a resolution authorizing a contract with Jersey Cares to conduct a free computer literacy workshop at the Maureen Collier Senior Center on behalf of the Jersey City Department of Health and Human Services Division of Senior Affairs. So, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you have any future plan to 28 pounds feet? 34. Um, they. They were interested in Maureen Collier, but we can create any greater interest everywhere else. Yes, please. Yeah. When I stopped by the uh, seniors in the 28 Patton Street, there's several, they have senior, as you mentioned today, they set up the desktop computer. Yes. But they have no program, so I thought they and, and, get a chance. So and just so you know, Joan is attending the rollout on Friday at the Jersey City Housing Authority to see if we can create a better relationship there and has a meeting tomorrow with NGCU about computer classes okay, for so seniors. Okay, so 28 guys. Okay. okay. And 39 is a resolution ratifying the award of the contract to American Multi Cinema at Newport Center for the rental of movie theaters for the senior citizens for the Department of Health and Human Services Division of Senior Affairs. Any questions about that, Council? Hearing none. Okay. Ordinances. So the ordinance. Uh, we're going to start with the first reading of um, number 12. Where is Eric? Hi. You want to join me with the chair and Margaret so we're going to share with you um, over the last several weeks and today we just did some final um, requests of interest oh yeah get the get the board 
Uh, these are some locations that have been recommended. We're open to more recommendations um, of locations based on interest in sharing the gear of um, food truck parking. Do I need to give you one? Okay. I just need one. For the work. So we've been talking for many years about food trucks and um, in light of sort of the next um, phase of where the city is going, we looked at um, some particular locations uh, because the area that we had given free food truck parking over the last two and a half years has now started to ignite and there is actual some business activity happening plus some real um, food establishment. So where we were on, on Grand Street between Hudson and Green, um, we had proposed originally in the original plan before many of you were even here to be on York Street. York Street never worked out because of all of the actual uh, construction going on down um, in that area. We've tended to see many people at Grand Street. We've started seeing many people at Grand Street oh, as you fight over these spaces. We started looking at how do we need to really take a look at these spaces and control that situation. Uh, Sussex Street became a location where we can no longer support because of additional um, egresses for the new tenants in that building. And so we, we started thinking about pushing some food truck um, relationships out of downtown and into areas where we currently have food deserts. Uh, plus, uh, looking at the MLT, MLK Container Village, and Eric can talk a little bit more about that. So we have on the sheets that we gave you, um, Eric, you want to talk a little bit about all the different people you and Margaret have talked to over the course of this time? Sure. <laughs> so um, I was speaking with uh, Chris Bernardo. He's the uh, executive director of the Journal Square SID and with Council of Bonciano about uh, some programming for uh, around where the, uh, the fountain is. It's something he wants to kind of uh, activate. And uh, he asked for uh, some food truck parking. So you've seen the diagram, there's a, there's a space that's made for, for two food trucks uh, that would go in to enhance uh, any programming that he does in the space, whether it's music or uh, something more, uh, something more cultural, like, uh, like poetry readings. Uh, and uh, I went to at least two uh, community meetings regarding that, and I generally, generally well received. You were there. <laughs> uh, so in order to do that, yeah. a part of the ordinance, just so you're aware, we'll is going to come at 14, because in Chapter 160, the food truck ordinance specifically states okay. no food trucks in Journal Square. So that's why we're starting with Journal Square to make you aware that there is a former ordinance that's on the books that never allowed really? food trucks in I'll Journal Square. So we need to remove that, and that is part of ordinance number 14 that you'll see. Okay. All right, so yeah, there's a change to that to make this possible. Uh, those two spots there. Uh, MLK Container Village is uh, a project where we're creating a, uh, a retail incubator for uh, new and aspiring entrepreneurs. And uh, on one side will be four ship containers that will fit probably two, uh, two entrepreneurs per container, so that's about eight. And the other side has room for two 25-foot uh, food trucks. And you can see in the uh, last page of the, uh, of the handout where they, where they would go. And that will be managed in the uh, very, very last page. Well, it's not color. <laughs> So then we looked at um, Jersey Avenue because there's been yeah. Yeah. Jersey Avenue's been a lot of actual food carts that have been like operating there not um, with legal authority, um, but there's been a direct um, correlation of the number of people in the medical center building seeking out places for food. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, the, 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 the diner there doesn't serve dinner anymore uh, Monday through Friday. So uh, that leaves the basically uh, commissary is the only option that the medical center has to 
you know, they could get some more options and, and the food trucks definitely want to be there. So uh, that was the reason for uh, Jersey Avenue. It's like right outside their, uh, their main, uh, yeah. main entrance. And we visited with NJCU. Yeah. Uh, there's two food trucks there right now, uh, but based on the capacity, uh, they, they were very open to allowing more food trucks in that area. Well, it basically will allow. Hold on, Council yeah. Person Ridley. The food trucks around the GCU, right? Like you said, we had two there for the years. Mm -hmm. Are the new food truck spaces taking away the meter parking spaces on the They will take away some, not all, in that area. I'm That's sure. going to be a problem. This is why we're presenting it to you. Those food trucks are parking there anyway. There are food trucks parking there in the metered spots, but nobody pushes them out of those spots, um, and there's additional spots that if NGC wanted to, they can invite someone onto their property what I was and park yes. there, and then they would receive funding for it, not this. I just want to point out to the council they got a replacement for the ordinance that was on. Oh, okay. There was some editing. I'm not yes, entirely was. sure. The editing was downtown. Um, like I said, the York Street, the Sussex Street, um, and the future uh, interest of pushing food where there is no, not as many food options. Cayman <coughs> um, Point. Yes. So basically, we have a smattering of uh, food trucks that end up uh, on that lot, usually an ice cream truck or two. Uh, on nights and weekends, uh, you have a lot of soccer going on there. And the weekends, you have baseball, soccer, football, whatever sport you can in the three fields they have over there. So uh, that's city owned lot, and it'd be very easy to, uh, to set up and, and create uh, a few more food options. Because they do have a small concession stand, but it's rarely open. So yes. can I ask a question then? Yes. Being that that thought came up, and you want to put food trucks in the areas where kids are playing. So the concession stand that, that is there, those proceeds go to the teams that are playing. Right. So it's what we're saying that every we're going to have a big percentage of the proceeds then that the food trucks are making that are going back to the league, right? That's not for their profit. Well, the funding that we charge, we would charge them to be in this spot, and we can't earmark this chart, this funding for the recreation. Because my point is, is that if we do that, we're going to kind of like put our life support that big, that that lead the leagues that play there, because they're not going to have any funding. Well, we can very simply not allow food trucks on days when the concession stands open. Yeah. So, what days are you going to have the food trucks there? Well, we would know if a concession stand is open because the health department have to go out there and then we can just say there's no parking here today. They're parking there anyway and nobody's charging them. So what we're saying is that we're going to take some responsibility in ensuring that people know that that's an option because in the past people felt it wasn't an option because it is technically a park. And there's technically no no food selling in any park. Um, and so unless we make that decision, which is why we have some future locations in Berry Lane being one of them, mm -hmm. because we know that people are driving up to Berry Lane, because the original plan with Berry Lane was to place several uh, areas where it could hook up and not need a generator to not cause all of this other noise in the park to provide some opportunities. Because of the cost that never happened, and but we're seeing a lot of people go to where there are people, right? And once they take away the parking spot of other individuals, they tend to not pay for them. And then we don't have anything on the books for the police or the parking authority to manage it. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing on the book saying, well, there's something that says you can't park in a metered spot, but there's nothing that says you can't hang out in a place that doesn't already have a meter, right? And so when someone's driving by, mm -hmm. you know, maybe doesn't know that law, we retrained them several times down at Exchange Place. So we, after some conversation, we've come up with some locations. If there's additional locations where you feel that there is a food desert and there should be more access to food based on what your community needs, we would like to honor that. Especially because it does take up real space for others. And therefore, we would be, we're, 
we're looking to use Park Mobile in a different way to capture the fact that this would take up two spaces. One food truck would take up two spaces and therefore being able to monetize that when a resident is trying to park somewhere. This is a really, so the really difficult. So the future location. Cave in yeah, those are just some ideas. Some ideas. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's like stage two or three. Yeah. Okay. Just just letting you know, like this, two, this, stage this stage is two, the first salvo in getting this uh, off the ground. We can we can over time with. Uh, so let's talk about this phase and phase we can, one. We can we can yeah. find the proposal. Any other questions about this particular? Um, I have I have plenty. So. Yeah. If you have other locations, right? We wanted to try to get it all in the ordinance. Obviously, this is a yeah. first reading, and it could. Mine, mine are not specifically on this phase right now. So mm -hmm. so for, to the council people for Ward A and B. Um, so were you in the loop on a lot of this at this point, or? I'm speaking I'm specifically on zone three. Yeah, zone three. So you suggested that you spoke with the NJCU. Can you tell me who the consultation was? Um, a couple of people in administration, and they uh, directed me to one, some guy in security, John, and he. Ron. Was it Ron? Sorry. Ron, and he didn't really have any objections uh, because technically where we're going to put these spots are not on NJCU. Properties, uh, JFK. So, so the, the quote I got from, and we, we were just at uh, the NJCU Foundation dinner this past weekend, right? Uh, the quote I got was, leave Gus and Billy alone, right? Gus and Billy are the trucks. So this is, but so I'm just yeah. telling you what I'm saying. We totally hear and, that. And, and, the, and the conversation literally was, um, did somebody talk to, talk to you about this? Uh, some, someone called up and said they were thinking of doing something about this, but they didn't really give me any like clarity about what the really, what was going on there. Well, I'll just say that this was attempted, particularly around the NJCU, around Zone 3, um, and I shared this with you it's like four or five years ago, and I can assure you that the, the stack of emails I got from NJCU, I, you, I worked at NJCU at the time, was about this high, um, from faculty and students and everyone else objecting to the idea um, with, uh, with regard to some of the changes that were proposed back then. Um, I was an employee of NJCU at the time, I'm no longer, um, and so I abstained from that whole process, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but it never actually came to a final vote at that time. Um, and now it's summer, and so they're, they're really not going to be aware of like this change because there's just nobody around on the campus. And so um, the other thing I'll add is that you don't have a spot on Audubon, and, I, um, and, and so that's where one of the locations are, like very, has been there for decades. On decades, and uh, um, if you haven't worked, walked the campus in terms of how students move around campus, the students on the the west end of campus towards the science building, the G sub, mm -hmm. um, which is the student union building where they all congregate and everything, um, they all go to that Audubon Avenue stop over there, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so for them to kind of make the trek up to Kennedy Boulevard, it's actually a little, literally yeah. a, a little slightly uphill. Um, I would suggest to you is it going to be. Uh, dissuading to some folks to like actually go out there and get some food and so some folks would suggest I, I personally would ask that you with with the council persons Ridley and Prince Harry's uh, acquiescence if they were willing to kind of remove that for another day for another consideration and to have further conversations with NJCU about that because I'm telling you I think they're going to be yeah. pretty objectionable. So will you hear that and if I just can explain something if we're going to create a law right it's i mean we had this conversation with councilman you many times because he's like no food trucks except my hot dog guy right right and and, and so we right. wind up in a really difficult, difficult situation, situation and and we're not the one we're the ones just providing you recommendations but at the end of the day it's really hard to say we're going to do this across the city, but my two guys don't have to pay, or someone else. So I'm not suggesting to make exceptions or to like. I'm just saying at some point we just have to. What particular person that, that I would add is that I was at a, a meeting at the, the Charter High School, and there was also interest from the students. So maybe we can consider West Side Avenue or Carmel Place as another alternative, as opposed to along the Boulevard. So just to, to have a broader conversation about it. Right. That's all. That's great. I don't know if the visibility. Right there, but uh -huh. I think the spots in JFK would be for the hours that they're set. That would be for food truck parking only. So we're guaranteeing they have a place to go. That's the versus they roll up parking now, and if there's a parking spot where they, can I, I understand the rationale, but I'll yeah. tell you, 
we talked about this. So um, Gus and Billy are guaranteed a spot right now. They've got a monopoly. And so I'm not saying whether it's appropriate or not. I'm just saying and, it's and not going to be viewed. Right. I'm, I'm just saying it's going to be viewed as by the community be. as a whole as like a push out of like <coughs> now they're going to be fighting for those spots with other potential then other food trucks. Maybe that's that's the fair thing to do there mm -hmm. to, to, to equalize the playing field around there around that stuff. Um, but I think having a conversation with NJCU and the community around there would go a long way towards making that because in, in the short run. Um, when they come back from summer break and they find that their their food truck isn't there any longer and, and that there's something else up there and maybe maybe they'll all love it at that point. I don't know. So but, uh, can I ask you? Yeah. Simple. It's the first thing I'm not much care because the Central Avenue side the business community don't want any food trucks in the Central Avenue because there are uh, 250 merchants and almost a 30 percent is of food related business. And the guy who pay two, three thousand rent and uh, all kind of inspection, all kind of rules and regulation. And the, even like a Chinese friend, when you dump the oil, they have to pay special fee for so and so. But meantime, food truck guy just move in, do food truck business, you know, only high pick time, like a cherry pickers pick up the most customer time, and it's a hurt existing food business established in that area, so they don't want it. So I said, fine. And you just say that hot dog guy, only one guy, except we don't want it, but let me correct you, Stacy. Yes. That guy located Bowers, not Central Avenue. We'll yeah. Make sure okay. that. So yeah. don't say it again, okay? I know, but we did call Listen. you. And, and the you number said two. Yep. You know, number two, you say food desert. George said no food desert, period. So if we're not putting the food truck, just find the other excuse other than food desert. There will no food desert in Georgia City. Actually, so if you say that, different. you gotta give a definition of what they means food desert, but I don't think so. What if you make a uh, 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 definition food desert? George said no food, even though small corner heads provide certain food, it's not food desert. So now, this is what it is, college. Closed area, food truck, they made the decision of their own. Like a university one, but five. But sometimes there's state rules and regulations that. Yeah, oh, fine. Like Whatever they want, it's fine. It's not but so easy to just. Man, put it when they use that, the public street is a different street. So before we go forward, we gotta see the fee. If they want a food trucks in downtown area, how they get the fee paid? Monthly, well, weekly, what daily? Park Mobile Daily. Daily Park more Park. daily. Yeah. So now, downtown, they were, I want to shop. Well, close the door. That'd be yeah, close the door. So, when they use Park Mobile, this is a keyword. When you use a Park Mobile, you're going to designate a certain parking spot or they can put in the uh, food truck. Grand Street, any between Hustle Street Water for any spot, or just you're going to designate a certain spot? So, we're going to designate certain uh, spots, but we removed Grand Street from the updated uh, okay, ordinance. Fine. So, now this is what it is. If you pay, so in other words, more like a fee pipe daily. Mm -hmm. So, Zone 1, which is a downtown, $200 per day. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's based on the resource, right? That what they make. Uh, we've been told they make up to two thousand. That's right. So resource means that. Did you look at their book? Well, this is what they tell us. We well, talked to them. Yeah, no, we removed that one from. The, so we removed that area completely. Based on. Yeah. Um, so let me put it this way. We did it aligned to the full day of parking okay. for one spot mm -hmm. at. And uh -huh. any park mobile location is twenty dollars. Okay. So if you're taking two spots, mm -hmm. right, that's forty dollars everywhere else in the city. But because that was, which we removed, um, was waterfront property, yeah, it was higher rates. Uh, there's been a back and forth, so we removed it from this particular order. So can I ask one thing? So, so they're going to be parking. Wait, Michael. So they're going to be, be no parking there. None at all. 
Yeah, Grand Street and Sussex. Okay, let me let me, let me let me ask this. Wait, one. Councilwoman each? didn't get the chance. Councilwoman Waterman, you no, finished? No, no I just no. want to each make sure. Each person, Councilwoman, oh, Councilwoman <laughs> Waterman, stepping. Yeah. Each person, Councilwoman Waterman. Are you going to okay? So well. you're going to yes. remove them from the um, the so location? So originally the, the so the ordinance that was on the books three years ago was right. a pilot project for Grand Street, York Street, and Sussex. Right. York Street never really worked out because there was a lot of construction. Whoa. Sussex is now uh, a series of egresses. Okay. So the only area that would work out would be Grand Street. Over the every month, there's over I'm going to say 40 tickets given out okay. on Grand Street because of whether someone doesn't have their license, someone is parked illegally, someone's parked okay. in front of a, a fire hydrant. And so the Exchange Place Alliance has been mm -hmm. calling us every day to manage a one block radius. Mm -hmm. um, that's too much for, for my staff. Okay. I don't have enough RHSs mm -hmm. to manage lunchtime at the waterfront. Okay. So we said for right now, we would remove that and we'd come back when we have a plan for how to better manage the Exchange Place waterfront because there's a series of new restaurants there. If we did nothing, everything on Grand Street is susceptible to the 300-foot rule, which is Hudson Green right across the street. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't allow them on the walker front, right, um, we would have to come up with another plan because it would either require us to charge more mm -hmm. to have one police officer or one parking right. authority person manage that one block. Right. And so we said maybe this isn't the return on investment we're looking for at this time. Huh. Okay. So we removed the exchange place waterfront from this ordinance mm -hmm. and we we're going to continue meeting with them. In fact, the business administrator has a meeting tomorrow with them. Okay. Right. Well, that's 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 point. Okay. I just had a couple community meetings there, and the feedback that I got was that residents still wanted food trucks on the waterfront, but they had concerns around the quality of life. The garbage, the quality of life, they're yeah, yeah. sleeping so, in their cars, so, they're right. trying to, they're fighting for those spots. Right. Yeah. Right. So, There's a lot of issues that we need to unravel there. I just, so, I but my concern would be if we, we did the blanket ban now, that it becomes hard to get It's not a ban. We have an ordinance currently on the books that this doesn't have any in. So, what we were doing was removing those locations because it was a pilot. But, but I meant it's a bit, nothing is allowed on the waterfront if we, if we pass this, correct? But this, this is separate new parking and what the rever it's the yeah, it's a reversal of that. So However, Harborside themselves manage their parking lot. So they invite individuals on Christopher Columbus, which is their area. They typically have three food trucks there during the lunch schedule, and they curate it. And so what we're coming into, like, the next phase of this is, like, we've asked to have a meeting with all of the SIDS mm -hmm. because we understand that the Central Avenue SID doesn't want right. food trucks. We understand the historic downtown city doesn't want food trucks unless they're having an event. Um, well, the exchange place also doesn't want food trucks unless they um, curate it. Because mm -hmm. they know what the community wants and so they feel that they're the ones who are responsible for this area. So we said we would look to a better way to do that. Okay. Who is the BAB? Um, oh, here you are. Yeah. I wanted to share. <laughs> you did it? This is it. the mayor's tool. This is for you. So, what do you want? I mean, we always want food trucks, but we want it in a fair way. We need to be able to sell it to our brick and mortar, which we have been working on for two years. At this mm -hmm. point. It can't be a $20 day fee, and it needs right. to be enforceable. That's what we're. Uh, if you're just going to remove it, you're going to be there anyway, so now I want to know. Who's going to enforce it if you remove it entirely? There's what do you get more? Just say what? Mm -hmm. um, you guys make a big mistake. So I think that the trick would be to set a fair price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, 
So if the one that they have a copy of, the fair price is $200, it's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, The one that we switched out, that John was working on today, with those edits, was nothing on Grand Street. Why, so do we, we why do we switch it out? Uh -oh. <laughs> so, so now let me start. Each, they should face each I, I let me just, finish that okay. now. Let me, okay. let me start it. Okay, each person, how many future they can own? Um, there's no law against that anymore. Remember, we changed that several years ago when we changed Chapter 175. So each person, person can own their three, four future. Is right. that right? It's not a small business anymore. It's right. enterprise now. Big mega business for food truck today. So it actually for small local business. I just want to know. I'm saying because based on 40 years small retail business experience, and then you guys make a big mistake. If university put their own things, Kevin Point, yes. Understandable, but when they have some gain, they should be because those kind of fundraising, actually part of the fundraising, to help to uh, little league, the baseball, or soccer, so and so, you actually take away their small fundraising effort itself. Okay, we, we can go on. We're not, we're not talking about so that. So we can just look. I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah. It's very simple. I, mean, I got a personal app, which is it's okay with counsel. So let me ask you this one. Ask to withdraw I want this and. Uh, Comfort, just let me finish. I went to one of the events, Bergen County, what they call, what they call the one of the park, I forgot the name. They have a stand, a full stand. So an event, when they bring it to Fucho, actually Fucho company pay them thousand dollars per day, the full stand to use that. Yeah. In other words, they need to change change another change. chapter. So that's a different ordinance, very similar to how they did the farmers market ordinance. Mm -hmm. So if they do that, like a certain area, they should pay that. That they who have all the gain, that organization should pay certain fee, not city of Jersey, because they are located fruit shop inside the park. So, so I would, I currently, I no parks are allowed to sell food. Let's. I'm asking the, my request yeah. to the administration yeah. to withdraw this and bring in all the stakeholders for each of these different areas. Thank you very much. From the ward council people to the groups and communities and institutions that are around these areas. And just just like you mentioned, the, the farmer's market, I think kind of, we went through a similar thing with that in terms of bringing all the stakeholders together. I think doing that same thing, you'll probably get to the finish line on all of this stuff. It's, uh, it's tough. It's, uh, I remember the changes in trying to get this through. So. I appreciate the effort. I think one thing I'd ask too is that as we keep doing this, it just maybe have whatever you need as a recording just for like, uh, just to give us a sense you don't have um, super uh, kind of knowledge on it, what this enforcement plan looks like. Mm -hmm. So if, once we do this, how are we enforcing it? Because I know it's great. Yeah. Your staff well, is talking. Yeah, so the gonna, issue here the full, is it's parking, discussion. right? And neither right. one of us run parking. Sure. So we're trying to, <laughs> right. and we're, 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 Elizabeth has great frustration is, Illegal parking, mm -hmm. and and by the time someone gets down there, they're one not respected by the, the mm -hmm. food truck owner or the employee of the food truck, and they're told not to go. And then there's like a fist of cuffs, and mm -hmm. so like we we deal in this um, situation pretty much daily. Um, and you know sometimes there's fires because they're not paying attention. Um, th there's a lot of um, particularly on Grand Street a lot of chaos. Um, and so we're trying to figure out like what's the best mm -hmm. way and we'll share with you all, including Councilman Yu, the official USDA food mm -hmm. desert locations of our city. Yeah. Um, because if you weren't aware, most of our city is actually a food desert, which is affordable access to healthy and mm -hmm. just food in yeah. a very social right. justice framework. Yeah. Um, and Grand Street's not that, it's a $12, $15 meal and it's geared towards a different population. Yeah. So that's, that, that's for, to manage an executive office outdoor dining takes something other than what the city is capable of doing. And, uh, okay, we, we got to move on and you got a place know, to go. So, uh, well, let me ask this question. If we table this, then what? What will happen? The food trucks down on Grand Street will continue to park illegally. They will continue to get tickets. 
I mean, they'll, they'll continue as, as it goes, however it is right yeah, now. So. The, way it, the way it has been going is kind of ad hoc, right? I've made relationships with a number of the food trucks, and they'll contact me and say, hey, this guy's parked in front of a, you know, a fire hydrant. And uh, I call up parking and send them down there. Uh, on one occasion, Danny was here, he, he was there with me. Uh, somebody had taken one of the smaller ones, mm -hmm. and they had chained it to a, uh, a sign. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and then apparently it had been there for a couple days. So uh, that involved calling DPW to get the lock ground off so we could unhitch it. To, then we had to call the health department to look inside, and then I had to call the, the police department to come and tow the thing. So there was it's a it's not just it's not just one uh, enforcement is 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 fire officials. Uh, yeah, and then they, I had to pay overtime because my staff mm -hmm. stopped work. That particular person that was called down there stopped at four, and he okay. couldn't get out until six thirty. So the cost of us removing that food truck probably cost the city six or seven hundred dollars. And by the time they get to the court, then comes. Yeah, I was just talking about it. Good thing, good thing. But it, 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 the enforcement is, is, a, is a Megilla. It's it's the fire department. Uh, when you park too close together, the trucks park too close together. It's parking when you're too, too close to the corner uh, or a fire hydrant or that roundabout in, in Grand Street. Um, it's the, it's the, it involves the health department sometimes if they're, uh, if they're not maintaining their vehicles properly. So it's not just like, we can keep sending parking down there, but it's not always just a parking thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a fire code thing, sometimes it's a health department thing, sometimes it's all, uh, Danny, that's it, it's all free. It's all so, free. Remember when we had to cut the lock off, Danny? Council uh, President? Yes, that was, but we had to go down and cut the lock off. Yeah, but, Joe, we have to go move on, but I'm going to just, just say that health department's issue, the house do the inspection once a year? No, we, so they must show us that they have a truck for initial inspection to get their license for the food truck. Yes. And then, because they're mobile, mm -hmm. right, we can't find them everywhere, so we then follow up based on any calls, even if it's a parking call. We'll follow up because sometimes when they're parked downtown, they're not licensed. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll push one quick question. If this was to go into effect, if there are food trucks outside of these zones, they'd be able to find well, most of them that are outside of any zone, like most of them parked anywhere in the city are not parked legally. In fact, they park right where it says no parking through the corner because yeah. there's no other place to park. And then they're opening themselves up for other things. Yeah. So it really would be beneficial if you all thought of five locations where you think a food truck should be in your community. Mm -hmm. Tell us. We can then take a look at it because we have someone parked right on JFK in front of somebody's house. Right? And the person calls every night and complains. And then I get the call in my house on my personal cell, and then I have to call the police mm -hmm. because my staff stop working at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. So I can keep staff on late at night, but it's going to shift the way we do business. I already have staff working Sunday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And if I need them to work later, because that's also another food truck issue, it's like 3 a.m. and on a corner by a path station or a light rail station. And those are things that we also talked about because those make areas unsafe if they're there by themselves. That's true. Right? And so there's not going to be any like one solution. No, it's not. Um, so we want your That's input true. in the multi-tiered solution for this process. And when we met, we, we started this process with Exchange Place because yeah. that was the place where we had the most number of complaints. Mm -hmm. uh, so we sat down with Elizabeth, we sat down with Eric and Margaret, we reached out to everyone we could. Um, and then when people don't respond, then it's like, we're stuck yeah. here. So next time, if they, they do, listen, you want to stick around? Next time, if they do food show, operating without license, then tow away while we keep chasing them. Okay. I mean, listen. But that also... Okay, needs, there's a dead horse. Yeah. They need to be here. So what I'm going to say is, in the next ordinance, 14, and why it's very relevant, because exactly what you said, Council Manoon, is the fees and charges and the actual role to establish vendor parking so that when we have locations, that would be an improved situation. This enables the parking authority to then tow because the parking authority never had the right to tow. So, uh, chapter 14 uh, is amending, 
the gate fees, um, to establish actual parking and giving the parking authority the right to tow. Otherwise, they just get a ticket right now. Mm -hmm. Then, Danny, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And with that. Thank you. Thank you. So now, Stacy's staying around. Jake, right. come on up. And this is uh, regard to oh. the there was a okay. request by Councilman Robinson and, and the Huffington yes. Waterman, right, to yes. have uh, JSEP uh, be here at this caucus meeting, actually at the previous caucus meeting. Yes. And then uh, now there was a formal request. We all received letters in the mail. Um, from uh, the attorney for JSEP, um, suggesting that, uh, that they were not going to be showing up, but uh, we have uh, a couple of the directors, commissioners, I should say, or yes. board members here, um, who are here of their own accord. And um, I'm going to turn it over to them. Okay? Councilor, you will get it out. Turn it over to them today okay. for an opening statement. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're still waiting for our next council uh, caucus board meeting. Okay. Um, uh, but what, what I can share with you from our last board meeting um, is that majority of the time is spent in closed session regarding um, the uh, audit, uh, the forensic audit of the organization. Uh, after the closed session was over, I think both Jake and I, um, and Jake can speak for himself here, um, just had concerns of the next steps um, with the organization. Um, and so for conflict of interest, right, I run a large department and I have concerns that um, we see very few people and we have a, a very large budget to plug and um, there's great inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've gone five and a half months without an executive director. And uh, there is a current personnel committee that's supposed to share with us the short list for executive directors, and we have not received it yet. Uh, I, would, I would just add that I know this administration and this council are committed to uh, underserved populations mm -hmm. and the work of JSEPT is important. Uh, I don't know that it's moving in a process where all the board members are fully in the light of what's happening. Um, it's my understanding that Sudan Thomas has applied to be the permanent executive director. Uh, this raises a potential conflict in that he continues to serve as the chair of mm -hmm. the board and he also appointed the personnel committee. Uh, Stacy and I have made overtures for a subsequent board meeting, and they have so far fallen flat. Uh, and so I think there's a fiduciary duty as board members, um, but also uh, we know that this administration and this council supports the mission of JSEPT, and uh, so we felt the need to show up here nonetheless tonight. Council President, can I ask you Council President Robinson and Council President Young. I mean, you got. I just heard you say, uh, Stacy, that you're still waiting for some word on an ED search, and on here it says that JSEP, which the board oversights, right? The board alone, because they say they, they don't really report to us, and I think. So my issue is the the whole uh, process is being flawed, right? And finding a new ED. Um, I, I reached out to the president. I mean, the director, e, acting ED. Suzanne Thomas and told him that I really would like to be a part of the search because I, I felt it was important for the under, you know, privileged community. Um, he, I, somehow they appointed Mark Rowan to be the, the head of the search. And Mark, I talked to Mark the other day on the phone for about an hour. Uh, he said that Sudan Thomas called him to make sure that myself and Joyce were on the board after Sudan Thomas told me that he was wanted to be the board member. And and I told him, Mark that day, and he said, if that's the case, like he said he thought the reason Sudan called is because the administration gave him pressure. And I told him that is not true. It was just, I talked to Sudan about being a, a part of the search committee, and I told Mark, I think that that right there disqualifies it from being a search committee. We have the acting ED, we have the, um, board chair who is a part of the search committee who appointed the whole search committee and he is on a short list to become the the new ed 
Um, I, we wanted to make sure we started this process over. From what I assume is that they're still moving forward with the process without us. I know I haven't turned in any of these applications that were sent to me or graded them. I don't know if Council Person Waterman turned hers in. I talked to um, the president and told him how I felt about it. I asked him to be here and he told me that he could meet with me on Thursday or Friday because he had a conflict of interest. I mean, a, he had a, diff, a conflict of schedule, so he couldn't be here today at this time. And then, you know, two days later, I received a letter from the attorney saying that it's not a conflict of schedule. It's just, I guess, a conflict of interest that they don't really want to have any oversight or anything to do with the council as well. So, and, and I will say I'm, I'm here because not only do I work for the city, um, but I manage a tremendous amount of grants and I'm trying to partner with the organization um, in our, the work that we do. We're neighbors. Um, so I have a vested interest in what happens there, but you're my first job. My first job is here and, and that's really important to me. I think I've made it really clear that I, I don't believe this is the time for an executive director. I think any executive director coming in to this role is going to have great difficulty if it's not done with transparency. And I've said that several times. Um, and you never, so just I guess to make sure it's on the record, he never, the, they never discussed anything with the board as far as the job search, uh, as far as the, um, the description of the job search, where it would be posted, who would be on this committee to, to find a new director. Is that something that, am, am, am I going somewhere else? Like, did, you, did the board have input on the committee or any of we the We received process? an email in April with an updated board of assignments from the acting executive director. Um, so we received an email telling us who was on each um, subcommittee. And from there, uh, you know, some people that were on those committees before were questioning why they were on a new committee. Uh, and that didn't seem so concerning at the time. I was like, oh, I'm on the adult programming committee. Mm -hmm. I had a red program. That's seems to be normal. Uh, then I received an email after, um, there was an email that went out to, to both of you telling me that the job was posted. And, if I, and then here was a, a, a sample of the job description. Um, I, I responded to Mark saying I'm pretty disappointed with the written description. I felt that, that it didn't have any um, fundraising. I felt that it didn't have any leadership. I felt that it was strictly financial, which to me is a COO, not the uh, president or CEO of a nonprofit organization. Well, let me just make it clear that I'm not doing First, it's, a, it's not part of the C. Actually, it's an autonomous agency, yes? It's an autonomous agency that receives a lot of funding from yes, the city. Yes, yes. Like a uh, Georgia City EDC. Yeah. Autonomous agency, they right. get funding by the city of Georgia City. Right. Fine. Is it their only source of funding? Well, there's other federal oh, and state. Yes. Yeah. So, like yeah. go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, finish council. Yeah. So then, they have a board members, right? Appointed by mayor. Then the role mayor will have to play by the mayor. Oh. I mean, you come up to tell all those stories, I'm not feel comfortable to hear that, really. Because of first, you're not the CEO, you're not the executive director in that place. That's the person who can answer our question. Worst the case, if we refuse, if a major fund comes from the city of Jersey, right. you wish you freeze their fund until they show up. That's I mean, it. what is this? It's like a we, it. somebody come to our city council, crying like a baby. Oh, my boss is so-and-so, my mother is so-and-so, come on. We old enough, so please. I don't cry. It's not actually insult to the council member itself. So if we issue, if that's the case, if the way councilman uh, uh, Robinson is really concerned, then we, as a, as a whole, we pass the resolution. You have to show. I don't care your personal schedule. You have to show next council also. Other than that, we're gonna freeze funding. 
I well, believe let me, you counter counter water, water, water. Water. Let, me water. Just, let me just make a statement here. We did request him to come from the last meeting, Michael. Good. And every time we request them, I think we request them at least twice. The second time. Second okay. time. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. water. Okay. And he has not shown. All right. We requested the whole board, and these two still decided to show because we did request the whole board. The rest of the board did not show. So with that in mind, just like I agree with Michael, because we do give them funding, now we need to find out a way how we can stop the funding. So that's it. I suggest that it's no more. It's nobody else have to come. Low the of One at a time, please. The yeah. lady was speaking. Yeah. No one has to come and speak any longer. We just have to figure out a way how we have to stop the funding that we give Jason. That's it. You don't have to come. If but, don't want to come, I mean, we give money. Right, she, don't I don't think she was finished, counselor. I mean, because we're giving money, Probably, they come down. should answer. We do the many times. because we're giving money. So, could we figure out a way yeah. how we could stop yeah, that? Yeah, that's money? that'll be my okay. task. Yeah. Well, can we look at the provisions of the agreement that, that right and then figure out city, another person how we can stop with. that agreement and the transference of the dollars? Mm -hmm. um, the second thing I would ask is that um, <laughs> yeah, these are city dollars. There's also been CDBG money that's gone over there in the past. Correct. And so, given our we have a fin as council members, we mm -hmm. have um, uh, a responsibility yes. and a fiduciary oversight for the, the city's monies on these matters. I would ask the law department to look into the idea that um, if the city council can investigate, I know that um, this is it's a, a, not an often used power, but um, yes. the power of subpoena, and to be able to use those subpoena powers to be able to find out and get to the bottom of this as to like how our city dollars are being spent or, or maybe potentially mis, misused and misappropriated um, so that we can make a determination as to the future of funding uh, of this, these JSEP dollars that uh, that we receive from, from from the federal government, I guess it is, yeah. right? And it comes down. All right, we'll let you know what you're and, then, and then the second thing is with the, with the letter that initially came from the the attorney for JSEP. Would love like to hear your does have to be tonight, but um, your opinion on the letter because it was addressed to you directly. Right. And then we were copied on it as to their their appearance and whether that was uh, inappropriate for them to be here. They suggested uh, that that attorney did. So, mm -hmm. other council members. So if I agree with that, we prepare the resolution, yeah. let them respond. If it's not based on the letter, the resolution has to clear say that if we're not show sure, next council meeting such a day, then we're going to freeze the funding to provide satisfaction to this council. So we Great. Stop the money. Folks, folks. Right. Okay. Please do. So don't but they might right. be sitting on cash, too. So. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. No. Anyone else? Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We told them twice. Stop. Stay out of the rain. Oh no. That's not she's good. here. Can she just go? No, no. We we kissed them. You will be getting. Um, so Mike's still the only person left from Health and Human Services, but he'll be getting the copy of the um, refugee. Angela, you have Angela here too. Oh, Angela. Okay. What's that? I went through all of those. I kept staring at it. What? Oh, it's okay. Let him go. Um, okay, we have uh, David uh, Rubler here. David here? Yes, he certainly is. Uh, sir, um, you have a resolution, right? <laughs> Ordinance. Yeah, this Ordinance is. Ordinance 3.8. Alright, come on up. Please come forward. Yeah, yeah what? We have a bunch of other folks that are probably way smarter than I am. In case council has any questions. Oh, are there other folks here on this? With regard to our project. Um, why don't you just tell us why you're here, David? We are here. Um, there is an ordinance on to make the Hudson County Improvement Authority the designated entity uh, responsible for redevelopment for uh, the what will be the new courthouse parcel, um, the parcel across the street from the present courthouse of 595. Was there someone else you wanted to bring up? Um, I don't need them unless there's any questions from council that, that wish to speak on the matter. Council members, any questions on Ordinance 3.8? Okay, Councilman Bogiano is recognized. Yeah. Hey, I've been going to meeting after meeting with Tommy and Jace and the others on this whole issue. Sure. Two hours ago, I just found out about this. Nothing was ever said to me, right? Now, the people, everybody is getting together because there's a lot of problems going on. 
It's not only Ward C, it's Ward D, and it involves a lot of Close other people, some from downtown. Uh, I think we have to discuss this a lot further, and I want to know more about what's going on. As I said, in all the meetings, nobody ever said a word to me about this. And all of a sudden that pops up, this, this pops up. So uh, I'd like to know more, I'd like to have it explained, I'd like to sit down up in the county with Tommy and have this whole thing explained, okay? This is, this is part of the whole design build process that we spoke about when we did meet with you. Yeah, I know. In the county's yeah. office, and this is, this is the, the beginning of, the, this is the, the first well, part that would allow this us to build this well, through a design build. See, here's what's happening. There's a group of people meeting and they're a little tired of some of the things going on. Some questions have to be answered. Sure, we'd be and, uh, you know, it's, I'm not running this group. I, but I'm uh, being advised by them. They're telling me everything that's going on. So I want to sit down with a couple of them and yourself and Tommy and Craig and sure. talk about this whole issue, all right? And as uh, the county has always made this stuff. Oh, yeah, Tommy, and I uh, think he will know, continue to. But, uh, and we'd be happy to talk to any community groups we may have with yeah. regard to the project and, uh, you know, at least what we have, you yeah. know, with regard to it so far, which I've, you know, been briefed on the last, the last yeah. time. And, and we're, we're, we're having a meeting, and all of a sudden, two hours ago, I just found this out. I mean, I should have received a call. I should have been notified way prior to this. Not your fault, okay? Sure, yeah, I can't speak to that. I apologize right. that that didn't happen. Okay. Okay. So, right. so you'll have a conversation with the Council of Ogiano. We have a meeting. All right. Like for the final adoption anyway. All right. Okay. Thank you. So thank us. No, no, I'm not. Councilman Yun is recognized. Councilman Yun. Can you just say CND? Okay. okay. I'm very simple. So is it the way Councilman Rich is going to say courthouse County Court as a project. Do they have any some master plans they've built already? We have a we have we have a court master plan, um, which is basically we've projected out the court needs for the next yes. uh, 20 years. So yes, we do have a master plan as far as the court needs, mm -hmm. um, and this building would take us through uh, that master planning process, um, and it would supply all the needs for the courthouse and the courthouse complex uh, until. Um, so my concern is that you know they were one of the uh, commercial centers. Right? So we'd like to have some more, uh, not detailed, but I feel an outline of the whole type of project and what it's going to be. You know, sure, so I mean just simple. And, and, and to, to really cut it down to its bare essence, basically everything that is in 595, the, the greenish building, <coughs> the that, that entire building will go in, with the exception of two courts, uh, that entire building will go into this new project that, that spans from York Avenue uh, to 139. Yeah. And then the two remaining civil courts that are in the green building mm -hmm. will go into the Brennan Courthouse. Yes. And, um, you know, where you see the, uh, you see the present courthouse yeah. um, in, in that exhibit that we have there, um, part of that would be come I know that this is the right way to do from the you know, designated, you know, Hudson County implemented as a designated developer. It's the right way to go, but we'd like to have some more detailed plans of what they're going to be, even sure. commercial, and, and, commercial and, and, and to be clear, I don't want to, I don't want to pretend that we have finalized plans for this at all. We're still in the design phase, mm -hmm. um, and, and we're quite a ways away from having a final project that would actually have the building. This is just one of the steps that we need to get into place so that we can um, maneuver the courthouse project. Uh, so when they have some kind of project in, in place, they would have some community input as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. And we've been yeah. trying uh, to meet with Councilman Borgiano as much as possible, as he yeah. is the Councilman. Where, where well, it's not me really. You're talking about the Hilltop Neighborhood Association, sure. which is right now getting a little annoyed with some of the stuff going on. I spoke to several people today that are having a meeting uh, about the park that was promised and how things have gone back and forth, back and forth, you know, with the size of the park. And the people uh, throughout most of General Square are tired. They want what they were promised. And this is what is going to be a major issue in the summer block. As I said, I was going up to see Tommy today because I, you know, uh, but if I have to, I'll go see him tomorrow. But I want to sit down with all of you, all of you, and bring those other people because 
people are getting a little tired of what's going on. I think that'd be great. And, uh, and you know, we'd be happy to talk with anyone as yeah. well. That's nothing to do with you, all right? <laughs> well, I appreciate you saying Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, we've heard the, ma the pl master plan, the master plan, the master plan. Well, we're going on now um, about uh, four months, and we they want to be, the people want to be assured of the park and a few other items. Absolutely. And I, mean, I think right. we, can, we can assure the rest of the park. All right. And I think that's something that the county executive is very committed well, to. The size of it is what's the problem. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, David. Okay. David, can you get your contact info? I have sure. it. Oh, you have it? Okay, um, let's see, uh, Angela Davis. She's in Cuba. Hi, everyone. Uh, did anyone get to um, the meals at Willow's RFP committee evaluation? I'll send them around. Yeah. Okay, so Angela, is this on? Yes. Hello? No, that's not a PA. Oh, oh it's just for the. Okay. Yes, I always it is. forget. I always Hi, forget. Angela Davis. Okay, Angela Davis, uh, Director of the Division of Food and Nutrition uh, for Health and Human Services. And you're here about? We are at the Competitive Contracting Award um, for the Meals on Wheels 40. Yes. contract of uh, 40. Thank you so much. Please continue. Great. So um, we came to you a, about a month ago um, asking for permission to do competitive contracting um, for the home delivered meals um, for our seniors or Meals on Wheels program. So we had um, two bids um, or sort of sort of two proposals um, on, we received on May 9th from two different companies. Um, one is Whitson's. Um, we currently work with, who's our current um, contractor, and then uh, Revolution Foods, which was a new um, proposal. Um, they do. They currently do um, a lot of school food, um, but are looking to get into other areas of working, getting providing adult food, but primarily focus a lot on fresh food, not as much on frozen. Um, but they both submitted pr uh, very strong proposals. Uh, we had an evaluation committee um, that consisted of. Um, five staff members um, from um, a couple different departments. Um, so we had our, someone from our fiscal department, Christian Buchel, um, someone from the business administrator's office, Melissa, uh, one of our congress senior lunch aides, um, Michelle LaMonica, and then our in-house um, nutritionist, um, Diana Lee, and I was also on the committee. Um, so we evaluated both the proposals from the two vendors. We um, also visited the facilities of both of the vendors, and then we had a food tasting um, of the meals that we received, um, which included, um, they weren't part of the committee, but we had a senior group of seniors who also came to taste the food as well. Um, so we had three seniors from our congregate sites, just to, who can kind of get out and are mobile. Um, and then we also had our caseworkers take sample meals out to four um, Meals on Wheels clients to also get their input as well. Um, so after all of that sort of um, input that we had um, from the, about the two different vendors, um, we actually ended up awarding the contract to Whitson's, which is our current vendor. They ended up receiving the highest amount of um, points um, between the two different, um, looking at the evaluation criteria that we had, which if you look on page, hold on, 16. So we, because it's competitive contracting, we had to evaluate both of them, not on necessarily the issue of cost, but um, issue of how strong their proposals were and other experience that they had. So we looked at how well they followed the format of the proposal, the cost, um, how the, well they wrote their, and talked about their project scope, um, sample meals and menus that they provided. We looked at qualifications and prior experience, their staffing capacity, um, references. I called both of their references, um, people who are also already working with them, and then their overall, like their commitment to ver diversity. Um, so all of the evaluators, uh, the five members, evaluated um, Whitson's hire, um, but it was mainly the issue of the tasting of the food that actually was the, what put Whitson's um, ahead of Revolution Foods. Um, everyone tasted the food, and, um, and they felt that um, that it just it tasted better. Um, there was some issues with like some of the seniors felt that the, in particular that the food was um, too spicy or was like too much like it wasn't seasoned properly. Um, there also were some issues with how the food that Revolution Foods had was packaged. Um, they're kind of new to the frozen food. Like I said, they 
primarily focus a lot of, on fresh, you know, kind of bulk food that they provide to schools. So I don't think they've quite gotten the that part perfected yet. So for example, like the um, the food wasn't labeled the way we had asked for it to be labeled with like instructions on how to like heat up the food um, or put a label on like with you know nutritional information that we wanted. And then the instructions that I did get to heat up the food were in like in, like they were off. Like when we heat up stuff, it didn't actually heat up to the full amount, the full temperature, um, things like that. And then the, the taste people thought was was um, not as good as the Whitson's food. So we were actually surprised, but <laughs> that actually was the the result because we do we have gotten some people over the years who've said that they didn't like the food um, from Whitson's, but that's not what we found from doing the tasting that we did with, with seven, in, addition, in addition to the staff who all tasted the food, but seven additional seniors that were also um, not part of the committee, but were getting, they gave us their input in terms of the taste of the food. Um, I'm going to ask you to wrap up so we can get some questions. Sure. Okay. Um, trying to think of what else. And then price-wise, there really was very little difference between the two. Um, Whitson's proposal was like five cents um, less than um, than Revolution Foods. So Revolution Foods had bid for $4.90 um, and Whitson's was $4.85. So it was really very little different. It wasn't really a cost issue. It was more the issue of the quality of the food and, and the experience, I think, around the frozen food that we were most concerned about um, that I think Revolution Foods is still working on and maybe in the future that's something that they could, you know, they'll get stronger on. Okay. Council members, questions? Council Mignon. Yeah. So competitive price, uh, compared to last year, what is the same price? This time it's a 485. How much we paid the last year and the year before? So the last the last three years we've paid uh, 464. 464. So they have increased a little bit, but food quality improved already. Yeah, they, bit, right? yeah, a little bit. There. I was I thought that they might come in a little bit more, but they didn't actually come in um, as much as I thought they would. So, so when I first thing you said, thank you for your effort. Really, you did a great job. You know, I'm very impressed with your you know the effort and you and uh, uh, Lee. Yeah, great job. But my concern is that what they say and the, what they actually deliver can be two different things. Mm -hmm. So make sure that the regular basis, check out the food quality, they provide what they supposed to be, you know, those kind of efforts should be already involved there. Other than that, <coughs> fine. Yeah, we're going to continue to monitor the, the, the food quality. I, mean, I think, and we'll walk, work with them also on the issue of variety because when I was talking to our caseworkers, um, that was one thing they felt like the people didn't complain a lot about the quality, but they wanted more variety, which is always a little bit of a struggle trying to balance like how many, how much variety we can offer because we try not to have too much, you know, saturated fat, so we try to not have as much beef, so things like that. So sometimes it means we're having. People like, there's too much chicken, you know, things like that. So we're kind of um, trying to balance it out. But seniors really like to have breakfast, so we might add more of that because it's like a brunch um, option for them that they've really enjoyed. We've been, do we've been doing the last like year or so, so we'll probably increase that. So compared with the last one, is there increase in quality and the variety too, overall? Uh, I mean, I, I think that, I don't know if, I mean, we were, some people were telling us that they didn't like the food, but like I said, when we, when we I don't know. I think the issue with um, with since they made like there's some ingredients that we asked them not to have anymore, so they'll, they'll, they'll definitely work on that. Um, so that's going to be you know a little bit different than before. But pretty much the meals that we sampled are not different than the ones that seniors are currently getting. Mm -hmm. And we asked for more. Um, we wanted um, labeling on the package so it actually has the ingredients, which they hadn't been doing before. They had um, you know the heating instructions and the name of the meal and that, but they didn't actually have the ingredients. We've asked for that because people are more conscious about all the ingredients and like how much, you know, um, the nutritional facts and things like that. The seniors are more, con every everyone's more conscious of that kind of stuff, so. Okay. Council members, any other questions? No. Oh. Two, two requests. Yeah. Do you have a map of the, the clients throughout Georgia City? Um, some sort of visualization of where our clients are for meals on the, for the meals? Um, I think we can. We've been. We actually just spent a lot of time re, uh, like mapping things out. So I think. Well, I'll see if we have, have something we can send to you on that. And then the demographics of the clients. If we can get a breakdown of that. Okay. By locations, if the map should show that, but then ethnicity, and gender, and so forth. Okay. Okay. We can work on that. Anything else? Anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Christine. Christine Barisi is here from the McGinley Square SID. She has a resolution 10-2. It's the um, introducing and uh, approving their, their budget, their annual budget for the McGinley Square SID and directing the city clerk to publicly advertise the budget and schedule a public hearing and directing the tax assessor to prepare an assessment role of properties within the district based upon the budget. 
Christine, I'll turn it over to you if there's anything you want to share with us or, or you just want to open up for questions. I would like to share that we had our first annual business awards. You need me louder? Sorry about that. This is, that's that's an really about your voice. You okay. have to speak loud. Right. This is just for the video. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're happy to um, state that we had a favorite business awards, our first annual, and we can we want to continue doing that. And the businesses were uh, voted by the customers, the local customers throughout the district. And it was a great incentive. They enjoyed it. They received uh, certificates from uh, Councilwoman Prince Ari, from the mayor. They got an award plaque uh, certificate. And, and it was a great evening held at El Cocotero restaurant right within the district. And Councilwoman Mira Prince, Prince Ari was, about, was there, Patrick Stamato, the mayor came, dressed everybody. So it was a wonderful, and we want to continue doing that to build up the esteem of the whole area with our different churches that have been a, a true stakeholder within the, the other high school, the high school, the university, and have another uh, event like that. Okay. Council members, any questions on this? Um, I, I just have a couple of questions. Could, could we get your 2018-19 budget for comparative purposes? Mm -hmm. Is it an increase right now or a decrease, or where, where, which way are you trending? But for the 2018-2019? Yeah. It's, it's just a small increase within okay. the total budget. Just wondering, that's all. Just so a small You just send us that information from the council. Marlene right. will get that and she'll share with the council. Um, and if you have a map for the McGinley Square SID area, just so I can see that to visualize it for myself. Anyone else? Do you want me to email that to you? Yeah, if you can email it to Marlene, it'd be great. All right. And she'll send it and share it with the council. Okay, very good. Well, Joe. Thank you, Christine. You're welcome. Thank great. you. Thank have you. a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. We've got uh, Diana Jeffrey here from the JCRA. She has um, ordinance, uh, ordinance number 10, 310, an ordinance authorizing, authorizing the conveyance of Block 17905, Lots 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, more commonly known by the street address 612-616 Cabinapa Avenue and 91-93 Harrison Avenue to the JCRA. So this is um, commonly known as the Old West District, but I, I want to point out that we've actually, uh, this, we've updated it, um, and this will include the, um, the old police station, the firehouse, and the vacant lot. So. On Communa Paul. On Communa Paul, yeah. Diana, who are they turning this over to the police department? Well, it's being, it's being conveyed to us. Um, for redevelopment purposes, and we don't have a developer in mind. In likelihood, we'll go out for RFP, but we don't we don't have any um, specific project but in mind. I gotta be honest, with you. I'm getting a lot of complaints from people about the redevelopment agency. They seem to be favoring one developer, and that's it. And you know, they seem to be taking away people's land. Diana, I was gonna call you. I tried calling you a couple of weeks ago. I didn't get an answer back. Some of the stuff has to stop. You know, well, okay, we, we, have, a, we have about 75 active projects with yeah, different I developers, and so I, I would really like to talk to you because I'm Oh yeah, Diana. Very, well, that's very interesting. Oh, it's very interesting. Because we yeah. work with more than one. Yeah. But, um, interesting stuff. <laughs> okay, okay other council members, Councilman Robinson, Councilman Young. Uh, 612 and 616 Community Court, is that where the new fire station is going? No. That's the that's vacant the, lot. So at the community garden. Yes. It's not being. My understanding from the administration is that it's not being used as a community garden any longer. That it's that there were. I, I think there was. He's saying it, there was talk of it being used for a fire. The firehouse, a new firehouse. Because right here in the no, um, well, ordinance, for, it says it has been determined that the property is not needed for any municipal uh, public purpose. Or use, but I thought that was where the new firehouse was going. No, my understanding is that there's talk about moving the firehouse up to um, the near the hub. 
what you're, you're talking about yeah, the no, rescue yeah. unit. Let's, yeah. yeah, I think they, you know, they have. There's they have, sorry, does have a plan. Oh, one second, Councilor yeah. Rock, I couldn't hear you. We're talking about, he's talking about the rescue unit, and we haven't been discussing anything about the rescue unit. Those, those were rumors where the rescue, the, they wanted the rescue unit there, but it's not there. And, and the, the, I guess the, um, the other one, the old police station and firehouse, like I've seen plans for those at the Jackson Hill Main Street. They, a developer already said he had plans to do something there. Is, do we already have a developer in mind? If someone has plans at the Jackson Hill Main at the Jackson Hill uh, Main Street office? Not that we're aware of. I mean, they, well, they I'll, might. I'll be. check out with the director again because she said that. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, she showed me the plans and the developer was there. I, I was in the office one day. Maybe he was just trying to present something. That could be, uh, but no one has approached the JCRA, so. I mean, so I, I think every time we, we change land over, it's probably to, um, to start to get ready to push it towards getting redeveloped, right? Yeah, well, the reason that the administration wants to convey this to the JCRA is because the buildings are boarded up, they're lighted, it's an eyesore, and there's a potential for redevelopment in that area, so they want us to get started, but mm -hmm. there's not any developer that has approached us. I'm not aware of any specific developer that anyone has in mind, um, and the process will be transparent as it always is, um, and then you'll notice in the ordinance that whatever remuneration we get for the land is then transferred back to the city, so. You and then Ben Ridley. You go first. I'm such a nice Can I go before you then? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, Ridley first and then, then me, then you. Question. Uh, the first question. Have we spoken to the, the fire department in regards to this because <clears> as of our budget hearing with them, they're waiting on here for the rescue place. In their mind, they're not going anywhere right now. Oh, well, the JCRA hasn't spoken to the, the anyone in the fire department or the police department. So this is being stewarded by the administration. Um, Brian isn't here today, but Brian came to us with the request, so we are the receiver of the property. And I do know that there is a plan, but the specifics of it, um, there's a plan for what? For, for the firehouse. For the new firehouse? And we don't own, because the vacant lot is about a block away from the station right. of the firehouse. We don't own the lot that's next door to the firehouse, I guess, at the corner of the crescent. <coughs> that's not safe. That's correct. So, no, can I ask? Oh, I thought I could take it before. Oh, you can do it. <laughs> Today, I tried to be nice. You said it well, um, so, so, what would be the, the current uh, zoning for this area? What would be a permissible um, uses um, if it wasn't a municipal use currently? If, if a developer were to, so if they were to, if they were to bid on this, would they then also be saying they can establish their own zoning in terms of bidding, like your, or they have to work within the framework? No, they have to work within the framework of the redevelopment plan. And what's frankly, the redevelopment? It's Jackson Hill. Jackson. So, and, and frankly, we were talking about this today. I don't know exactly what that is, but I can let you know. Um, but it will be driven by the redevelopment plan. What's currently in the redevelopment plan. Okay. Council Mignot. Yeah, two. I'm going to ask two things. One, we're going to say five lot of land current town owned by the city of New York City. Now, we're going to transfer ownership to JC to JCRA, which is the way company which would as a lot of concern we have there. Now, when we transfer our asset five lot to JCRA, number one, what is the current value of five lots land? Market value. Oh, I don't know what the current I mean market value is, you know, driven by many factors, but I don't yes, know. So, but I just said current value as it is, what is the price? I don't know. And then you don't know when you are the director of JCRA. And the, our council don't even know we transfer ownership to eight, one place to another. We don't even know the value of the land, we just transfer. So number two, reason I'm asking you, ordinance say very clear, JCRA shall 
photo show future revenue. So when you share, you're gonna we give to five land to your place, JCRA. Now you're gonna decide to sell the uh, designated developer, and whatever you guys have of money, you can share with the city of Jersey. So now my next question then, question two, what kind of formula we're gonna use for sharing the money, income, revenue? 50-50, well, 40 to 6, what is, and uh, if we share it, what kind of cost, when you sell the land, it's the cost involved, what level of cost you usually deduct, and then you're gonna show. So give us, so, number one, current value, so we count, we know that, what kind of asset value we hand to JCR, number one. Number two, after you guys sell the land, how are you gonna show that your revenue? We're gonna wanna make two things clear, if you're not, he was answered, we as a city council should be not our asset to transfer to JCRA just to give away a high cake. We shouldn't stay. It's about time to stop those kind of things now, really. Okay. I watched it for six years of city council. We don't even know the value of that. We continue to hand it to JCRA. And also, JCRA own large land. Then I've been able to beyond the able to manage the land now. So we have a major concern, so give us, if you're not able to give the answer before this Wednesday, this is the first ring, so probably second ring, till that point, current value, market value as it is, and when you go to redevelop the area, market value is gonna go up, approximately, and we get assuming go up, and the second, when you have a revenue share, what kind of formula they want to share? So we, at least we know is that. So I will answer the second revenue. question first. Yeah. And the second question is that the JCRA always um, acts as a pass-through when we do land conveyance. So we will take the purchase price that we get from the developer, less whatever nominal costs we may have incurred, and then the lion's share of it goes to the city. The JCRA does not retain if we don't purchase the land ourselves, we don't retain the, the value that we get from the developer. So the city gets the, the vast majority. The second is, um, what I have explained um, in many occasions when I've come here, that market value is determined by many factors, but the simplest way to measure it is what is it's what the market is willing to pay. So we don't know what that is yet, especially given the area. It's not like there is a formula that we come up with that is not how it works. So, so no, if it doesn't work, but if it's in the common sense, every piece of land in Georgia City has a market value. Even the dollar or penny, they have a market value. So I'm not gonna really argue that they, what is the market value, but even the bad, bad area in Georgia City, if a piece of land, and not only one, five pieces of land, they have a market value. So I want just to ask, what is the market value as it is now? So it's a very simple question. So you gotta give us an answer. Well, I, I don't know because I don't know what the market is willing to pay. And you and I have a disagreement about how that's valued and you know, I continue to explain to you how it actually works. And you think that there's a, there's a dollar number that can be put on it and that, that's not how it works. Is, so, there an so, um, is, it, is there an assessed value? But, but even if there's an assessed value, if the market's not willing to pay that value, then market value is less than assessed. It's always what the market is willing to I know, pay. But, but is there so, an assessed value? Of course. Listen, okay, can we get the assessed value? But the assessed value is on, the, on, on in some case, in the case of the vacant land, it's on the value of the land. And then the assessed value is on, you know, the buildings, which, so, I, I don't know what that would be because it was used for a police listen, station. Listen, you say right. So I, I just like to get the assessed values. From said, no, 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 no. Sure, I can get you no, the no, assessed no. values. Listen to me. That is the one way to lose our asset in the city of Georgia City. If that's the case, we should be the hand to land to JCRA. We should put the public bid. So at least we know what we're going to get. So what will happen if you do that oh, is that you lose con So what could possibly happen and this happens frequently when the city auctions off the land, is you auction it off and someone buys it, they're probably going to offer something far less than market value, far less. And then they could sit on it and not develop it for years. So you would end up with a blighted situation that would sit up there for years. Another thing that could not happen is you, couldn't, you would not have a redevelopment agreement with a reverter clause. Reverter clause says, if you don't build the project that we have determined needs to be built, we can take the land back. 
So you have city land that you have now released into the hands of a developer, and you have no ability to take it back if they don't develop the property. Stop so, here. No, let me, let me, let me, no, can I also interject? No, no, Councilman, can, can I just... No, this is very important for you to say that. If they purchase it by... What can I do? By... I do. Public meetings also. There is a certain period of time they should be improved. Other than that, city has the power to take away. Another, another audience over here at the resolution. You know what? Almost 10 years, we let them get away. So the way you claim that is not the truth. Don't miss the public. You know what? One of the things one, we sell the land in 1987. Still they don't do damn things in over the 10 years, but almost 20 years, we never claim back the land. And then which the land are you speaking of? Over here. Ownership change, middle land? of the town. We land? Got, what land are you talking no, about? Here's, here's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out. <coughs> that land. No, no, here. Yeah, look at it. Maybe you don't read that they're ordinance, I mean, that they're packed, so maybe you missed it. But I find out, even though they do doing like 15, 20 years, of don't do nothing, and they sit and do nothing, in the meantime, they change ownership without proof of Georgia City. It's there. We're going to talk about it later on. So your claim is lose the base, baseless argument, you know? But as a city council, when we hand out our asset, our asset, if you see the city of Jersey today's budget, 12 million to come from our revenue, come from the land sales. We skip the land without no balance? I don't think so. I don't know, maybe city of Jersey government to do that, but personally, no. And always, I'm going to say that, always they say that if we give the land to JCRA, usually we get more than the more dollar than we sell by public auction. That's one of the reasons they say we're going to transfer land from the city of Jersey to JCRA. That was also BS, was it, you know? So, I, I, I've got a, a couple of questions and, and um, statements to make about this as well. So the, um, could, could we also, as you said, this, the money comes back to the city, um, less the expenses. Similar to Bayfront and that uh, development there, um, we said that the, the council would be able to authorize the ultimate um, uh, sale of those properties if they would come back to the council. Could we include that as, if, as a stipulation here? So whatever kind of comes back, you get your certain bids and so forth, um, and looking for what's the best, best use in that regard, that the, the, the council will ultimately have uh, some input ultimately as to what that uh, what that final sale would look like and what, what the use of that property would be. Um, the second thing is, with regard to the money coming back to the council, um, it's my understanding that we, uh, um, with regard to uh, the, the, the land sale with uh, Aetna down at the Liberty Harbor, that we're receiving uh, those dollars, uh, sale dollars in installments to us. And and, and that I guess we, we authorize that when we approve the, the ordinance that ultimately allowed for that, that land sale to go forward. Um, I want to make it very clear that um, that was an oversight on my part, and, uh, um, and, and so I don't want that to happen again. Those, num those dollars should fully come back. It should come to us in, in installments, and um, so we want to see all of that money now. We have financial issues that the city of Jersey City is dealing with with regard to school funding and to see not not just this year but also in subsequent years and so we want to see if this should move forward to see those those dollars come back to the city of Jersey City um, in full. Friend, yes, you say right. Even to take a cost of expensive, you gotta tell the itemizer which expense you're gonna deduct. Don't just say we're gonna share after expense. Tell me what kind of expense you gotta itemize so we know exactly what will be take over from the after sell the land. Please don't do like a years ago. It's over. Huh? We gotta make it clear. I mean, anybody, common sense. This is a nine council members. She owned the file. Land. What she owned? I own the file. Somebody gives land. Let's say hand land without no value. Come I, on, see if I can see your twelve million dollar land sale. Where they come from? Because we sell the land. We sell the land. So if we get five land, instead of giving Jay Shari, if we sell the five land market, in other words, a public bidding, maybe we can some decent numbers, which we can allocate as a general fund, we can use for our budget for next year. But just without knowing, just to the land, and whatever expense you take by your own, and we're going to whatever share. 
We want to know if we share, you're going to share the 50, 50, 46, 37 after expense, before expense. You got to make it clear. Just don't ask, give us a land, and we're going to do whatever you want. No, really, please. It's about time. Those days gone. Because I'm telling you, it's like 2019, 2020, 2001, maybe we have to raise our money to tax big time. We got to prepare for now. Well, Councilman Young, I would suggest you take that up with the administration because this that's this that's the impetus for this. So, so if we just approve this ordinance, this council, I can say that taxpayer, we got an out of mind here. We don't know the value, just hand it to them. No. We trust you guys, but we not that much trust. So so I, I would also just like to finalize on get, getting the uh, the uh, the so what's the approved or uh, allowable use of these properties? I can what's let you know what the zoning is. For the zoning yeah. is for that? Right. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then my last statement on this is, again, this is our property, similar to Bayfront or any other property that we own, we get to decide what the permitted use is ultimately, right, as a city council, along with the planning no, department and well, the administration. The JCR, as you know, the JCRA Board of Commissioners decides what the project is, we don't. If we, if the we way transfer that the, the land over, right? The local the redevelopment and housing law. Uh, the reason that the JC that the redevelopment agency is created is so the redevelopment agency can. If we transfer the land over, but right. if we should take that action, um, and, until we do that, um, if we establish and, and if we should amend the. Re I don't know what the zoning is for that that particular parcel of land at this point, um, but we could, in theory, um, determine that we want it to be for such and such use, whatever that use may be. Um, myself personally, there are things of, I've thought of with regard to that particular uh, police station and firehouse and everything else around there. It's close to Lincoln High School. There are opportunities. We talk about training facilities uh, for, for uh, job development and so forth. And, um, or, for me, um, affordable housing is a burning issue. If it's a residential required use, I'd love to see it dedicated to affordable uses. We could determine what that is. And prior to any sort of transference, of the land so that when it's transferred ultimately instead of letting the developer decide even though it may make financial sense in some ways um, for us financially in the short term to do that but for our long-term opportunities and, and gains there we may want to see another use um, and me personally um, so we have transferred in the past um, but given where our situation is now and I, I think uh, um, I'm not speaking for the council, I'm speaking for myself. Gentrification, the school funding crisis, we need to look at things in a different lens at this point. And I think looking at it in those with that lens on and looking at what kind of uses we can get to be able to address uh, the needs of our, of our community, which is literally screaming and crying out on these issues on gentrification and school funding. And so uh, for my, my, my part, um, I am, uh, until I know exactly what, what it is, what kind of uses and so forth, I will not be supporting this ordinance to transfer the land until I know what the uses of the land are going to be and that we're maximizing the use to be able to address um, our most pressing needs here in Jersey City. Because these are one opportunity when we own these lands to be able to say and put a stake in the ground and say we can decide how it goes here for these properties here in Jersey City and I'm, I'm personally going to fight to make sure that we stand okay, up for so that. Um, just to say, just to, yes. I'll be happy to, I'll get you that in the morning. Yep. And then, as you know, the council can always amend the redevelopment plan to include any any. Director, let me add it to it. If anybody see that the resolution 19-500, ZN number 1017, City of New Jersey, we sell the addresses, what is it called? Some Virginia Avenue. We sold June 4, 1982. When we sell the option, we say that very clear, they shall repair, alter, and improve the said building. They didn't anything kill the seers. And the meantime, middle of the dead time, without with a noise, the city of they change with ownership. So, which way we go? Bayfront, you say, right. We talk about the 65 buildable acre land we want. And the, those kind of things done by, when played by JCRA. So we can have to set up the system something we can understand. Are you saying that the city sold land in 1982 with a restriction on it and they yes. didn't fulfill the restriction? Yes, yes. So well, not true. They if you the had conveyed the land to they, the JCRA, we would have, we would have monitored that for you. Crap. Like, they did fulfill the no, listen. Yeah. 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 Do me a favor. I'm not asking a whole lot. Just two things, okay? 
So if you provide, we understand. If we not provide, then forget about it. Because why? We did many times already. Even simple, all the council members are joining that. When we give transfer of Washington Street as a condo, five condo to JCRA, because they claim that if we said that we sell the option, if we give the JCRA, maybe JCRA get the better dollars for us. Till today, don't do nothing yet. Well, actually what happened with that is that um, the city made a determination that they were going to auction it off because the um, developer actually completed the rehab and then we said, well, the, com the rehab is completed and the city determined that they were going to auction it off as is, where is, and to my understanding that was the plan and I think that's what happened. So. The reason that the original plan was to transfer to the JCRA so the JCRA could make sure the rehab was completed, but when we went to view them, we saw that it had already been completed. So, so, so I don't know if they if the city okay. auctioned it off or not, okay. but you should check. Okay, so forget about other things. Just this case, just give us us, give us us, market value as is, and the, what kind of formula you want to share of uh, revenue. That's all. Okay, I don't want to bother you too much. So, well. Uh, I'll do the best I can, but that, that isn't the way it works. Um, but I will, I will try, and I'll get you the zoning tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What's Crazy. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, Eric is still here. Yo. Eric has a resolution. <laughs> um, 1033. Didn't want to go away. Me. I don't care. 3.30. Yeah, okay. Well, if you want to go, Brian, I don't want to. Go right ahead. Brian Weller, our architect. Can you tell us what you're here for? I have no voice. Absolutely. Uh, let's start with uh, 1036. 1036, 36. <laughs> I mean, for, for the record, the meeting started after 530. <laughs> right, so um, no disrespect intended. I'm just saying that, that's, not the, that's not traditionally how the, the determinant of the speakers has been that, we, that I've done in the past, if people disagree with that. We've tried to get the people out who only have a handful of items, and I know you only have a handful, but these folks had one item on the agenda, and he had two, Eric, and um, so. Okay, 36. It's resolu <coughs> excuse me, good evening. Uh, resolution authorizing award of contract to Millennium Office Solutions, LLC, for the purchase, delivery, installation of office furniture <coughs> for the divisions of architecture, engineering, traffic, and transportation, compliance, diversity, and inclusion. It is for the second floor of the Municipal Services Complex. And with this furniture, we will be able to correct uh, a lot of issues uh, that have transpired with workflow and potential OSHA uh, reports because we have that donated furniture that is hampering workflow. And I'm sure that uh, the Municipal Engineer, Mr. Kuna, uh, and the other directors that are directly affected by this would uh, back me up on this. We've done a lot of research on the furniture. Uh, the director of purchasing is here also, and um, furniture is a very difficult issue. Um, we've had a lot of issues with a lot of different vendors recently, and so we went out and inspected the actual furniture in the field, and that's how we determined to go with Millennium Office Solutions. Uh, and I think it's also good to note that this is an independent Millennium. This is not related to any other security system specialist or anything like that. Um, any other questions? Actually, the old furniture was the donated furniture, and uh, the electrical outlets don't line up. There are people that are tripping over cords. Uh, that's why the uh, OSHA issues exist. Um, they actually are blocking heating, heating vents that uh, prevent cleaning uh, because the office and the building layout should have had a narrow um, actually more linear um, office layout and these are cubicles that we accepted and they don't fit the space no no this is no this is there this is Linden Avenue yes the DPW complex 
Another, yes. Another Can I ask you? All right. First is thank you for your effort because I say many times to the city council, before we go to state contract, we should go open market price check. So you did that. Yes. So if we every, every council member see that the price, open market price, most cases cheaper than state contract. So I wish our purchase department, before they put in the purchase anything from the state country, they should make sure that open market price first before we go state country. Now in this case, all state office furniture interiors lost the price. Open market price of $142,000. Millennium Office, which is a company you city of Jersey want to try to purchase it. 150, 150, almost $20,000 different. But when I see the excuse, the region you want to go, 20,000 actually highest the price furniture company, which is millennium, even though the price is highest, they want to go there. But the reason is that their whole world's brand furniture, which is high quality. So now, high quality is the word. And the durable, so in other words, are stronger than the other. So I want to know what kind of warranty guarantee coming millennium compared with the old state. You gotta tell us to this council, we're gonna pay twenty thousand dollars more millennium, but because of that, millennium company have a ten years warranty for five years of labor part. You gotta tell us. So that's what we understand. Instead of go twenty thousand cheap for all state office interior, I can even do all the searching. All state office interior company furniture, even very very good quality, top quality they make it. But we go millennium, we gonna pay twenty thousand dollars more. So give us a good reason why we have to spend twenty thousand dollars more than over all state furniture. I'll provide a full breakdown. Yes, please. Other than that, just just a high quality durable is not enough to spend extra twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Period. All right. Can't you? I, I will. And okay. just so you know, so you can sleep tonight. I know. I think it works out to be about five hundred dollars per unit. Yes, sir. So, per unit. But so it's only. I mean, you, the, the total is twenty thousand, but it's yes, actually. Total twenty thousand. So when you start comparing them side by side, yeah. and you realize the length of time that this building is going to be there, and it's that it's on the verge of a lead platinum. Uh, Reason is I'm asking you, when we found the proposal, mm -hmm. they give us a price based on, every three company gives us a price based on Sam's proposal. So, just to give us a reason why we have to pay 20,000 no more problem. over the, the lowest price. No so, problem. Okay? I have it to you. Other than that, I'm fine. Okay. Can I go more? Just the one where I used to a list of, I didn't see it, the uh, resolution of everything that's being ordered. Being ordered, yeah. Oh, you want? Okay. And, and then, for these capital accounts, which accounts are these, and what were they, uh, uh, the, you know, where, where, what years were they approved, what was spent down? Uh, well, the, the bulk of the money is for the actual uh, municipal services complex itself and the balance so that we could outfit the entire floor so that it's usable for whoever may or may not go into the space as the architect design is coming out of a capital account for capital. furniture, specifically for furniture. Okay, so one is coming out of the building, building itself, yes. So I guess my concern, I agree with Councilman Newton with his question, my, my additional concern is we do, we're just going through the operating budget. You know, in every department, or it seems like every department in every division, Five thousand for furniture, ten thousand for furniture, thirty thousand for furniture, you know, twenty twenty thousand for furniture. I haven't added them all up, but, but I think at a minimum we're probably talking two hundred fifty thousand, maybe up to, to half a million. And so, you know, it strikes me that if, you know, I don't doubt there might be a need here, but you know, we were we as the council president said earlier, we have a lot of budget needs, and so it strikes me that we we may want to just put all the furniture into capital and not allow for all of these other additional mm -hmm. furniture purchases, because then you guys can determine, hey, there is a real major need here. Come to us, go to bid, get some cost savings in terms of economies of scale. Uh, you know, I, I'm just hesitant, because we've spent a lot of money on furniture in my first two years, and I'm just hesitant to you know, continue to kind of just let that go without, I think, a more thoughtful process. Uh, that's, that's my job. I'll talk yeah. to, uh, um, I'll talk to John Metro, and I think the first thing I agree with you. I don't know why the departments would have great capability to buy furniture. They should only be buying um, a chair. 
they probably don't know that there's this account. Mm -hmm. and so I think it's innocent. But um, I'll talk to John Metro and ask him to give us a list of all the furniture uh, sure. wow. line items in mm -hmm. all the departments. Sure. And if they are 500,000, yeah, you're right. It doesn't make any sense. So I'll take care of that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Particularly if you have it in the capital. Exactly. So, so my request is just, um, could I get the, the balances on this capital accounts? Um, how much it was available, how much it was spent down, what was it spent on, and um, that would be sufficient for me at this point. Okay. Okay, any other questions, council members? Your next item is uh, 45. Yep, 45. It's a resolution authorizing a second amendment to a contract with Debiasi and Seminara, PC, in connection with compliance review, update specifications, and construction and administration services for engine company 15. Renovations project number 2015-18 for the Department of Administration, Division of Architecture. So in this case, we're in a situation where uh, we're rehabbing an old firehouse and uh, we've encountered a lot of unforeseen items that needed to be addressed. The architect has had to spend extra time and efforts dealing with structural issues. Uh, we encountered a tank that was unforeseen and that generated uh, change orders, environmental. Um, and so, and the, the uh, as I'm sure some of you know, the uh, contract is running long anyway with the lowest bid contractor. So we just need to extend the contract three months. We should be done and out of it. Council members, questions on this? I mean, this is, how often we have to go on with this? See, this project actually started 2016, you know? And the we actually, through the professional meeting, the guy comes with 73,000 of private architecture and engineering service connection with the renovation for engine 15. Now, 2017, we just say, just a year later, we have to amend the plan. You know? And this is the old my city, and it took the 24 months to a history review. I scratch my head. So when they city owned the building, city owned building, to history review take 24 months, then if any private company or person owned the building, if we get the history review, not in probably three, four years. So really, I can understand. And then now, we're going to extend another 70, 78,600, and another extension for 26,000. I mean, I mean, I mean, really, we have to continue to like to spend money, something we don't have to. If we necessary to spend, I support 100%, but this kind of spending, we can limit it that, you know, waste it actually. When we rehab older buildings, there are many items that are unforeseen. Um, as, as I know that I've been here before with these issues, uh, there's, there's just no way to know. If, we, if the city chose not to uh, renovate this house uh, that does happen to fall under the historic jurisdiction, uh, maybe we could have built a new one for the same price. I'm not sure, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's an asset to the community uh, and to the fire department. And um, unfortunately, nobody, even the, these architects and engineers, they don't have a crystal ball. So they, when they get into this and we have structural issues, uh, we really, we can't just walk away from it. We've got too much vested. So, right. Even they fixed that yeah, thousand dollars, few thousand dollars construction. Well, they have to put the application for history preservation to make sure any. I mean, we spend millions of dollars, and at the city building, they have any pre meeting before study any. I mean, you just pick up the call. The uh, history of preservation, come on, we're going to have some innovation. You can't show. I mean, this is common sense to prevent extra 24 months to waste $70,000. 70, I mean, how are we going to stop this waste of taxpayer dollars? Oh. Well, let me just clarify that that first 24 month contract, um, there was a period of time that the, the, sh the project was not moving forward, it was on hold. I know that. That's why they charge a little less, drop the price a little bit. Mm -hmm. But still, now this we this, this this actually this increase doesn't is not reflective of uh, the architect and and the city's working on the design. This is strictly related to from the time the construction started with the lowest responsible bidder 
during construction, encountering unforeseen issues that drag the project on. What are unforeseen issues? Uh, encountering uh, a tank that nobody knew was there because our forefathers buried it in concrete inside the building. Um, still had uh, material in it, by the way. Uh, then there's uh, structural rafters on the roof that aren't properly pocketed in to today's standards. There's code issues that, that were un, uh, uncovered. Um, and there's also uh, repointing issues and questions on foundation. All of which, you know, we, we the city felt we have a licensed architect on this. We need to get him to make sure this is the right move. This is making me very frustrated. 2016. 12 months contract cost the city of just seventy-three thousand dollars. Second and contract, it, and then it we went on paid se yeah seventy-eight thousand dollars for twenty-four months. Now we talk about three months for twenty-six thousand dollars. So twenty-six times of four, if we go one four, almost it's a hundred thousand. In other words, you know what? Change order actually increase the cost of it. You know, actually, what are they called? The expenses. So if we do right, we don't have to make a change order, you know what I'm saying? If we can't, if we hide architecture, even architects call that our history preservation committee to come up to look at a site, we should face this kind of world. Well, with all due respect, I, I'm not so sure that the historic preservation officers can be able to see all these things that we're encountering. I mean, we all have an idea, but to quantify it so that we get an upfront price, I think that's just going to escalate the costs of hiring an architect so that they're covering themselves. But I can remember, we're com say remember, we're competitive when we put yeah. these out. We always look for right. three or four proposals. I can give you one thing. You are very sincere. You do your best. You know? So I can give to that. But if you, as a director of the architecture, build up some system, we try to limit the waste of taxpayer dollars. That's what I want to say. You know? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Is that your last thing, Brian? Brian, two questions. Well, we got one more. We got one more item. We have item number 46, the resolution authorizing an amendment to a contract with DMR Architects in connection with architectural programming, planning, and construction administration for the Marion Gardens Police Auxiliary Building, project number 2017-003 for the Department of Administration, Division of Architecture. And so the good news on this is there's no fee uh, with this. This is purely contractual because their contract is going to expire uh, before completion of the project. DMR is still on time and on target, as, as well as the contractor. So we're just extending the length of the contract at no cost? Correct. Okay. And could I just get, uh, I forgot for the last one, just a balance on that? I don't know if I already asked that. On, on the last one? Yeah. I'll spend down the balance. Sure. sure. Thank you. Anyone have questions on 46? None? Thank you, Brian. Brian. Thank you. Oh, whoa, whoa. Rich Bogiano, Council Member Number one. Any further word on Sergeant B. Anthony Falk? Do you really want to know? Do you really yeah, want to know? Yeah, I really want to know because I was with him the other night after we met. And, you know. uh, currently, the contractor is has been ready. We probably would have already had a ribbon cutting, uh, but the. Uh, Playground uh, supplier vendor is uh, ex has extended for, for various reasons the delivery of the playground, and that is really holding up everything at this point. They're ready. The contractor's been ready to go. We're waiting on delivery of the actual product from the vendor. Dragging on and dragging on. It, it would have been done. Now, it, yep. I know. I, I, I know. Right, I know. That's uh, number one. Number two. The fence. The red wall. The kids were in there again this weekend. Somebody gets killed. Uh, Joe told me that the historic commission, you have to do certain things. Well, I'll tell you something. The kid gets killed. I want to know whose responsibility it is. We already had one kid drown in the reservoir, if you remember. They were in there again. They broke in last week. They were in there this weekend. That fence has to be put up. I could care less about what the historic commission says. Well, there, you're, there's two different things. There is a security fence that needs to be, if, it need, if there's a problem with it, we need to get with DPW. They have a fencing contract to get it secured. It is a major problem. Okay, they just so, climb right over it. I mean, it's <coughs> half, you know what? Yep. So we need to reach out to DPW. Uh, and I'm telling you, somebody I'll reach out and copy you. Please, it's got to get done. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Yep, no problem. So when do you have a Riverview Park Park? Riverview. Riverview Park. Yeah. Was it groundbreaking, you said? No. no. Ribbon cutting? Ribbon cutting? No. What are you asking? No, that's what I'm asking. When? The status, it's going out to bid. 
Yeah. It's coming up a bit. So, okay. however, you, however you and uh, the neighborhood group want to handle it. Keep the Google plan. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Hey, Do you want to forego your opportunity and let somebody else go? or? What? No, I, I'm just asking. Thank you, sir. We're QPA class. And I'm Mr. Weller. Don't forget to speak. You only worked a half day today, Brian. 12 hours. Nice, nice and cool in here. Okay. We have uh, resolution number 10.33. 10.33. 33. Number resolution 33. It's a resolution authorizing the use of competitive contracting to award a concession contract to install, operate, and promote an on-demand e-scooter sharing system. E-scooters. So it was legalized by the state of New Jersey. Governor Murphy recently signed the legislation. Um, E-scooters. And um, we have Eric Fleming here to discuss the RFP. Right, so what, what this is actually authorizing is uh, us to go out and get competitive contracting uh, and, and issue the RFP. So as far as what's in the RFP is not actually what you're t we're talking about today, just the, to give me the, uh, the, sorry, the city the right to go out there and, uh, and put the RFP out and see what we get back. And uh, there'll be plenty of time to go through, you know, the, the nitty gritty uh, of all the rules and, and, uh, and those things. Uh, but I'm happy to talk uh, about uh, whatever you guys want. But we're, like, we're, what you guys are actually authorizing is the city to go out there and put that, uh, put that RFP out there. Council members, questions on this? Councilman Yun. Okay. East Cruz, I, I go to the, one of the city called Atlanta, Georgia. They have a, probably like a four different East Cruz right. companies to buy service. What I find out, they have a serious problem they have, and they have a lot of one of the major complaints by residents. First thing is East Cruz, mm -hmm. small tiny, they live at the middle of the sidewalk, pedestrian area, cause a lot of problems. You know what I'm saying? So really, it looks like sometimes the whole side is a mess. That's number one. Number two, Atlanta, Georgia, most warm weather. Warm weather. So some people, some people ride on the East Crew in the uh, street, but a lot of people ride on the East Crew in the sidewalk. That's a huge problem. So you have to, RFP, have to make clear, number one, if the East Crew company provides screws in Georgia City, how are they going to be limit the problem, dump the East Crow, middle of the pedestrian sidewalk, number one. Number two, number two, if we East Crow provide, then how are we going to limit the East Crow right on the sidewalk? Because one of the major problems, as you know, Harry, yep. the number one problem complains of riding the bicycle and sidewalk wars. So we sidewalk and bicycle, East Crow top of that, and we're going to hold mess. And our sidewalk is not wide as much as Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. So those things have to be held on number three. Number three, if we run East Crow, right? Atlanta, Georgia is a warm weather, so they have not much power like the city of Georgia City. Georgia City has every season winter past that. Thousands, how many? How many people? We have 10,000, 15,000 puddles. Okay? But East Crow is a wheel, it's so small. If this guy hit the power of Georgia City, yeah, somebody get hurt. hurt. Yeah. He's hurt. So now, then, who's going to be responsible? City of Georgia City? No. Or East? So then make it clear. Okay, so who's going to be responsible? But we try to go, when the people get hurt from the right of East Crow so the street, if we have some kind of damage or hurt by street puddle, doesn't matter we say they are responsible, they're going to put in city of Jersey city as a defender. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that it's there. Number four, you say property sharing. I didn't say anything. No property sharing over here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they say we expect around the, you know, even the $40,000 is a property. Sounds great, but I'm going to make sure that. We heard the Sand Street many, many years ago. When we built the city by the city of Jersey city, they say we gonna get some property share from the city bike. Almost 2014 now is five years. I didn't see even dime and our budget has a, has a, has a, any revenue from that, right? So we gotta make sure if you say property sharing, same way I asked the JCRA, 
total gross revenue minus expense table. What kind of expense they're going to be deducted? You know what I'm saying? They're going to deduct your uh, electric fee or maintenance fee. Oh, so what is a deductible as expensive? Well, we just want to gross sale minus so much and the whatever profit share, what kind of percentage? Okay. The audio of 70 or 50, 50, 40, 60. Those kind of things should be an RFP. Okay. Okay, so very. Those four things. Yes, yeah, so four things. If okay. we make it clear, then it's a less problem. But if we not clear four things, don't even talk about it. Okay, so first because thing. why we don't put in the city of Madrid as a huge liability issue, you know what I'm saying? All right, so first thing, the mess. The second thing was? Sidewalks. Sidewalks, Side okay. And the okay. third thing was potholes. How do we deal with that? And the fourth thing was profit, profit share. Profit share. What kind of okay. formula do you need? Here we go. Okay, now number five. Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's, let's, let's allow some no, other no, no, council no. members. This is fun. Give me food. Let's, let's, <laughs> council, council, let's allow some other council members to right. chime in. Okay. Cal Councilman Rivera. Okay. Everyone, well, I can. Do you want me to answer that, or wait? Now, let me let Councilman Rivera. Okay. It's, it's just piggybacking on what he said. Okay. The day after Hoboken's uh, uh, grand opening for yeah. the scooters, in front of my house were four scooters the very next day. That's like totally They're unacceptable. Dumping. So it's gotta be a way where, so before we even approve this, that we have, uh, 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 we have their word that, I don't know, I could, it, it was there until the next day. Dan, you have my cell phone. If they have the, you find scooters, you tell me, I call Lyme, they're gone. Okay, but that's not the answer. Like, that, no, that's I'm just dealing with, I'm dealing with that one. You mentioned that, and I'll go through those four things. So, Terry, yeah. You did a great job. Hope it but when I did just that, I demonstrated the uh, East Point in my place, my box. Right. I asked for four questions. He got no answer, he walked away. And that other one. The scooter guy? Yes. Really? Number five. When I see the orange, I say, who initiated this proposal? Yeah. Your name is Eric Fleming? It is. And the title, Confidential Assistant, yeah. sounds like the other double seven. <laughs> I can't comment on that. Oh, no, really. I just want to make sure that. What's the question? I, I just want to make sure that my recommendation, great. When they start right at the title, the confidential, confidential or assistant, I'm not feel comfortable. Yeah. We got nothing to confidential. It's all open to public. All open to public. Transparency. So, right. well, please read us. That's, 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 that's not strictly true. Before something is finally decided or presented to you, um, we have confidential conversations. But okay. a confidential assistant is just a sales yeah. service title. It's not. Yeah, so it's you didn't come up with this form. And it's not the only one in the system. There are more. Yeah, confidential maybe have those. So, so but, yeah, you know, to get I a like civil it. service a title, you have to kind of wait around and go through a process. Mm -hmm. And but confidential assistant is kind of like a placeholder. So yeah. the council is aware of that. Yeah, that's what confidential yeah. assistant means. But it doesn't really actually mean everything. Sounds like there's something going on. It sounds shady. yeah, it yeah. sounds okay. it sounds shady. Okay, I don't even put it on my business. Is this is how shady? shady. <laughs> it's not shady. Let's, let's move on. Councilman Solomon. Yeah. Uh, sounds shady. Yes. Um, make two points in, in the RFP and, and similar to Councilman. You, sure. You, I, this is how I'll evaluate it when it gets. Here. Councilman Solomon has the floor. Council members. So the first one I agree with Councilman is the question about storage and where they get where the scooters get. Left. Okay. You know, I think the, and to be frank, I think the existing models that the other cities have used, obviously the scooter companies to some degree like them, which is you leave it wherever, and then they come back and pick it up, and then, you know, it takes 24 hours or so for them to get to it. They, they make promises about when they're going to pick it up, but, you know, just my personal experience in, in Santa Monica and LA was, was not seeing them pretty much littered everywhere. Mm. So, you know, I really will evaluate any proposal that comes to the council on and is the scooter company providing a, a real thoughtful system to kind of change that. So, you know, I, I can envision where, ways that you could think about, you know, where you could drop them off that are better. The second one, though, is I may disagree a little with the council, but it's on the issue of revenue. I'm not sure exactly what his point was, but I don't want us to have a revenue target. I see there was a number here because I think that might... I think that was more of an estimate, to be more of an estimate. Fair. I want us to be, you know, I want us to embrace technology, but I also want us to be thoughtful about it. I mean, we're literally today going to talk about Airbnb, and, you know, there was a time when it was the hot new thing, and everyone just said, yes, it's great, let's do it. And, you know, my view is that there's been serious negative externalities and consequences from that that, as a city, we're not dealing with. 
and so, you know, I worry if we just say, yes, this is great, you know, I, I want us to think about, you know, is there a way to do, you know, pilot, is there a way for us to be, how many are we putting out, what neighborhoods are they going into, mm -hmm. I just want us to be really thoughtful about that, and not just sort of say, hey, you know, free game, go for it, because that will get us more revenue, right, the more scooters out there, the more revenue for the company, right, you know, so I, I want us to say, what's our transportation planning, you know, we have Barca, we have other planners, what are their recommendations on how you create safe rollout, safe networks, um, so we actually kind of get the benefits of the technology, but limits and the downside sure. um, that come with that. So, that, so that's how I'm going to evaluate the proposal when it sure. comes to us. So I'll just I'll just address yeah. that. So I spent literally months uh, talking to cities, talking to city planners, talking to the, uh, the scooter companies, uh, talking to people in the cities uh, experiencing the scooters, reading stories, reading case studies, reading statistics. Uh, and I, what I tried to do uh, in, in putting together the RFP is like cherry pick the best pieces uh, of it all. But I'll tell you at the end of the day, scooters have only been around for like a year and a half. so. I don't have a big data set sure. to evaluate whether, you know, oh, Atlanta is doing that really well. Well, it's been doing really well right now, but if we look at it over five years, that piece of data might might skew differently. Um, but I, I have, I've, uh, I've done a lot of research. Barca and, uh, and Andrew Vicio uh, have absolutely been involved. Uh, we were on conference calls with Memphis. They have a nice system. Um, where I'm, I'm being as thoughtful as I can with this because uh, I don't want to be one of those cities that does it wrong. I want to do it as as, as right as possible. Um, and as far as far as the storage and pickup planning, that's absolutely uh, in the proposal. They have to have a, a plan for that. And in a lot of ways, I I know how they're going to go about uh, go about uh, doing those things. Um, and. I will, you know, uh, I'll take it, uh, any one of my projects I take on personally. So, Danny does have my number and he will, and you will call me when you find a scooter and you can do that. And I will call Paul Holly at Lime or wherever, wherever it is and I will have him deal with it right away. I, I, I take, uh, if I have to go down and pick up the damn scooter myself, I will do that. Don't do, do that. that, that's all my private company. Your city employee, you should be involved to pick up the private company each group print, no, don't do that. Right. You have to, they have a, you have to figure out a way that incentivizes the company right. to pick it up. There's no, they have no incentive. Well, yeah. most of the time, how it usually works is, uh, you yeah, put the scooters out in the morning. Tell me about incentives. Do they have any incentives, incentives. to do it? Well, they the, have no incentives to do it. The battery's dead, so, so they can't charge Okay, them. so that's the only incentive then. So Other than the scooter so, not working? No, it, <laughs> they have no real incentive to pick it up fast. They don't. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to think of. It's not punitive. Everyone else is thinking punitive. We're going to punish the company if they don't do it. They have to create a, a model that they are incentivized. Well, for. the incentive is if there's scooters all the way in the heights and um, uh, and they really want that scooter back downtown where they're more likely so to get more that rides. Only one, that one case they're incentivized. If it's a scooter remains stable for more than an hour, it costs them money. That's an incentive to move it. Yeah. See, that's incentive. That's an incentive. That's what you have to think of. You have to force them to be incentivized. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, they're not going to. It sounds like a penalty. Yeah. What you just said. Oh, no, sorry. The penalty <laughs> is <laughs> when I'm going to write you a ticket. Incentive is when it's built into your profit. Well, now I'm a company. I'm okay. losing money. The greatest yeah, punishment yeah. you can give to a scooter company is taking their scooters away. No. That's okay. Okay. okay, folks. That's I know. How do you write these scooters? All right, so uh, it's an app-based system. So you, you download the app and you create a profile and then you walk up to it and there's usually one of those QR code things on the top of it or it's GPS and you rent it out. It's it's actually a little simpler than what we're doing with the with the city bikes. Council President? Council Minion. Yes, what I see, when I see that the other town, more like the e-bike, e more impact than these screws. What do you mean by impact? That, in other words, e-bike usually most people ride on the street. Oh, as far as that goes? Yes. And also because of size, you know? And the, another one is that, yeah, so weather-wise, winter time, 
the wheel will be larger than, you know. Well, these things are not going to be used in the wintertime. Yeah. They're so not They're just, not made for that. They'll be taken off. We, yeah. we like that we use school in Georgia City, but as long as those concerns we bring up, right. if you eliminate their problem, good luck. All right, so regarding safety, Part of the RFP is uh, what is your plan for education, what is your plan for, for safety, and uh, for its part, for the city's part, uh, one, of, uh, one of the things I'm going to execute uh, probably closer to when we're about to uh, award, uh, if we go that far, if, we're, if we decide we're going to award uh, licenses to these folks, what we're going to have is around the city uh, demos where people will get exposed on how to use these things. Not just they think they're going to go for a fun ride on a little obstacle course, but what they're actually doing is learning the rules of road, including most importantly, not being on the sidewalk, not being in, in Jersey City. Wow! In, in Jersey City. Well, they didn't have the demos that I wanted to do. Um, in Jersey City. We're going to have an ordinance uh, if it goes through the way I the, the way I helped write it, uh, where they're not allowed on the sidewalks. Can we stop every single person from being a nuisance and going on the sidewalk? These things, absolutely not. But uh, I believe if we have a con uh, uh, an initial uh, education for folks and that we force uh, you know continued education through uh, through marketing and through advertising that we. Uh, that we make the uh, the vendors put out there, it uh, it will definitely help encourage the right behavior. Eric, you are too innocent. You I'm 46 see years old. See Last 20 years, we spend the millions, million dollars educate the general public to how we do recycling. Still, our recycling rate less than 30 percent. Even we spend almost 20 some years don't riding bikes to sidewalk. Still, people do that. So please, that's, that's not gonna work, yeah. so, so don't just use word to educate people to leave the public. It doesn't it work. Has to be, you have to put the onus on right. the company. Right, and this will get to a little bit of company's point, but um, this isn't directed to the RFP, but again, when, we're, when we would formally authorize this, and right. the ordinance is in, you know, I'm gonna look from a plan for our public safety team on how they're gonna enforce riding on the sidewalks, because just to be frank, you know, I think, most people's experiences is that we don't do a good job of enforcing really any traffic rules in the city. You know, I would start with cars and ones that are speeding and ones that are, you know, creating really unsafe conditions. I think there's resistance in our public safety department to treating it as the priority that it should be. And now we're going to add on the addition of scooters. And I want the scooters because I think they can add real transportation mobility for folks. But, you know, we, we got to have, we got to be all in. And I understand you are, but we got to get the public safety director sitting here telling us exactly how he's going to prioritize this too. Okay. Uh, when all this comes together, because when it, I mean, you know, we're the ones who are going to get the calls on when these things are on the sidewalks, yeah. and, and we're going to get a lot of them. And you know, we we have to be able to communicate a credible plan to our constituents on how we're addressing this. So right. I mean, this is step one, but the enforcement piece is going to be key. And, and what Greg's suggesting is, is, as much as you make it an incentive on the company. And, and they're either incentivized or positively or negatively to, to you know, it's internalized by them, the better. So what they say that when I ask you, why don't the school and the sidewalk, how would you guys just stop it? <coughs> he has a, such a great idea. We're gonna revoke the membership. So I, my next question, how you guys know is that, oh, people have to take the pictures reported. So do they have a plate number each school? They said no. Then how the hell people take a picture, report to you, how the hell you guys know that, that guy, this guy's name X, Y, this guy is by pictures. Right? Listen, so long story make sure we give us a home of four or five different ways to pre present to us how we can solve the problem. Then we can go move on. Okay? Well, as far as the, the, the scofflaw parking, uh, it's already built into C Click Fix. So you can do it that way. You can call the RRC. Um, what, what is it? Explain that a little bit more. I don't understand. So if someone, you, the RRC. Yeah. You can call the RRC and say this this is parked in the in the wrong place, and it can get, get fed in the food chain that way. Or you can go and see Click Fix and report it that way. Or uh, as Councilman Yun uh, mentioned, in order to, to stop the ride, you have to uh, document uh, that you've parked it in the appropriate place, and you have to take a picture of where you put it. 
I mean, to, to, so, so and I on top of that, and I don't want to you know, take this the wrong way, but to, to Councilman Young's point about some naivete there and then Council Solomon's idea of having a plan. So anyone who's, and I, and I, I support the RRC, but uh, if anyone's called the RRC to try to get parking ticket enforced, like get trying to get that done is like uh, Well, it's just one, I'm just saying it's, it's one way. Gonna, like, it's not the way. You can go and see Click Fix. You can, uh, you have to self-report. You can go on the RRC <laughs> and uh, but without the adequacy of like enforcement and a plan, and then the enforcement resources, is that a, that's, that's well, like, I'm giving uh, you four ways that we can do it without even before we even get uh, the cops involved. Okay, great. No. Sometimes I'm such an nice, but sometimes very frustrating. And the most people knows that Georgia City pretty well, council members, you know. So you can say anything you want. You can say that, but I can tell you that whatever you plan to come out. You're not going to satisfy what I believe the full problem. Well, you're never going to be correct. So I'm telling well, you, I haven't read it. talking about you are his boss, right? <laughs> you belong to your, your BA, right? The business administration. Yes, yes. My strong recommendation, please don't let him waste your time for this project. Let him assess some other project. He's very smart. He's a very sensible person. Let him spend some other place to go project other than this one, please. We know that, okay? And you know, too. So should I bother answering your four questions? Because you don't clearly bother. already reached a conclusion. Don't bother. You don't. Let them hope we can handle with them. And the four or five years later, if they come up with some very innovative idea to solve all those items for issue I bring of concern, then we adopt it. So why did you ask me those four questions if you'd already reached a conclusion? I try, I try to not discourage you, but I'm telling you. <laughs> that we just, on and on and on. I say, enough is enough. That's why I tell the straightforward. Don't waste your time. Okay. okay. So anyone else have questions? I, I have a couple of questions. So sure. um, the the value of the concession contract you suggest it's a gross or not? The resolution suggests gross annual revenue of three point six million. Um, can, can you provide us information on how you came to that? Uh, so it's 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 a it's a it's a it's an educated guess based on the number of scooters that would be out there, the number of rides uh, that would be you can taken. Provide us a breakdown of the number. Sure. Of so it basically works like this. Well, you don't have to. If you could provide us a hand right action. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the same thing with the annual revenue of 840000 And then does this contract only lead to a single award, or are there multiple providers who would be out in the... It could be one, or it could be multiple. Um, it, it's it's being discussed as to what which one, we, whether we go with one or, or multiple. I can give you my opinion on which I would prefer, but ultimately uh, that, that's, that might, might be a decision made by uh, someone higher. But, but the contract that would, the, the RFP that will go out, will it seek to have one or will it seek to have multiple uh, providers? The version I most recently wrote uh, had Three or four, but it could be scaled down to one, and with with uh, with smaller, with a lesser number of scooters. So I, mean, I haven't thought this through. With one versus multiple, I'm well, sure there comes with different pros and cons on that, right? So you get well. The thing is, this the the, the RFP is only for a year. Uh, if it goes that long, we can we can cut it off at any point if we find it that the, you know this is not working at all. You know, uh, then we when we cut it off long before the year's up. But it's just meant to go out a year. We look at the data. We see uh, we see the uh, you know whether this thing lived up to its uh, its potential. If it didn't, then we then we don't go forward. If it's a complete disaster um, right out of the gate, we can we can kill it right away. Um, I think that we're better off having uh, more than one, uh, so that they're competing for uh, if we go forward with this and they will be on their best behavior. When you just have one, you know, they don't really have to, uh, you know, strive to do better than the other guy. I think that we're always better off when we have a little competition. That's do my have, sense. In your research, do you have models for different cities that do multiple versus one? And Most of the ones I looked at had, had uh, at least two. Uh, Hoboken is uh, somewhat unique and it picked, uh, it picked, it picked well, one scooter company, the other one is like a, it's not the kind of scooter we're talking about, it's, it's more of like a moped situation, PG3. Um, and I don't like, I can't say whether like that 
uh, going for multiple is is better because as I said like the data set we're working on is maybe a little more than a year um, so, so will 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 the use of all of this in terms of on our roads um, and whether they're riding on the sidewalk or riding on the street and right um, all that stuff will that be strictly governed through the contract or is that through laws at the city there'll be an ordinance uh, there'll be an ordinance uh, laying out the literally the rules of the road for first and have we begun to has the administration started drafting those uh, yeah it's, it's pretty laws? much it's done it's mm -hmm. done could we get um, copies of that uh, draft at this point or is that uh, sure yeah is that, is that that's up to you guys I'm not uh, yeah I, I have I have a draft of it What's that? Yeah, and it deals with uh, speeds. It deals with where you can and can't go, uh, things like that. What age you have to be? You know, the the pretty standard stuff. I, I can. I'm happy to share. Great. Okay. Anyone else have questions? No. Nope. Great. Thank you. I, 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 one more. Sorry. Oh, you? Would, uh, would you guys be willing to meet with community groups? Because I know that. I have pretty much every neighborhood association in downtown that's going to want to meet I would and understand. Be, I'd, be, I'd, I'd love to. Okay. I, as you know, I, I was a, yeah. one of those you were? leaders for a number of years, yeah. and uh, I, I would be happy to okay. talk about I'll, I'll reach out to you and Brian and kind of set up, set up when that makes sense to have those conversations. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Everybody? Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> okay. John Mercer. John Mercer has two resolutions. Resolution 41 and 42. The first one is a resolution authorizing the award of a competitively bid contract to value payment systems to provide credit card and electronic payment services. We uh, issued an RFP. Received All right, we're on 1041. 1041. 1041. Yeah. 1041. Yeah. Issued an RFP and received 10 proposals. Uh, was evaluated by a committee. And and based on the evaluation value payment systems, who is our yeah. current vendor, uh, is the best fit to go forward with providing credit card and electronic payment services to the city. This is our current provider? Yes. Okay. Council members, questions? Just, I have a, one simple question. So, when we hire you, hire you a credit card company, 2014, at that time, city of Jersey gets some kind of share, property share. No, no. no. So now, this one, I'm asking that the fee charge compared with the last year, but this year we thought a bit so. Do they always get some low charge fee or convenience fee or low Yeah, the, the convenience fee uh, currently is 2.25% on credit card purchases, uh, 95 cents on e-checks. The new contract would be 2.2% on credit cards, so that's going down. Okay. The e-check fee is going down to 50 cents. And they're also introducing for property taxes only, mm -hmm. if you pay with a debit card, it's a flat $3.75 fee. How much was charged last time? Uh, it was 2.25% <clears throat> debit card for code. credit cards and uh, 95 cents for e-checks. Uh, debit cards was the flat 2.25%. Uh, last time too? Yes. 2.25%? Correct. So you do a great job. <laughs> okay, that's the statement. Because Thank you. Thank you. now my next question, oh, no. then my next question is that so if people use it their debit card, mm -hmm. doesn't matter the amount, as long as they pay, they pay a uh, 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 debit card, they only charge a convenience fee three dollars seventy five cents. For property taxes only. Property tax only, right? Yeah. But they not accept the credit card for uh, uh, property tax, if you use a credit card, you gotta pay 2.20%. Correct. Still high. You know, reason I'm asking you, if we pay the, all the property credit card, the mileage we want, I can go to world ships. <laughs> still, I'm try how I down with number 35. But still better than last year. Yes. Thank you. Keep the good work. Okay. Councilman Solomon. Just can you explain, so, so point and pay system, 
they proposed a convenience fee of 2.15 percent compared to its value systems of 2.20, and then a 350 fee for debit and credit, and uh, 375 compared to value. So it seems like both of their uh, price points were slightly lower. And I was wondering uh, why. Well, there were other I factors. Think. It wasn't just based on the sure. percentage fee. There were other factors. The size of the municipalities they've served, <clears throat> the clearing time for funds, uh, and the implementation time, which ranged from, I think, 14 days. Actually, for VPS, it would be zero since they're currently in place. But I think 14 days and one went up to 12 weeks. Okay. So all those factors were considered. But well, only one microphone was there. When we evaluated cost, in other words, a fee charge, the maximum fee charge is a 35 point. But some company they put you to 70. The maximum point is a 35, then everybody to 35. So one company they put you 70 other than 35. So end of the total number was, was different. I just want to make sure next time when you come out the paper, use the right numbers. Okay? Well, yeah, well, we. What it is is the 35 points is the number of points assigned to that criterion. Right. And then, the and, and then we and then we weight that criterion by how well the vendor meets the, the needs of that criterion. So if they didn't meet it at all, or if they said we're going to charge a 10% convenience fee, they would get a zero. If they said we're going to charge a you know 2.6% fee, well then they might get a one for that. But if they were going to charge 2.5 or less, then they would get the two points. But when I see the cost, the company compares the two. Uh, I tried to not go on the point and pay and the value pay system. Mm -hmm. Actually, point and pay was a fee was a low then value pay system, but the point is a set instead of 35, they put you weight twice than the other company. But long to make sure, still we save the money yeah. for the la last year. Yeah. So I give you some credit to your apple. Okay, you know. thank you. Okay, 10.42 is just a one-year renewal of an agreement for uh, website hosting and maintenance services on our current website. Do we? We should we should request for quotes. We did receive 20. Um, responses and we are looking at a replacement but but we you know obviously that would not be in place uh, and there's, there's no way to renew for six months versus no a year council any questions on 1042 no. none thank you John okay. thank you. oh John can you just give me the, uh, the balance on this account on which account? Uh, the account that you're drawing down. Okay. okay. Also, um, uh, administration is uh, withdrawing resolution 19489. Do you want to speak on that? Which one? Constellation uh, Energy. Yeah, we have some, some uh, past due charges for Constellation Energy. I'm sorry, John. This okay. is uh, number six. Ten, ten, ten six. Uh, for uh, electrical generation. Uh, from 2015 to 2018, the bills were actually uh, went to the wrong place. It was supposed to be combined billing. That wasn't done. Um, so we uh, thought we owed them about 522000 I received an email from our consultant on Friday that they're re-looking at those numbers, and so that may not be correct. Because so it's withdrawn. What's that? It's withdrawn. Yes. Okay. All right. So, I'll be up next. Uh, okay. Right. Thank you. All right, Brooke, and then Elizabeth, and Steve, and Christine, etc. Brooke has um, resolution 22 and resolution 30. Which one do you want to start? It's actually 30 and 32. Oh, 30 and 32. Okay. 
Uh, but resolution 30, uh, I just realized there's an error. This resolution is actually supposed to be an amendment to an existing agreement that we have uh, to access Conrail trestles for the purposes of graffiti removal. Uh, however, it looks that the, the uh, locations are the locations that we've already accessed, not the ones that we're um, trying to access, and we're going to have to table that. I'll have to correct that and get that onto the okay, next meeting. Okay, so this council. is withdrawn until the next meeting? Correct. 30, 32. 30. 30. 30. It's, yeah, to access Conrail trestles for the purpose of graffiti removal. We have 32, which is a resolution authorizing the city to enter an agreement with Summit Plaza Associates Urban Renewal Management, Spa Management LLC, LIHC, LP Solutions Fund, Belveron Fund, 3JV LLC, Newsome Associates, Belveron Real Estate Partners, Cordasco Construction Management LLC, and authorizing the Office of Risk Management to issue a certificate of insurance for the coverage of a mural project as part of the city's public arts program. Correct, yes, we're going to be, uh, we're partnering with a sponsor, NJCU, and we're gonna be installing uh, murals on both sides of this building, um, and our uh, contribution is gonna be ensuring that project for the duration of its execution. What which building is this? This is, uh, this is uh, Summit Plaza, located at Five Corners, in the corner of Newark and Summit. What kind of mural do you put there? Uh, we uh, have worked with the building owners and our sponsor, NJCU, and uh, we have uh, picked two international artists. They're going to be doing abstract art. We're going to be reviewing them in our public art advisory board tomorrow evening. Yeah, but what kind of artwork? Abstract art. Yeah, I know. But Colorful I abstract you, art. I told you what the people up in that area want. Correct. And it'll go through our board. We have a public art advisory board. We send out notices uh, to any active neighborhood block association in a one mile radius of any mural program. Yeah. And so they all have notice, they're all welcome to come and give their input. We've expressed to you what we want. We don't want any, you know, some of the stuff that's being put up. And I'll tell you something else. When this program started five years ago, we are supposed to stop graffiti. Graffiti is getting worse than ever. Uh, it's, it's sad. 99% uh, of our murals have remained graffiti free. So our, our yeah, murals I'm are a thing. mitigation. I'm talking about graffiti on houses, doors, yeah. poles. And yeah, I think our inspectors would disagree with you. And in fact, I work with the court system, so any individuals who are arrested for graffiti work with our program. Maybe. So I work with over 10 individuals that have uh, performed graffiti, and I assure you they are not picking up spray paint Tell and the picking illegally in our arrested. city. Tell me the last person that was arrested for graffiti. Uh, his name is John. No, 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 don't say no names. No, you don't say no names. Okay. No, he was a gentleman that came to us last year, and he is now our full-time mural assistant. Yeah, that was a year ago. I'm talking about that. Because they well, put that's absolutely all over the place. I'm not out there arresting so, people. So, Council President, Council Minion, for the record, we have some illegal jobs. Thank you. From the Central you. Avenue, that the open gallery program we created 20 years ago, so finally recognized by as far as to NJ.com, we have a whole story about Central Avenue viewers, almost 20 some in the pieces. I'm so proud of Central Avenue SID and the U effort, and also Hudson County Culture Fair, they are funding for some, you know. So, because of that effort, to take 20 years, open gallery from Mueller program Central Avenue, very successful. So, I'm thankful for you. Thank you. I enjoy working with David Diaz. He's a great partner. Council person, really. There is a new mural in Ward A on Rutgers Avenue. Yes, Rutgers and Stevens. Yes, beautiful mural. And how was the location chosen? Uh, they actually reached out to us, Lester Lewis Powder. Um, and he reached out to us, and um, we offered him a selection of four different artists. Uh, he selected Emilio Florentine, he's a local artist. Um, and in fact, on the 19th, we're going to have a small ribbon cutting for the community, and the elected officials were just confirming the time of mayor. Are there questions on this? No. Yeah, I broke if, um, so this location is going to be said two artists, right? Yes, it'll be two it's artists. Two separate murals? Uh, we're painting both sides of the building. Okay. And what's the address? Oh, sorry. What's the address? 627 yeah. Summit Avenue. Um, is uh, any no, cost to the city? Money for the Only in kind. Everything is being covered yes. by our sponsors. Yeah, well, how come it's not? Um, so the sponsors, who are the sponsors? NJCU. Yeah. And uh, Iron State is helping us house one of the artists that's coming in from out of the country. Yeah. And 
now, now, when it goes through the public arts advisory board, yes. Um, City so, so that that advisory board is comprised of. How, how is the composition determined? Uh, the composition was determined by um, the law department created yeah, the no, uh, the ordinance for that. Councilwoman Waterman is on it, um, and it's comprised of a business owner, a councilwoman, and a visual artist. And what's the basis of the determination of the? Is that by law or is that by for you? Is that like, we know? The Public Art Advisory Board? Yeah. Or is it uh, uh, executive I, order? It was an executive order. Done by law. So that that determination of like the composition of the advisory board can that be done by law or is that something like executive order? Right? It was created by the law department. The makeup of it. I'm talking about municipal law. Like as opposed to executive order. Talking to the council. I looked into that question for you. Seems like this the, the composition of an advisory board to create a board to create the advisory board, yes, or to create could a law be established creating an advisory board for this function? So like, we need to you'll have to tell me that. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. 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 law, no. It's a resolution. We do an executive. I mean, we do a law. I have a city council establish a law in itself. So, no. So you you said you have like twenty years. Yeah, please. I'll reach out. Artists that you were selected that were selected from. Um, so, so who determines like what's, who's on that selection? Who, who, which artists are part of the pool of artists to be selected from? So part of so the, yeah, the bylaws, and I'll be happy to share them with you. The bylaws um, lists exactly who should make up that board, and those members were chosen by the mayor. No, not, not the members. The, the, the pool of artists who are oh, determined to be part of the pool. Oh, uh, well, our team, the Jersey City Mural Arts Program. So we we and, yeah, as a, as a team internally, we um, vet artists. We have a giant uh, roster. We have an artist application, um, and you know it, it, we choose artists one based on their skill and the appropriateness of their talent and their ability to work on a large scale, um, and then we work with the property owners and/or community group depending on how that wall came to us, um, and they tell us broadly what kind of theme, design, style they're interested in seeing, and then we present them uh, with about four to six different artists for them to select from. Once they decide which artist's body of work they like best. We then approach that artist, uh, we let them know what the, com the community or the property owner is interested in seeing, and they create a proposal for us, and then that goes through the board. And an extensive public notice goes out, it goes to the newspaper, the BA, the law department, and every active neighborhood block association within a one mile radius of any project, which is actually a very huge radius, so pretty much everybody gets it. If I could get just whatever that uh, process looks like, if there's like rules, that's, sure. that's all written out. And then just in terms of that selection, like how those artists get on to be among the pool of artists, um, you're saying the Arts Bureau Program team is that, makes that determination as to who's uh, eligible artists? Yeah, we have, I would say at this point, over 150 artists on our roster. They uh, complete applications. Could we get a list of uh, the eligible artists and the, and the team that uh, determines eligibility? Sure. That's it. Anyone else? Councilor Yes. I know currently we um, we do the bills on our property. Mm -hmm. Is there any um, I guess opportunity to erect like a canvas? Like if we have it in an area that let's say I don't know is it's open to something, would we be able to I guess erect a canvas for somebody to do a more a mural on like I don't know build a wall, kind of cement wall or wood or something? That would be outside of the purview of our program. Our funding is strictly an anti-graffiti grant, so our, our funding covers paint and stipends, small and, and small stipends too. They're not terribly competitive. It's only when we partner with other um, entities that have you know flexible budgets that we're able to do these large-scale projects. Um, so, so doing something like that, that would maybe be under the purview of cultural affairs. Okay. Any other? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Elizabeth. Have a good job. Okay.
Elizabeth has two resolution, uh, two ordinances. No resolutions. Okay. Um, there we go. Resolution three and resolution four. Elizabeth is with Exchange Place Alliance. It's a resolution. Resolution number three is a resolution adopting and ratifying the 2019-2020 budget of the Exchange Place Alliance Special Improvement District. And 10.4 is a resolution accepting the assessment of all of the Exchange Place Alliance oh, Special Improvement District. Elizabeth, I Elizabeth, do you want to, let, let's, Elizabeth, do you want to say anything before? Um, I mean, I emailed everybody directly with all the information back in April, I believe, so I'll just take questions. It hasn't changed much since last year. Elizabeth, you're an open, uh, I spoke to Mr. Baker about this. Uh, you're an open public meeting place, uh, your meetings, the SID. Yes, Just like General Square meeting. and Michael's up on the, mm -hmm. uh, a person in an open meeting, if I'm not mistaken, has every right to film the meeting. And you threw, uh, not you, uh, the other guy threw uh, one of the girls out twice now and called the police. And as far as I understand, am I right? It's a public meeting. Provided, or, the, per, provided the person is not being disrupted or interfering with the activities. Right. So if she wasn't, it's a legal throw her out. Number two. Unless she does what Peter just said. All right. If she wasn't disruptive, she has every right to film the meeting. I would invite you to come to a meeting. Right. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of disagreements because of the uh, monument and everything else. Secondly, <laughs> tell them down there, Mac Cowley, leave the park alone. Because they think the... What uh, park? That when you get to the end of Montgomery Street, they want to make a park and take away the where we have the festivals and stuff. Well, a lot of people... It's a street. Well, you know, talking about the pier or...? No, you change place. Change place. Yeah. Not the pier, before the pier. Place. Leave that ground yeah. alone. Solomon, I'm telling you right now, and you thought the Polish were uprising. You'll see that the people want it left alone. We have the Irish Festival there, the Caribbean Festival there. We have a lot of festivals. And what they did last year, throwing them over to buy back of Ferris High School, was an out and out disgrace of what they did. I'm not blaming you, Liz. You know what I'm talking. You know exactly who I'm after. Again, listen, I just want to address that. Right. The about Puerto Rican Day Parade oh, yeah, Committee yeah. decided to do the festival behind Ferris. I'm not defending the SID, but that was by choice. Because they were told they couldn't go down. No, no. Uh, they were not no. told that. It was by choice. Really? Yeah. They found out it was more room for them, yeah. and they could park. It's so, more room and it's less disruption to residents. Right. On. They were happy. So when you keep saying again, they were going again, back there, I went down here. To clarify, does it mean that this committee is going to, this new committee is going to have it there, right. but the last committee, that's where they want it. Right. So oh, no, no, they move back to what they If, if, if they know. want to, they'll put in permits for it. Do you have any okay. questions about the budget? Questions about the budget, yes. yes. <laughs> Council members, any? Mm -hmm. Sure. Council members, all of you. Give us an update on Four Corners Park and the civic involvement and where right. you stand there. Well, Four Corners Park is uh, in Historic Commission. It's been there since December. So we're hoping to be on the June 20th meeting, I believe that is. Yeah. Okay, and where's the, the, the funding for, so it goes through the Historic Commission. Where, where are we at with the funding? Um, we are still trying to get the funding that was promised from China Construction. Uh, the stipulation was that it was going to be approved before they would release the funding by December 28th. We did get internal approval from the uh, city architect, but like I said, this was actually submitted to Historic before the end of the year last year, but they were um, doing it. But it's a Title 31, I believe it's called, presentation, and the architect has already approved it, so we met the conditions of that funding, they just need to release it to us. So that will only cover? 350,000. Right. And so where are we just getting the rest of the funding? We gotta get a plan approved first, and then we can budget it out, and then we'll figure that out. Okay, and, and what is the SIDS willingness to spend its like $3.5 million of capital funding on? That's up to the board. And you don't, and the board, so? We, We've already invested over $100,000, we purchased 
play equipment for the project. So we're clearly committed. We've invested time, money, effort for the last year to move it forward. And where's the, um, has this done anything, any updates uh, on peninsula farm and the long term funding for that? And I always say this because it's important that when, when the ordinance created and said it was first passed, then Councilman Osborne said mm -hmm. the primary reason mm -hmm. for creating the city in her mind was the long term preservation of peninsula farm. Yeah, we've been in contact with the city architect to kind of regroup the, uh, what is that, the clock park? Colgate, Colgate Clock Park, because mm -hmm. um, really the view or, or the vision for it is to connect Colgate Park to Peninsula Park and make a whole long, uh, continue the walkway in a, a cohesive manner. Um, as you know, the state owns the park, so we need to get started on that. So does Brian have a plan? or what's I haven't had a follow-up meeting with Brian probably in a few months. We were doing the Four Corners Park. You know, the we, mm -hmm. priorities keep changing. First it was Exchange Place, now it's Four Corners Park. And then when Four Corners Park is pushed forward, you know, yeah. it's taking a lot of effort to keep it moving down the line, mm -hmm. uh, more effort than it probably should, to be honest with you, uh, to update a neighborhood park. Uh, then we can move on to kind of the next capital improvement. Can I ask you Councilman Young. Okay, so first things, thank you for your hard work. Thanks. You did a great job. But now, I want to ask you that we're going to have a 4th of July event at the Exchange Place. Mm -hmm. What kind of dollar Exchange Place SIB contributed 4th of July event? We contributed, we just actually had our board meeting and voted to contribute $100,000 to the event. So your organization contributed $100,000. Fourth of July, right? Mm -hmm. The hundred thousand dollars include what? I don't know. I don't do the budget for the Fourth of July. That's, that's, that's We're just contributing to it because we believe it's a great event and it's in our district and it's meeting the yes. obligations that we have to bring people to the neighborhood and, yeah. and yeah. create yeah. We'll exposure. Hundred thousand dollars. Reason I asking you. Most of the Fourth of July, you look at as a city event or you look at it as an uh, exchange SID event? I look at it as a city event being held in our district, so we support it. Okay. Anyway, else? Any other yes. questions no. about the budget? Hearing none, thank you, Elizabeth. Sorry yeah. to wait. That's okay, thanks. Steve, you're up. Steve has uh, resolutions 31, 37, and 38. Resolution 31 is a resolution authorizing the execution of a municipal services agreement with the Port Liberté Homeowners Association, Inc., pursuant to the Municipal Services Act, New Jersey Statutes Annotated 40, Coleman 67-23.2, uh, for the City of Jersey City to provide certain services or reimbursements for services. Uh, okay. Steve, you want to say anything about that? Or? Um, no? Sure. You don't have to. Uh, Port Liberté Condo 1 came off their tax abatement at the end of uh, 2016. They closed the city about a year ago to uh, work on getting reimbursed under the state law as a gated community. And for the last year, Ray Reddington and I have been mostly dealing with the lawyer and the homeowner association group to get to this point where there's an agreement. And uh, I think the agreement's attached. And this will continue uh, every year, just like Society Hill has as well. Okay, questions, council members? Yes. Let me ask you this one. Yes, hopefully what pay is the tax abatement is over. So city has to provide, I mean, even though tax abatement, we still provide mm -hmm. municipal service. Mm -hmm. If we snow it, mm -hmm. in the snow snows, but I have a problem. But I have a concern is that you just say gate community. So the gate has a sign. They call it but property, no trespassing. So city of Jersey City are really going to legally have responsible private property to clean the snow? Now, what we're responsible for under the law is to reimburse the association part of their cost for them cleaning the snow. So you, you, when you try to, as a, we, 
city of Jews as a public entity, the streets is open to everybody walk in and out without without certain permission that we call private street. So we should be reimbursed their service. But they call them, they call the sign private property. And the city of Jersey never condemned my backyard. And the, I do that, they never reimburse me. Uh, I might have to defer I mean, to the water park to I was always that too, wondering why city of Jersey reimburse private property maintenance. It's not a whole lot of money, only $81,000. I'm sorry, $81,000. Still $81,000. Why we reimburse that private property? And not only that, they say no trespassing. Come on. It's the same situation, Councilman, that Society Health. Once their tax abatement ended, they're now eligible under the state statute for reimbursement for street lighting on their streets and portion of their snow reimbursement. Then they have to remove that. Signs for private property, no trespass out of the gate. Council yes. President, you got to defer to the law department to explain the statute. No, so, law department, as expensive, maybe I miss something. Not correct on it. To the, to the, yeah. I mean, it, it is, Councilman, it's governed by a state statute that defines what a qualified private community is. I don't know the, the entire meets and bounds of what constitutes that private community. I can get back to you with that information. Yes, please, okay. okay. Because even the private property, when I get inside that, yeah, we actually, $81,000, not only the tax, part of my tax, maybe penny, contribute that street, then I have a right getting in and out without permission. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I just drive, just public street. Why I cannot drive in, drive out? So just law department, make clear, if we still say yes, if they commit the right to do that, then we gotta think about the reimbursement, really. Peter, well, the reimbursement I can explain. Yeah, I understand, okay. but we just wanna make sure. The statute is a different category. Yes, but just make sure that state statute, I mean, yeah. or if they remove the sign, private property, no trespassing, I understand. But still there's sign in there. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Councilman Solomon, we're just adding on that the Corporation Council did in the whereas clause, it says the city, you know, is required to do certain things, but then it says it may elect to reimburse for other things. And if you could just kind of help, under, help me understand what we're required to do as a state statute and what's maybe a, a discretionary choice in this matter, that would be helpful. Okay. okay. And, we'll, and we'll have that before the vote on the resolution? Yes. I, ideally. Sounds like a big yeah. heavy lift. Well, I anticipate if there are any issues, I will okay. advise. Okay, the only other thing I should explain is, um, and it's attached, I think, in there, is the formula that we used for Port Liberty Condo 1 in determining the uh, reimbursement for the snow was based on the square footage of the streets that are involved, um, which is different from what was done years ago for Society Hill, which was simply a straight amount that was given. Um, and the street lights in this case is only for the light because they don't own the, uh, the poles. So this is similar to uh, Society of Three Torres Point. Yeah. We just paid for the actual light. We just want to make sure. That's know. the clarification on the amounts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Your next item is 10, uh, Resolution 37. It's a resolution authorizing the renewal of an open end contract with Paper Mart Inc. to provide copier paper and interdepartmental envelopes for the Department of Public Works. Any questions, questions on that? On this? this was a... Uh, Does this paper serve the whole city? Copy of paper for the whole city, yes. So, in theory, the department shouldn't be purchasing their own paper? They should all be going through you? They all go through me for copy of paper and interdepartmental envelopes. Okay. Unless it's something really specialized, right. like IT paper or, you know, engineering Revolution. special paper. Right. Resolution paper, but basic exactly. copy paper, so different the sizes, part, yeah. different colors, different quality, uh, card size, card stock, all, good stuff. all of it's in this. Yes. All that's in this. Yes. All right. This is they the public. They sent me an email with a form, and we right. ordered the paper, and it gets delivered. Okay, Councilman Young? Yeah, this is what a, a public bid, right? 
Yes, this is the renewal of the public bid. Before you tell the public, did you get some quotation from the open market, other companies? Uh, <coughs> that was last year's, yeah. Yeah? yeah so this was just the renewal of it. So I, I have um, it's just a question about uh, myself, Councilperson Waterman, and Robinson. Bob had spoken with uh, Met with diversity and inclusion, purchasing, and uh, the law department at one time. Um, and if we could just get an update, I guess this is more to the administration. Um, there was the, the, there was going to be an ordinance that was going to be drafted uh, with regard to uh, diversity and inclusion and making sure that. Uh, um, that we were looking for uh, local vendors, minority vendors, and so forth, and that they were going through diversity and inclusion to check that box before um, or making them aware. I forget exactly what the right. parameters were. Um, and then secondly, um, it's my understanding we were going to start implementing something even before our ordinance was like, and so I'm just curious what, what that process looks like today. Um, and the answer doesn't need to come today to have a yeah. conversation with someone from the administration and diversity and inclusion at yeah. a future meeting. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Steve, uh, I gotta get balances on this, Steve. Uh, the balancing your account for this, uh, where it's being drawn down from, the uh, uh, unclassified operating account. Yeah, and, that's uh, my 433 account. Yeah, and the spend down on that, and what's the balance, okay? And well, then that you've got account to, covers a bunch of other things besides copy of paper. Yeah. But I can give you a breakdown on the on that part of it, sure. Yeah, 10.38. It's a resolution authorizing the renewal of a contract with Ratchless Michelle's Oil Company for supply and delivery of gas and diesel fuel for the Department of Public Works. Total cost of the contract is over one million, one point four million dollars. How do you understand? When you put up the bid, the gas and diesel price up and down, up and down. Every day. Every day. That's why. Right. How would you put up the bid? You based on what? It's based on the delivery charge that the vendor is going to ask for on top of what is on the daily sheet for delivery. So if today's delivery is $2 a gallon, they, they bid to add on $0.03 cents for a gallon. That's what they're doing. So, so now, this is my concern is that we put the bid today. Yeah. So like a, a, a gas price, two dollars per gallon. So I mean, when the people vendors, when you pop a bid, based on what? I mean, really, sometimes that's confusing. Can't you explain a little more? It's based on the price on the day of delivery. It price changes day of delivery. every single time. So more likely they be for delivery cost. Yes, there's a form that comes from the state of New Jersey that gives you the price, and then you add on this delivery charge to pay them. And it varies every, every day it changes. And on each delivery, usually it's once a week for diesel, twice a week for gas. Um, that day will come with the bill, with the delivery receipt saying how many gallons they put in, and the form from the state that tells you what the price is for that day. And that's how it's processed. And you'll see it on the claims, you'll see the actual payment going through each time we do a, a payment. Yeah. Okay. So when we spend the $1.4 million is a lot of money. Well, we have a lot of vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> we do get reimbursed from the Board of Education for the use of the school buses. Yeah. Uh, so that helps a little bit. And we will start to get reimbursed. We should look at that. Hopefully soon. Uh, <laughs> we should well, look at that as a shared you know, service because it's, uh, yeah. again, we've got uh, challenges. Sure. With, uh, Either way you fact, want I think to do we it. had a conversation with the library too. Yes. Shared uh, service for that. Yes. The library doesn't, doesn't get gas, but in the Board of Ed, it's the school buses. We get about $100,000 a year from them for the gas and diesel for the school buses. Goes right back into this account to pay Rachel's for the use of gas and diesel on the school buses. So, I know, again, you, either I mean, way. When, when Greg gets back, I guess, but just the, mm -hmm. we're looking at ways to do shared service, additional shared services with the school, so we can look into the idea of shared services with the public schools. And picking up this cost off their 
their books. I don't know what the amount is for how much school. Well, like I said, it's about a hundred thousand each year. Every dollar counts. Um, well, then I have to increase this budget to pay the hundred thousand. Um, <laughs> so I just like to ask, as far as like uh, consumption and use, consumption of uh, gas and diesel. Um, can you? Is it possible to provide breakdowns? I don't know as to which vehicles or types of vehicles, I should say. So, Automotive has prepared that information for the budget office. I'd like to see that the breakdown between civilian vehicles versus uh, police and fire versus. Um, so, have proposed the idea in the budget hearing about the idea of kind of Uber using Uber for much of our civilian fleet to kind of cut down on some of our. Costs around these things, and I'd love to see what the number is on this. All right. Any other questions, Council, on this? No. Hearing none. Thank you, Steve. Who are we at? Christine. Christine. Yeah. Christine has um, several resolutions, uh, resolution 22 to 26 and resolution 44. 22 to 26 and resolution uh, 44. 22 to 26 all accomplish the same objectives. Yes. That's securing agreements with the property owners for our 4th of July celebration. Yes. Is there anything you want to say about this? Uh... It's for the use of the property to run elements of the event. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have questions for who seen on these items? Is it? Is it? Because of the state shutdown and having to relocate several years ago and how the budget comes right at the same time as July 4th and puts us in a precarious position. True. And we may, and we may be in the same position this year. Right. Yeah. 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 So like, instead of being held hostage really, to like the state's yeah. budgeting process. Yeah. <clears throat> I personally would like to see him there too, but it's very But yeah, it became that situation. So any any questions about this? No. None? Okay. Um, you've got a resolution number forty four. Or oh, is there any cost to these things? Uh, resolution 44, it's an awarding professional services agreement to fireworks by Rucci for a fireworks display on July 4th near Exchange Place. Anything you want to say? Same as last year? Same as last year as far as... The whole month not change? Same as last year. Less. Yeah, they actually, um, it's coming in $6,300 less. 6000 But last year they gave some bonus fireworks. <laughs> They're not going to do that. They're going to spell your name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> put your name up there. Why you went? How about unless you think you're some polos? Sure. I understand. Uh, I mean, sometimes if they have extra fireworks. Yeah. Just crazy. I remember Councilman Yun raising the questions about like uh, yeah. artistry or something that had distinguished mm -hmm. them from the other. Yep. And I sent a whole. Yeah. Yep. 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 So yeah. we know that. I think at Pennsylvania we know that. We're going to spend uh, $128,000, 22 minutes firework. So simply $5,850 to $2 per minute. By second, $975 per second for firework, making you guys eyes to the front. Well, it's, I mean, it's more than that, right? Police, okay. It's more than that because we're already police. police we're and said it's a, we spend a million the first dollars it's almost a million dollars. OT, public works at over yes. 100000 That's a great question. Over time, hmm. it's, it's a lot of money. Cost for really, I'm really going to ask that. Some not this year because you say you already planning. Next year, we got to think about that really seriously. Really, we say worse to spend millions of dollars for 22 minutes for fun. It's a lot of money. Well, I, I would say actually it starts at noon and it goes until right. 10 o'clock at night. 
It's a 10 hour celebration for 150,000 people and it provides them access to free entertainment and celebration free. to the point that we've actually become a regional draw for this particular celebration. Right. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know how many families are our service free for the public? Okay, one okay. at a time. Waterman and then Robinson? No, no? I was just saying, no, no, it's important. Because how many, this is a free event for a lot of families. I, I, I think it's important, to. but my, my concern is that it's pretty good for Stephen. I think maybe we should have a, a full budget, right? And so, because you know, if we're spending 1.5 million, when you add up all the costs, maybe you know, maybe the budget should be a million. And you have a grade of that, and we save 500 thousand dollars. Not only that. So that, that's my my gets, We should have an event. Yeah. It's just I, I it, we end up because all these costs don't come together. We never put them into one. We never actually know how much this event costs us. Yeah. Uh, and, and, that, and, that, and you know, look, a million dollars is not common number. So so not only that. You know, people in the leave the heights, it's not easy to travel down to exchange place. So if we spend those kind of dollars, maybe we divide each area, a lot of town based, small town they do. Maybe person field has some firework. So instead of people go out, have a drink, fun in the exchange place, have the only local business in that area, let's give some help so citywide local business. I think that is a proper way. First thing. It's more convenience to people, you know? So, try well, to Riverview get could see the fireworks. <laughs> so, there is a too. I, I have both. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's yeah. transportation. To, to, to piggyback on what Councilman Ginson, I have a couple of questions, which is, um, um, in terms of um, for the vendors, and um, are, are there like contracts with some of the vendors who may be food trucks or other food providers where they're paying certain fees to, and where is that revenue going to and who is it going to, I guess? And then um, my second thing is, in terms of the selection and to, to the point about local vendors and so forth, um, and, and how do people get to avail of like that opportunity as far as some of our local vendors to be able to do that? Well, there's a fee to run the, the food trucks. And so that, yeah. Way more money. Yeah. So we partnered with a nonprofit. The a whole idea and the whole vision for this is that we start moving a lot of the festival away from city services. We bring in their sponsors and partners that really take on the bigger pieces of this festival. So we are, you know, we've got the family entertainment, the festival side of it, and that the entertainment side is really not part of the city's wheelhouse. So now, just we're gonna make clear that part. Of it, so now, different story. So. City of Jersey City, as uh, Exchange Place mentioned today, that event belongs to City of Jersey City. So then we have a jurisdiction to all Exchange Place for event. Then food vendors come in, they pay for food vendors, fee, whatever they pay fee, their money go to where? City of Common says that fee has to go to City of Jersey City. But who took that the fee? Right, but over 50% of this festival is on private property. Okay, so it's a partnership, and the size of this event has gotten to the point that we need partners. We need all of these partners to help make this possible. And then that way it doesn't all fall on cultural affairs. So we, we, huh? Oh, no, 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 to make sure. Then we are the one putting the major dollars the way some councilman James Solomon say, we spend the close to maybe $2 million for that. And the revenue generating the event goes somewhere. So where we go, you say partner. Tell me the partner. So we have all the partners here. Um, the Quality Education for Kids is a nonprofit. And what we're hoping is, you know, if there's any money left over, they can use that for programs that serve students. No, hold on, baby. We, this city council never proved that their revenue generating, and we are the major sponsor. Well, we usually we don't generate revenue, but the whole idea is that we that sponsors are the ones that are going towards the entertainment and things like that. Wait a minute. When we see that all the budget, most of singers, the band the hiring, we city of Joy City pay. No, we don't. So no, you don't. Then tell me all those sponsors. You know what? I'm the sponsor. 
Yeah, they're sponsors. all here. All of our part, all the sponsors that have come together. So then, they to be able what to kind of dollar they sponsor to the event? I can give you the whole breakdown of that. So please, okay? Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, you're, you're doing very good, but why just make sure that mm -hmm. if a financial sponsor, if they contribute money, then contribute money, not take away revenue. That's the financial sponsor. If they say, put in the money, whatever general money, if they bring back their pocket again, that's not the sponsor. No, I agree. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so we want to know what their sponsor amount to what it is, mm -hmm. and you say whatever general revenue share, you share with a which sponsor? Yes. Sponsor should be that, that, and the, how much they sponsor? Why they have to be taken? See, you only spend more than two some million dollars. We just put up, in other words, I dancing, and who make money? Somebody else. I don't want things to happen. Yes, sir, on the list. So please. Really. Yeah, please. We gotta make it clear. Yep. You can send to Marlene. Marlene, 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 Okay, yeah. let's keep moving along. We got a lot to cover. Yeah. If they share with the exchange price, understandable. You know, but not somebody else. Now, somebody told me to go get it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Do you feel better? Okay. Yeah, keep her along. Oh, okay. Say thank you, too. She was at? She just left. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. You make a tons of money on the beer. Sell the beer. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right, folks, we have uh, Joe Cunha here. Um, he's got the, they're all, um, yeah. him and you at the, um, the start of this meeting. Um, their resolution's 10.50 to 10.55. Thank you, sir. What, what he has 50 to 55. Resolution's 50 to 55. They were just handed out at the start of this meeting. May I, uh, Council President, with your permission, may I start with an ordinance? Just one quick ordinance for hallway stops. Yeah, I apologize. Marlene, I forgot to tell you about this one. I'm covering Andrew uh, tonight here. Which one is this? So this is uh, City Ordinance 19-064. It is item number... Third, uh, first first reading. Ordinance 2. Yes, that's it. First reading ordinance. That's correct. 3.2. Correct. What is it? Ordinance 3.2 mm -hmm. designates Monmouth Street and 5th Street, Pavonia Avenue and West Hamilton Place, 10th Street and Monmouth Street and Warren Street and 2nd Street as always stop intersections. Uh, yes, these are uh, long time coming. Uh, a couple of these did not previously qualify when we first ran the numbers. Uh, specifically in the case of 10th, I'm sorry, 5th and Monmouth, but considering the latest data from the last couple of quarters, uh, I don't know what the uptick is causing it, but obviously that must be why you're getting the complaints. So, um, that yes, and the ring doorbell videos, yes, I recall that. Every accident. Yep. So uh, that qualified that one. Tenth uh, and Monmouth is also an odd, odd configuration. Difficult uh, sight distance at the uh, embankment. Uh, that that warranted uh, placement there, and the others obviously. Um, we wouldn't have recommended them if they didn't meet the warrants. So, I'd like to uh, recommend that for introduction. Uh, now, if we can, yes. Can provide um, the data that, uh, sure. that, that, what, that didn't, previously did not qualify. As sure. What's, what it is now that did qualify. Yeah, that, that was the one location. I, I will yeah. definitely get that for you. Fifth and month. Yeah, when Andrew had said to me verbally, we should confirm and get a written. What he had said to me was when they looked at it initially, there wasn't any crashes. And then there have been six crashes in the last six months, so they, that, that they just qualified me in crashes. That's crash down. Yes, it's crash down. Crash down, yeah. And, and to be clear, crash could be, there's a whole host of classifications for a crash. It's not like one type of crash. Okay. So yes, I could definitely get you that. Uh, is there a particular order that the 50 through? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give them to you. Thank you. Uh, 50. Fifty is Katerra contracting construction. No, uh, Katerra, Katerra construction for three sixty five Summit Avenue. That's a license yeah. agreement. No, that's not. But you're really here for fifty one through fifty. You're not doing. My apologies. I threw. No, not fifty. That sounds okay. like. Uh, so let's just go to. We'll skip fifty. Go to. We'll go come back to fifty one. Fifty one so. is Maze <coughs> Consulting. Yes, okay, yeah, so this is the PJP landfill. That's correct. This is the uh, annual contract. In the past, we've had biannual contracts. 
uh, we decided it's best to go uh, year by year on this. You approved, uh, you approved the contract in the amount of, I think it was 263000 last year, around this time. Uh, this one went up slightly because, I don't know if you know or not, but the DEP adds, rarely subtracts contaminants from their uh, overall list that they require testing for. They've added PFOAs. Please don't ask me to tell you what that is, but I could send you data on it. Uh, it's tied to the fire extinguisher chemicals that you may have heard about on the news that are now becoming an epidemic. So now we have to test for that as well in our monthly testing as part of the operations and maintenance of the landfill that we now own. We've owned now for some years. That's what this contract is for. Okay, any questions on that? Can I just get the balances on that set of counts? Yes. Thank you. So we put out the fire poison the land. Uh, that, yeah, you know what? It could have been the stuff they used to put the fires out. Uh, okay, your next item. Uh, next <laughs> item, what number is that, Robert? That is 52. Arcadis to the I check guess, cashing uh, site. I just want to know something. How come we received all of these tonight? Joe's going to Joe's gonna have to explain, gonna explain this. Uh, I had a, a rare, I'm going to call it rare. I don't usually come to you with late items. I had a rare mishap in the office. It was on me. Uh, I thought that we had processed the purchase orders simultaneous with our uh, legislative paperwork. They were not in tune with each other, and one caused the others to be late. So we could have pushed it to the next meeting, but I really didn't want to overload that agenda. I think I have about six items for that one. So I was trying to keep it 50-50, and uh, Council President and Robert Byrne graciously uh, assisted me with pushing this through, and I, I ask that you uh, pardon me this one time. All right, Joe, um, let me ask you this. Do you have 50 doors? Uh, no, no, no. No, 50's no, 50's not, 50's not me. 50's because not me. I think this should be pulled. All right, let's, let's talk about that later. Let's get through the rest of Joe's stuff. So, we so we're on Arcadis. I have two for Arcadis, Robert. One is yeah, for one the... Yeah, one is for uh, the... Check cashing site, the other for 1315 Linden. Okay, so that's the check. 5253, sir. Right, so the check cashing site, that's the uh, site immediately adjacent and part of the landfill property. Uh, so to that end, we are looking to start the delisting from the Superfund site, which is the naughty list that the EPA keeps for the worst, most contaminated sites in the country. Uh, this is the last, this is the final remaining Superfund site in Jersey City. And uh, because this portion, was lumped in with the rest of the landfill. In order for us to be able to get it off of the list, we need to proceed with some additional work and some additional monitoring while testing, ensure that the plume hasn't uh, chased beyond the property limit and into Route 440, at which point it may trigger the involvement of the NJDOT. So uh, our NJDEP and US EPA monitors have requested that this contract or a contract of this nature be in place so that we continue the progress that we've made down there uh, and move this to uh, a developable site, however you wish to develop it um, as part of the landfill as well or as separate. Off of there? Not okay. yet, not yet. Close. Questions on the 52? Hearing none, 53? Okay, get balances. Yes. Um, Thank you. Yep. I just ask for balances for all of them, okay? Absolutely. Thanks. Robert, the next one, is that the uh, other Arcadis? It is, sir. That's for 1315. Uh, just for everyone's edification, Kevin Durant is starting tonight. I heard that. Okay. It's confirmed. <laughs> so, uh, the Municipal Services Complex 13-15 Linden Avenue, where my division resides, as well as DPW and various other divisions, there is one small piece a uh, section of the property that still remains quote unquote contaminated in the US EPA's eyes. I don't know why it took the US EPA to get back to us. It took about 12 months for them to get back to us with uh, comments. Those comments have generated the need to do more testing and further environmental mitigation. So that being said, this contract is a ne uh, necessary evil, if you will, to finally get that site uh, approved and quote unquote clean. Uh, once and for all. So, so is this simply testing or does this also include cleanup? It involves a whole host of things. No, no, no physical cleanup. It's the uh, more inv uh, remedial investigation, which involves a significant amount of testing and so, delineating. So then you eventually have to come back for the actual... P potentially, but they may allow us to cap it and leave it in place. Okay. 
which when I say clean, it's always quote unquote because there's so many sure. descriptions of what that is. EPA thinks one way, DP thinks another, and even within those entities, different people think differently. So and is this coming from the, the capital budget from the environmental? So, so good question. Uh, this was coming out of architecture, okay. but we felt it uh, more fitting to come out of the $2 million, I think it was $2 million starting balance, but I will provide you all of the balances sure. and what was expended against them. Uh, because it's much more fitting that way. So we've been working with architecture because every site that they touch basically involves some contamination of some sort and the need for testing. So uh, that's exactly why that line item is there for things that pop up on our sites, city-owned sites. Mm -hmm. So I ask for your approval on that one. Keep that moving. Next, sir, is Ron Ran Oren Corp for the fourth floor of this building. Excellent. So, I believe you all recall, hopefully you all recall, uh, we did an emergency contract to test the footings for this building to make sure that the building is not continually sinking and that the footings are still in relatively good shape. Uh, so far, so good. The tests have come back. They're very positive. So. To that end, the rest of the building needs to be addressed now because we weren't going to move mm -hmm. uh, without knowing that. We now know that we have uh, two or, uh, resolutions on tonight specific to renovation of the fourth floor. You may also recall me stating the fact that FEMA did not want to give us additional funding, potentially two to four million from what they've given us in the past uh, to flood proof the basement which is the major loss in this building during Superstorm Sandy. We then gave them the option to, we thought it was a, a stretch, but they seemed to agree with it and they loved the idea to transfer the funding to renovate the fourth floor to make a more viable office space to the tune of 18 to 20,000 square feet is what we think we'll get. Mm -hmm. um, to that end, we now have to move. The FEMA timeline is technically April of next year. We're hoping to score one extension. I think that if you can help me uh, get this contract approved, which will cover the concept plans and an inventory of all of the existing conditions so that our owner's rep, the next resolution I'm going to present to you, is able to help us scope and craft the proper scope to actually build out the fourth floor, um, then we can go ahead and do that. With the fourth floor comes some life safety issues throughout the building such as certain fire suppression requirements and various other things, new elevators, proper egress and ingress, uh, ADA, uh, things of that nature. So the full amount that it's going to cost is not specific to the fourth floor per se, but the fourth floor will trigger various other life safety issues. So this contract is a small one to an architect that will prepare the concept plans for your presentation and the existing conditions plans to formulate the scope of work to then get a designer to take care of the various design stages and put this out to bid. That's it. If there's any other questions on that one, I'm gonna go into the next one for the fourth floor, which is, this is the, the meat and potatoes, if you will. Sorry, FC3 architecture. That is correct. FC3 prepared a very detailed report for FEMA at the request of FEMA. Uh, that's the one that determined the total cost for the fourth floor and the life safety issues that it triggers, as well as a side estimate for all of the wish list items for this building. Mm -hmm. Currently, the wish list items, including windows, flooring, all new bathrooms, fire suppression throughout the whole uh, building, new roof, um, the elevators, staircase next to the elevator in the courtyard. Uh, I think we're looking at 45 million in today's dollars. Wish list. Joe, so why do we need the roof? When we had the fire, that roof was all replaced. Uh, was however, the roof is now reaching its, the end of its life expectancy. Yeah. They yeah. put a temporary roof on. It's, it's not a full, it's a standing seam roof. They have their own uh, limitations. I mean, it's a good roof, but it's not going to withstand the, uh, the complete renovation that we're planning up there. Can and if we're going to do it, we might as well do it all at once. Yeah. Get water in the chamber. Can I ask? Yeah, that's not good. So, we're going to spend how much? Two hundred forty-three thousand dollars extra for what? The fourth floor one. 
No, 40, so the number I threw at you was 45 million. See, see, stop it, that's what I'm trying to right. real issue. I called it a wish list though. Your wish list. So now we're gonna hire you, architecture company, renovate or get some architecture drawing, the fourth floor, something we don't have a fund to fix, finish it. FEMA. FEMA fund. FEMA gonna come up $45 million? No, so let me back up if I may. What you need to get the fourth floor done and whatever is triggered that we know of at this time, building code wise for life safety mm -hmm. for the rest of the building, mm -hmm. you're looking at a hardcore cost of 14 million and we like to put a contingency on there of at least 20%. So you're probably up near, uh, I think it was 17 million. Oh, great. So that's what we're gonna come and ask you know, for. We this never rejoke the 40 million dollars to fix the- You, you, uh, you know, it's, you, you called my name. This was an idea that I had. It was time to reinvest in the in City Hall, and I've been pushing this for like the last three years. And and why is Joe hiring an architect, not architecture? Because Brian Well is overwhelmed. So, uh -huh. so Brian Flat and I went to Joe and asked him to help us out. Uh -huh. So this is a big picture that's going to take probably ten years to complete. So when Joe says forty-five million, um, it'll be you know. A long-term view. So no. Getting to the fourth floor, though, look at it this way. You know, you're a businessman. You like to say it that way, right? Look at the fourth floor. It's been vacant for 20, 30 years. Yes. And it's usable space that we will never sell. Yes. And so it's an asset that we're not using. And, and I'm happy to take anyone up there for a tour. There's so much room up there. So, so, there. so it's $14 million. But what, why is it not budgeted? That was the question you, you, we started this conversation no, 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 no. with. This but, well, let me just finish the, yes. the, the, the vision. It's only a couple more sentences. Mm -hmm. So we started by doing an overview of the entire building. Mm -hmm. and, it, and when we brought in, Joe brought in a specialist uh, to do that, the first thing that plan revealed was that we didn't know whether the foundation was sound. So, so you approved an emergency yeah. contract to go out and make sure the foundation, good news is good news. the foundation is good. Right. So now this is the next step. Let's look at the fourth floor. The, the, the basement you've already approved mm -hmm. and that's going to be going to construction documents uh, so, now. So great. that's the picture. Okay, that's I'm, it. I'm, I'm, that's it. No. So I'm now, what I'm saying is that the first floor maybe we need a 40 million dollars or 45, which where we go when we could just some regional funding for, at the least, half of the total construction. At that time, we should be hired architecture company. If we will hire them now, then whatever we set up the plan, 10 or 15 years later, may be useless. I hear you. And there's something we hire architecture company, something we have no fund to build or fix anything. So please, as we say, just so today I want to say that when we make architecture company, mm -hmm. we put your items, plans, and oversight working, and uh, or, uh, whatever we management, all those things. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a money to do it. So while we, every year, great, every year, every year, mm -hmm. we have a capital budget, <coughs> fourth floor innovation, save two million dollars, at least when we have two million, at least we have a half of the total project. At that time, we hire architecture company because even the architect company we hire, ten years later, when they were <coughs> itemized total process come up, it can be different. Not Correct. that okay. architecture okay. company one of the jobs. Point was made. I, 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 I was going to clarify. I got it already. Yeah. You got it? Ten years. So, yeah. But I, I can have a separate conversation with you, but this is specific to the owner's... Follow up so, I can follow up. It's the owner's representative portion. Up, but Councilor Mojiano, yeah. yeah. When they do the little pattern restore, the way it was done in the 1990s, it's gorgeous. That's the intent. Good. So, so I, I'm going to, Councilman, I'm going to support Councilman Yun on his call mm -hmm. for this. If, if I recall, you made the same point, Councilman, on... Um, it might have been Rescue One, right? And we hired architects for, for Rescue One or um, some of the fire facilities that were being done. And he made the exact same point that we're hiring this and we haven't set the money aside and so forth for that work. And, and I recently had conversations with uh, leaders of the fire department asking me uh, about 
the funding for these projects, and then it came up tonight with uh, the Camino Bay Avenue. I thought I was under the impression that the Camino Bay Avenue site was also like uh, part of, I don't know, some of the replacement for the fire firehouse on uh, Rescue One firehouse and so forth. So um, I'm not sure. I got to go back to my notes and go back and talk to the chief and the deputy chief on that um, to to refresh my memory on all that stuff, but. Uh, um, but Councilman Yun made the point because we spent the money on the architect for that, and they worked with the uh, um, the fire department and all that stuff. So, um, so, so the this idea of spending this money and then not seeing the project come to fruition is so. Uh, if you'll allow me, just two sentences. Yeah, go ahead. This is very different in that mm -hmm. we have a guaranteed two and a half million dollars coming to us from FEMA already. Okay. And another potential two to four okay. for hazardous mitigation. Yes. In order to even be in that ballpark and not lose any of that, okay. we have to start and keep moving and have this ready by April. Yeah. But and, the, the and VA has promised me that 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 this is going to be in the next capital budget. Okay. So that's the other part. Or he wants to do it. Okay. Now this is the key. So we have to be understand. Total cost of space of forty million dollars. Any twenty million, whatever you say. If you cannot, if you do not have a funding, if fund is not in your account, you cannot pop the bid. No, yeah, I understand. We wouldn't build that. That's over ten no, years. No, ten years. Then we'll have the no, I got you. One so, of this company, architect company's job is that they have to prepare for article P. In other words, at the time, what is how much construction cost? Even the architect company come with estimated construction cost. Which is something we're going to build 10 years later, no, and 10 years later that. or 5 years later, something totally different cost of the construction. So please, long story make sure, last past six years, I'm getting tired. The way they put it on, listen, I'm suffering 100%. And the joke knows, I'm told everybody understand, is the one of the best city engineer we have in history of it. As I Thank you, thank you. So with all the respect, but Joe, please, even though you put a higher architecture company, whatever you put all the things on and the line up, one of their job is there, get the prepare RFP, something we maybe, maybe, maybe not use after 10 years later now today. Then 10 years later, the total process can be changing. Understood. So please, I support it, but instead we spend the 343 dollars is a lot of money. Right. At the least, too, every year we job funding, Two million dollars, so at least a half of the funding is ready in place. Then we should be a hired architecture company to do that because when we hire architecture company, every time we put your thumb two years, right. one year, so one year later they say, Well, country term is over, so you gotta pay. And the meantime, meantime, architecture company, when you finish the plan, when we realize that something changes, change or the cost fortune. So please, I support you 100% with all the respect. You got a great job, but we shouldn't be wasting money to something we cannot even have. In other words, we should be spending the money to buy a dream. At least have the funding in place. That's the time we should hire architecture, so on so But we can put your wish list as our capital improvement. 343,000, if we push, I'm going to ask every member of the council people, mm -hmm. something you spend the money, something you cannot use it. Ten years later, we got to hire the other architecture company. So please, with all the respect to, because Greg likes to build something, that's why I like him, but we should be minimized waste. You're, not, you're, not, you're not hiring someone to build the ten-year plan. This, this, that's not this contract is for the person <laughs> to represent us as if it was me or Brian because we don't have the staff or the resources to do it. They come in with a team, they put together the RFP that you speak of, they go out publicly, they bring in six, 12, whatever it's companies. It's too early because we're right. not even money to build. Right, right, I got it, I got it. We do that five, I got it. six years, ten years so, later. So to my second sentence, we just figured that what you normally have been approving in each bond council, uh, council capital bond cycle, is approximately this much. We figure this is going to be next year's project. It has to break ground next year. And this is just to get us through the door to formulate the RFP, get a designer, which is going to be a Joe, much higher cost than this. Joe, you know what happened? We, just to be clear. Last year, this is a problem of Georgia City. Last year, we issued $46 million a bond. $46 million a bond. Let me finish it. Trying to spend it. Yeah. How much of our interest was it? 3%. 
So we spend up to 1.3 million dollars, pay principal interest, something we're not able to use them dollars. Okay. You're right. He's right. Let's take down the He's right. We got to spend it now because if we spend down. it later, no, it's going to cost us more. No. Listen, please. Okay. The point's been made. You know, no, we'll have a separate. We'll have a separate meeting. Yeah. I'm very frustrated. Council, we'll have a we'll have a separate meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I raise a voice, but Joe, you're one of the best. Thank you, sir. I can give you credit. Thank uh, you. We got to step forward. We got to come up with plan. Councilman Robinson. Pay dollars. Just to touch on what you said, um, President, did we go for an engineer last year for that firehouse on Communicore? Uh, we can look into yes. it. I'm not positive. Yes. yes. Or a rescue one. There is an architect that, that we hired to design rescue one. And now we're transferring the land to JCRA? I'm That's what it appears. I didn't know about that till tonight. So I'm going to check on that. I don't know whether it's the property next to it or it. But yes, that's they, why. They, they told you that too, right? The right. chief that the, the community by the property, they thought it was Rescue One. Yeah. I can't remember exactly, yeah. but it was that. that was and uh, the one on Grand Street, right? Next to right. Um, yeah. City Electric. Right. And that's the one for the, on the replaced the Holiday Station. Right. They yes. That, the Holiday Station. Yeah, but that's that's a separate one. That's not on this, but that wasn't in this. No, but just to what they. they President yeah, we hired an architect to design this. Hiring, stuff. Yeah, we hired now if we're gonna like, if we're gonna we check for the the somewhere else. something like we were checking the ground, yeah. right? For if we go somewhere else, then we've just spent all this money on an architect that's uh, gonna design I will. Uh, design something that's not gonna be that's what Michael Young's point. Yeah. So, so 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 uh, the, the the idea that was suggested by um, public safety was to um, retrofit fit Bishop Street to take Halliday's uh, Firehouse and and Rescue One Mod 4. The reason being that it would be cheaper to retrofit Bishop Street than it would to be build two fire stations. Both of those fire stations are budgeted at six million dollars each. To retrofit Bishop Street looks like it'll be less than a million. So even though there was some money spent, as you pointed out, that's not, you know, prudent, let's say, because we're gonna we're possibly gonna stop, is it we we'd still save money. That was the, the suggestion just a couple of weeks ago from uh, Director Shea. So the, so I didn't know that tonight this was going to be on uh, the meeting, and so so there was no reason to discuss it. But the city is now doing an internal. Brian Weller is doing an internal now analysis of whether turning Bishop Street into uh, those two firehouses is plausible and how much that would actually cost. So we'll know in a couple of weeks whether that's the way to get. Well, the thing is, would you spend six million dollars, well, twelve million to build two houses, or one million to turn Bishop Street into into the two houses? Okay. And that's what the Can director Shea would like to see happen. Councilman Yun. Like that. Ten days ago, we had a special meeting to pass the bond. Six million dollars for six street embankment, forty-six million dollars to renew the a note. Okay, that was a closed session. So just closed session. Was mindful of what you're yeah, talking. Yeah, actually, you know what was it? Money we bond the borrow. Something we not even used at the penny for the project, and we just paid interest and uh, uh, a principal almost. To Eight hundred one point three, two point one million dollars. If we spend the same two point one million dollars for the pay prince interest, something we don't have to do it. We can put just so many so, 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 social community program to help the so many people with Joy City. I don't want you waste taxpayer dollar. Mm -hmm. At least to have of the fund when you're ready, a bond, then please take action. Because, please, if you make a mistake once, fine. But if you make more than once, then you are happy. Then I have to look at the joke, you know, what's the matter with you? I'm going to ask you. So please, your reputation is so high, keep it high. I strongly recommend it, Greg, uh, to withdraw this resolution. No, no, Councilman. Also, this is why we go to third parties to move the risk off the city. That's why we had Brandywine build the annex. 
is just what you said about how our how our funding is so our bond funding is so complicated and how we have to pay for it before we get anything. So I agree with you, but don't throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. No, no, no. You're absolutely right, but that's why we 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 why we're doing the the annex in, by a third party. Let them borrow the money. So so uh, I agree with you, but no, when they what. Great. This is going, the fourth floor is going to happen, otherwise we'll lose FEMA dollars. No, me. So you can't no, tell no. Joe to withdraw it. No, no, no. Listen to me, Greg. Mm -hmm. You just say that. You just say that. This is the problem we face all the time. We, over the years, we have, every year, we're going to pay $78 million bond interest principal every year. We have an outstanding bond, $780 million. Yes, they pay back, you know, like a school, what JCMJ they pay. But when we see the our statement, we, as a final statement, call $78 million debt we have, which is we impact our credit rating bank up, but also they impact our bond interest. While we continue to play like a dumb, we shouldn't be done like that. Because we, City of Jersey, maybe years ago, that's why they do that, but time to stop it, you know? So we actually, the PC, the capital project, mm -hmm. fourth floor renovation, project 2019, maybe $2 million. 2020, maybe $2 million. No, you, Three years later. Councilman, Councilman, you've said that idea several times tonight. Please, I spend nights thinking of ways to help the city Fun okay, things, okay. yeah. So you you don't want to borrow two million every year because if you borrow two million, you have to pay on that two million. No. So what you want to do is borrow at the last minute. You want to do it when you are absolutely certain that you're going Thank to go ahead you. because you, you, you because you're going to Thank you're you going so to much. pay right away. When you ready to, it's not like no, being a, it's when a, you when you ready to issue bond, then come to city council ask. I, I totally understand, but the timing doesn't work, and we're going to lose possibly four million of FEMA, if not more. So that's that's what makes this one very particularly difficult. So to, to that end, then on, on, on that on that rationale, if you can provide um, the council with information about uh, the FEMA funding, that it's uh, so that's not set in stone. But I have I have an amount that's set in stone. stone. Not the extra. The extra we have to prove that we're going to. Whatever, we're gonna, we have to prove that we eliminate. Just don't say stuff like it okay. doesn't. It's not set in stone. It sounds okay. like whatever it's not, it looks okay. like. Yeah, whatever. If it's set in stone, or if there's a commitment, if you it's have, just the number is okay. not. Okay, I apologize. Council President, I, I'm, I'm asking for some information. Let, 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 let me finish uh, right. for my, my, my request, which is Please. provide us with evidence of the commitment from FEMA. Thank you. Um, very whatever much. that looks like, however yeah. it looks like, provide an evidence and to the ex and the expiration date of that. That, that potential funding, because you're saying we may lose the funding, right? So right. I want evidence of that before Thank I can say that yeah. FEMA okay. have to be say that the letter, formal letter, have to somebody sign it, and that they have to be guaranteed that they want to give us some money. Other than that, but don't, don't uh, please, last thing, please don't forget the cost savings from renting downtown. 20,000 square feet for office space because you, you're going to be pocketing that as well. So there, there's an offset there. I apologize. No, once this is done, we move people from other offices where we pay rent to offset. We need to move on. There's still a number of things on this agenda. We've got people waiting patiently yes. okay. to hear the conversation. Uh, Robert Byrne has something to add. Yeah, uh, KD started. It's 2322 in the first quarter, 333 left. What? <laughs> Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you, Council President. Right. You, did you have more? That's it. Oh, oh yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. You spoke something. I was shook. I was shook. I'm sorry. So the most important one you've all been waiting for: patch management, three hundred thousand dollars, up to twelve thousand potholes on average. Uh, last year, we had some craters out there. We didn't quite reach the ten thousand mark. I think we reached nine thousand potholes. Which one is this? Patch management. Yeah, we're gonna. I'll find it. It's 35. Oh, 35? Yes, sir. This is the pothole killer. This is yeah. the pothole killer. Yeah, you got it. Patch management is the actual name of the company. Just an A at the end, the killer, right? Yes. It's approximately 600 tons spray injected uh, patcher. 
The uh, potholes last significantly longer than our traditional methods. It employs one driver, one machine. We store the material uh, except for the asphaltic material which is delivered to the truck daily or on the truck daily. Uh, per my analysis last year, we were costing approximately $45 per pothole with our in-house crews, which um, unfortunately, via the traditional method, it doesn't last as long. Uh, I think you all have noticed the, they're not the prettiest, but they're slightly discolored and very smooth patches all over the streets. Um, in the first month that we used them this year, they've proved to make a major difference. Last year they made a significant difference citywide and this 300,000 would get us even with what we've accumulated and per my estimation we might still have approximately a surplus of 50,000 to help us into snow season. So that's what we have the money available. It's in the bonding that you approved for roads and it's appropriate at this time. Uh, I think we're looking at the $45 in-house versus $25 by this machine. So for the why use a capital increment? That's a street maintenance. Should come up from the maintenance dollars, general revenue? So, should not come from the capital increment dollars? So that, Apple. great question. Yeah. I'm not the Boring BA. <laughs> Just want to make sure that it, We have to for buying the equipment, right? No, this is, no, the, renting. This is renting the equipment and the operator to place. Yeah. All we provide it's is... It's a very impressive price. I can say that. Yeah. $300,000, some thousand dollars. They provide the equipment, the material, and the drive operator. So price-wise, I got no problem. But key is that while we use the capital in for money, instead of our regular maintenance costs, we should cover that. Okay. The last five years. Yeah. Somebody determined that it was Compar comparatively, you're looking at uh, maybe six blocks of million paving, but this covers 100, 190 miles of center, center line miles of roads. And we have one complaint that people say that all the public has a painting like a white painting, but wait for months, nobody has a test yet. So, so a lot of the ones that are circled are actually valves. So we're working with the MUA, PSE&G, and Suez to make sure that those are, those are long lead though. Those require a lot more than just spray. Oh. If we fill those, if there's a water main, we won't be able to shut off the water or the gas if there's an issue emergency. So we can't just fill those. So there's a single operator of this machine? Single operator with a joystick and has an arm that comes out. Yeah. The three separate materials are on the back, spray injected through a heated hose. Right. Doesn't matter what time of year, what time of day. But do any of our staff, like our our staff required to be involved in this? We do, we do provide one DPW member from buildings and grounds that knows the streets and knows the worst areas that guides them along. It's been working very well so far. So um, I anticipate to have as good or probably a better year than last year. We have a GPS map that uh, we make available online that shows the location of each pothole. So, so why would be, so I, I, this is not actually, I brought this up with DPW folks, but uh, in terms of insourcing on this stuff as opposed to out, like why don't we invest in the equipment and then have our own staff like do this on a... We're, oh, we're, definitely look, we're definitely looking at that, Council President. I actually just had this conversation with Brian Platt last week. Uh, it's definitely worth looking into. Council and we have some preliminary ca sure. calculations. Sure. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Uh, this street is out now. Probably the worst street in the city. It's on Bright Street, Cross Street, Jersey Avenue, and Barrow. When are they going to replace that is, entire street? Is that where the sewers were cut off uh, recently? Yes. By three and four? Yes, by in front of, in front of old numbers. Okay, so don't quote me on this, but I believe by the end of this month, because those are MUA streets, the first ones they're knocking out are the MUA streets. There's about a dozen. They did three already. They just started last week. They're moving very quickly. That's Three very, long. That's in very bad shape. Okay. I'll tell you what. I will verify tomorrow morning, and I will get right back to both of you on that. Thanks. Um, or all of you, actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's on the Bryant Street. Councilman Sol Solomon, Sol Councilman Solomon, then then Luciano. So I think one thing I think Marlene need asked for during the DPW hearing was a, a list of all the potholes that have been filled, and whether they've been filled by the pothole killer by a regular crew. Or man, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought we asked for that. Um, is that. Is there a way we can get that list? Uh, and as well as the dates they were filled. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that's up to date online. I just have to duck, check with Doug on the in-house holes potholes right. that were filled. It would be great if we just had a sense of, of how you know how many. Probably this truck was getting versus our in-house 
and, and you know when they started, when they were working, when they weren't. So okay. Information. Absolutely. I think we could do that. Innovation's great. been tracking it. Okay, great. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> All right, folks, we have a, an item that's not on the agenda. Uh, Mike McLean, the Director of Immigrant Affairs, and Courtney Madison, Madsen, Madsen, with, Madsen with yeah. Church World Services, is here. Um, they have a presentation um, regarding um, the needs assessment of uh, refugees and asylees. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Thank you, okay. uh, Council President. Um, please identify please. yourself, please. Mike McLean, Director of Immigrant Affairs at HHS. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce Ms. Courtney Madsen uh, from the Church World Service Resettlement Office. Uh, if you recall, this uh, study was authorized last year. Uh, we uh, are very happy to share it with you. Uh, it, it contributes to a narrative of other research that shows that uh, while refugees and asylees are a very vulnerable immigrant group, um, they have uh, promise for long-term success if we are attentive to their short-term resettlement needs. Um, in interest of time, uh, we'll, I, I would like to suggest that we forego uh, Ms. Madsen's uh, slide presentation. We'll just summarize the report and distribute it to the... To the sure. I'm happy to make a copy of it. Councilman Young is done. We're going to have to wait till he comes back. What? <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Um, I go? I'm just going to summarize our um, the overall findings that we had. Um, we assessed 50 clients, and we found that overall um, the successes that they reported um, was an overall sense of belonging and safety here in Jersey City. Um, they know where to find resources. Um, this population is eligible for public benefits. There are carved out to a lot of other. Um, I would compare to other immigrant groups, so there's a lot of resources available to them and they know how to get them. And they're able to meet their basic needs in terms of food, clothing, and transportation. Um, they are able to make it by financially in market rate housing. Um, but one of our other challenges that we identified is we are, um, we noticed that families are not realizing the benefits of dual income households. There was not a lot of women working outside of the home in, in wage, um, earning wages. Um, interpretation access was not consistent, particularly um, in uh, beyond primary healthcare settings and in other service settings. Um, we also had consistent requests for increase, um, increased training resources. Um, many of our respondents who were working said that they felt that increased training um, not going into too much specifics right now, but increased training would be a way that they felt they could increase their wages. Um, that's that. I wanted to do that as quickly as possible. So. Okay. <laughs> Council members, um, any, any immediate questions that come to mind? So, at some previous meeting, I I, I don't recall exactly the, the details, but I had asked for um, this particular report, and um, so they were very patient in coming here to do a, a presentation. I wasn't. Uh, um, I don't recall exactly if I'd asked for a presentation, but it's fine. So um, maybe you can share that information with folks later at another date yes. um, as well to. Um, to the rest of the council. Um, how big is our refugee population and how is it changing with sort of changes in federal policy? Yes. Um, so Trip World Service has been resettling refugees since 2015, so I can only speak to the refugees that have come through my office. We have worked with more than 250 refugees in that time. Um, we've also, in the past um, year and a half, been working with more people who have been granted asylum. Um, I won't go into the differences there, but I can say about 200 folks have, have come through my office so with that status. Yes. And then in the last, 200 in the last year, is this what in the last 12 months. Last 12 months, okay. Yeah. Um, and is there a difference in need between those groups and then, you know, the language needs and other things? Um, it's yes and no. Um, the needs that we're seeing in uh, the asylee population, um, the majority of our asylees have actually lived in the area for a little while and have resources, so they usually find their own housing. We have a few who are not in that category and they have the same needs as refugees when they first arrive. Um, asylees tend to have um, better English skills than refugees because they've had to self-advocate in order to get to the United States and get through that process. 
Um, however, a lot of their other needs, including trauma, um, needs for health care, um, uncertainty about um, how to navigate the U.S. systems in general, um, that's all the same with our refugee clients. And are there any policy recommendations sort of specific to municipal services that the sort of report concludes with? We did not um, make policy recommendations in this report, <clears throat> but if you... <laughs> Different conversation. Sure. We can ask for <laughs> Yes. Council members, any other comments or questions? I think they probably want to digest it. Um, maybe there'll be future questions or concerns. Um, I, I just have a comment. It's actually not directed yet. I think part of when I raised this uh, issue at one time was um, that um, the money that was appropriated um, for this uh, survey came out of our city budget and out of the Division of Immigrant Affairs uh, budget line mm -hmm. at the time. Um, if, if you'll recall that, that uh, dollar amount um, during that whole budget process, um, we increased, I believe, our the budget for Immigrant Affairs by 20000 through the budget process. I believe that was the exact dollar amount. And it was intended at the time when we talked about it um, for census-related for census -related work mm -hmm. at the time to do getting a consultant or something someone else to help with right. doing census work. Um, unfortunately, we, a lack of vigilance on our part, um, my own part, I take responsibility for that. Um, in fact, we, we expended it. I'm glad that we've got this information and it's a, it's a useful um, survey, but um, I just wanted to make sure that that, that was um, on the record on that in that sense um, with regard to this and um, making sure that we're, um, I, for my part, I'll be far more vigilant about uh, making sure we approve the funding that ultimately funded the survey that came from that line and that money that was initially intended for, for census work and now we have some, some catch up to do with regard to that um, in this budget um, with regard to kind of census, census funding around that, so. Okay. Thank you, Council Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next victim. Um, I think uh, we have um, Alison Solowski and, um, and um, the council committee, the ad hoc committee that uh, okay. um, so we'll on the short term rentals. So why don't we bring in the Airbnb? We have um, multiple ordinances, correct? Yes. Um, two. Two. And that includes uh, ordinance 3.15 and 3.16. So, um, council, uh, pick your poison here. How do you want to start this off? Um, as the chairperson, would you like to um, begin this as process, chair, chair members? Do you, you want chair to the that is the Sure, we can start. Uh, I, mean, I mean, so, it would you, for the, I guess the four members of the council weren't on the committee, mm -hmm. you know, would you sort of see before you are, are two ordinances addressing the, uh, question of short-term rentals in Jersey City. And the way we got to the two rentals was the committee started with a public hearing. And we took about three plus hours of testimony. Uh, and then we subsequently, each of us, based on that testimony, reached out to the law department and said these are sort of provisions we would want to see changed. And an initial draft was created with those provisions, that's 315. And we can kind of talk through what the major changes are from the original draft produced by the mayor's office. And then uh, Councilman Yoon requested a series of additional changes. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that those changes are you know, reasonably different than, than the ones in 315. They have a different, would have a different impact. And so we felt it made sense to draft that as a separate ordinance that he's introducing. Uh, I think Councilman Panzeri and I are, are the introducees of the uh, 315. So those are the two ordinances before you. So that's sort of in the process that we got to, to get here. Um, I don't know if we want to go through, or if we want to go through the changes in 315 or 316. I don't know what your questions are. I'm happy to kind of proceed in whatever manner the council kind of deems is, is best. Go the changes. Okay. So um, correct me if you guys miss anything. Do you want me to do it or do you want to? Okay. So um, in 315, Councilman, you should speak to his ordinance. Um, the changes are, are similar to the ones that um, I had discussed initially, but they're basically largely, well, not entirely, largely related to the issues related to owner occupied rentals, where the owner is still allowed to engage in short-term rentals moving forward. So uh, a couple of the changes that uh, I know is 
someone who's renting a, their own unit, the unit that they live in, uh, had been limited to two rooms. That has now been increased to three. Uh, someone who uh, had lived in an owner occupied building with multiple units, there had been a cap, and it had said you couldn't uh, do short term rentals if they had more than three. That's been changed to now more than four. Uh, and then previously it said they can only do one unit. Now it's been changed to two units. So they can do up to two. If they own a four family, they can do two. If they have a three family, they could also do two. Uh, and a two family one, obviously, because that's the only other unit in the, in the property. Uh, the fees have been reduced, I believe, 250 for the initial fee and 200. That's down from 500 and 300. Um, the insurance requirement uh, has been dropped from a million to 500,000. And the inspection requirement has been dropped from annually to once every three years, I believe. And those are all under the premise of if you live in your house, we want to create a process that's reasonably, that, that protects this community, but also doesn't overburden you. Um, the last thing that is worth talking about is, uh, I believe Council President has mentioned this idea of a, of a sort of phase out. So the ordinance as of written today uh, says it goes into effect January 1st. Uh, but there have been questions around, hey, you know, what if you have an existing lease that you've signed with a unit, or what if you have bookings? And so what the ordinance does is it says, hey, if you have any bookings between the date the ordinance is passed to January 1st, 2021, it would allow you to honor those bookings. And then it says if you have a lease, and you can provide documentation of that lease to do a short-term rental, and the lease obviously says you're allowed to do a short-term rental, not just a, uh, you know, just your own personal lease. That would allow you to continue doing short-term rentals until 20, January 1st, 2021. That's my sense of the major changes. I, I apologize if I missed one or any of them um, from this end. And then obviously Councilman Newton should speak to some of the differences in his ordinance. Did I miss anything? This first 315? The 20 oh, yeah. to 60. So it was a, sorry, there's also 20 to 60 days where um, if you're not on site, you're able to rent out. It had been 28 day limit, and now it's up to 60 day limit. The idea being, if, the, you know, for example, a teacher leaves for the summer, it gives them a little bit more time and flexibility to rent out their unit when they're not there. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So, well, you're you're you want to cover else? Anything else? No, that's it. I think James. Yeah. So, Councilman, you, you wanted to. Yes. Okay. So, actually, you preceded the uh, composer of Bowles one. Almost exactly the same. Only difference, you know, uh, uh, the, what are they called? The James Solomon and the uh, leaders, or city, whatever we call, the ordinance proposal is a minus difference that we give to them the time to, to uh, uh, grandfather in. Because the people who get into Airbnb, it's it's a part of their business, basically. And also, it's not only that people do that, they own, but lease the place, or they purchase that. Because in 2015, when the city of Jersey created a short-term rental, because we actually, it's our mistake, mm -hmm. we open to everybody, actually, without regulation. Right. So there was a problem. So now, if we see the comparison that exactly almost the same, we have to be regulating Airbnb. Only difference I might propose is give the time to, to get out, you know, without financial burden. That's what it is. So if we see one of the violations, if they call at the substantial complaint or uh, public danger, instead of we say, you know, wait for so and so, we just saw uh, one time enough to, you know, close down some more half than before. And also, now, legacy short term rental property, provide rent is not by uh, HUD set by schedule, so we make sure that if people have like affordable housing units, or restrict if we not allow that Airbnb, because uh, those kind of units actually subsidize general public. Right. So we not allow them. And uh, also, we make it clear, residential zone means that R1, R, RA, and RF are two zones. So what that means that residential zone means, what is the residential zone? So we are make clear that part of it. And, uh, 
violation, we may call it uh, the first, uh, you know, proposed one. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to explain the exactly same things what James Solomon said. We agree with that, those things. You know, so I'm not going to do that. And uh, we say if somebody has an existing lease, existing lease, they can continue to do that till you know lease is expired. Or if you build the lease, they can continue to do that because of their grandfathering. And uh, uh, so not much different. Only difference is that's what it is. When they here you go. Let me see. There's so many coming. Okay. Do we have a count of how many people are registered for Airbnb at this time? No. We don't have There's no registration. Because it's not required okay. this time. So that's no, why we, currently you know, don't we want to make sure registration, that, so we okay. don't have those numbers. So then how can we grandfather them in? I'm just curious. How can we do it? No, no, no. Okay. Sorry. How can we do it? So now I'm going to explain to that okay. part of it, okay? Yeah. But you've got to find a way to track it. Yes, yes, yes. So really, everything is the same, and not much different. Okay, here you go. Grandfather, here you go. Here you go. <coughs> oh, another one is this one. That the uh, foregoing shall not apply to any legacy short-term rental property, and each legacy short-term rental property shall be deemed. In other words, if you, if you, in the Airbnb business, okay, then you continue to do, because the current one, you cannot do Airbnb till you get your license. License. So in other words, if people do Airbnb business right now, they cannot do Airbnb business till you get their license. So we change that, my thing is personal. If you do Airbnb business, you continue to do that, but you must get the license in 60 days. So that is actually we added. <clears throat> and also legacy you say that that the LBB host have to prove that prove that lease agreement whatever they have to prove that they are on LBB business and the LBB company can provide current time when you have set up the date they can say who is though actually on business right now so not much different really very clear I'm saying to everybody about time to time to regulate the Airbnb business because we don't want to be a wild, wild west. Only difference, the current Airbnb host, we got to give the time to to slowly fill up. So in other words, we achieve the goal, noisy issue, all those complaints should not achieve that. As of January 1st, 2020, then they're going to cause a lot of financial burden to people doing business right now. So we get some more time to do that. So in other words, even though they do the legacy, if they all should change, the property owners should change, or certain things happen, they no longer get in there. So in other words, slowly face out that problem. That's only different, really. Very simple. And we just clarify that they, what I mean, legacy, legacy dates on those things. No. Um, I know there's one clarification for me, because I the way I read this is. Which one? Uh, so, 2255-2 B8. 255-8. And that says any dwelling unit located outside a residential zone. What is it? So, so 255-2-B8. And that says any dwelling unit located outside a residential zone provided that rent is not set by HUD as the agency or governed by Chapter oh, yeah, 260. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the way I read that goes is it, is it basically, it doesn't just grandfather in, it creates the ability for short-term rentals to set up anywhere outside of a residential zone, which would include redevelopment plans and other things. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong if I'm misreading that, because residential zone is defined as which R1, one? R1A, R1F, and R2. It's on page five, Council. Page five, five yeah. yeah. Page five. Well, because B. I use a different one. Oh, that's all, yeah. So page five, it's it's a B, so 255-2B8. And so that, that creates a sort of, basically a, a saying short-term rentals are, are permitted and, and allowed in that those areas and obviously it, assuming my interpretation is correct you know my concern which is driving all of this is that there's a real economic incentive to take those units and turn them into short-term rentals so in essence 
saying to folks kind of, hey, you, you know, you can't set up in the R1 and R2 anymore, but, you know, all, all of the, you know, leases in the new apartment buildings or the apartment buildings that are 10, 15 year old, you know, they can then be taken off the market and turned into short-term rentals. So for me, that's a, a non-starter, but obviously I just don't have the whole council feels. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can uh, just you see, we can move that for me. It's no big deal. There's no big deal. Yeah. This is no big deal that we can remove that, it's no big deal, you know? I'm not much in there. Pay with that, you know? Yeah. I just want to, I, now you're talking about grandfathering in, so yeah. I'm trying to figure out how can you grandfather in and there's no way to tell how many people are registered now. So what, so you have to go to the Airbnb and select a year in which yes. people could be grandfathered in. Yes, correct, so they right? can provide they can provide the list of the current Airbnb business from in Jersey City. From, what, from the point we point set, we, we from the point we set the first order. Yes, not here though. The day we set up. Because uh, you can't. Yes, we, I always 100%, you know. So, so here, give me some time because one, it's a so slow, small letters. Alex, can you find out we is there? The legacy is to start. Cut off. We started 2015. Yes. What is it? Oh yes, so direct. Yes, so let us cut off there, show me the date of adopt of this chapter. So we make it clear for that, you know what I'm saying? And the legacy short term that the property shall mean any residential dwelling is or portion there of operate as short term rental property prior to legacy property. So make sure that okay, so we not we not want more people in the future to get it. You know, but we just want to protect the current people who business. Mm -hmm. Because why? If they not involve their financial impact, mm -hmm. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. But those people, a lot of people get in the business based on our 2015 city ordinance, which is we actually should make more uh, 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 put it at the time rules and regulation, but we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So we opened up market to the everybody. Actually, city of New Jersey get you believe or not over the several months we just talked about negative impact of Airbnb, but also they give a great parts to impact every part of New Jersey City because how we know. When we have a committee meetings, people testimony about how much their positive impact they give to Jersey City. We, as a Jersey City, we're the one of the great locations because of that, we claim that we are next to New York City. But over the years, we didn't get not much benefit out of next to New York City. But Airbnb was the one of the items actually we get real economic benefit got from the next to New York City. And I know that as a business person, people use that their Airbnb guests, they shopping, they eating all those business in the local, actually mainstream. But attitude and a lot of create job, create a lot of job. So I don't mind which you look at it, just I'm saying I'm happy with them, what is the, and the current we have, just we gotta give the time to honoring them. The people trust this city council, people trust this government. See, that's why they invest fortune of dollar in this city. They we should be respect and we should get time to time to to recouping their financial investment. That's what I'm looking for. So that's up to council people, but please. You can curse into somebody, you can, somebody hit a little bit, they can forgive you tomorrow morning when you feel great. But when you hurt somebody, invest a property with 20, 30 years financial mortgage payment to so and so because of rent, their reason they purchased the building, and the suddenly, if you no longer do business, their financial negative impact, the Airbnb hosts. Really, we hurt our own people in Georgia City. 
So please, okay. other issue we can we can control by police enforcement, sanitation enforcement, all those things. And also, this new ordinance, the three strike out. You know, if we have a two violation, they can revoke the license. Very, very tough. I think uh, in, the, in two, three years later, I'm wondering how many people are able to do Airbnb business in the jersey based on this one, especially inspection every three years. I'm pretty sure three years later, most Airbnb hosts will be closed on their door. So we have the same goals we have, both audience. But only the difference, we can achieve our goal as January 1st, 2010. And when we do that, we're going to be negative impact, financial impact to so many people. But if we look at it, targeting our achievement to last two years, we're going to do that. Then we're going to achieve the goal, and we're not going to do any personal finance negative impact to people who trust the city of New Jersey. Okay, Let's Mr. Wayne. Let's open to questions. Yes, yes. please. Council, go ahead. Let me just quickly respond to Michael's comments and then we can open it up. So the, the, the other, the, the, I'll call it the committee draft, the Michael's mm -hmm. draft, just to keep it simple. So with the committee draft, we were trying to address the concerns of mm -hmm. investors through that phase out provision. Mm -hmm. And, and I think you know we can look at it and see if we want to mm -hmm. adjust it. Uh, it applies okay. to people with who have leases as opposed to people who, who own. So we can look at that. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason, at least I can speak for myself, you know, uh -huh. to the committee, the reason that the, the full, you know, just a grandfather, I wasn't in support of, and I'm not in support mm -hmm. of, was first, you know, for a lot of the constituents that reached out to me very originally about this mm -hmm. issue, you know, they sort of said, "Hey, look, I bought in this neighborhood ten years ago, thinking I was buying into a neighborhood." Mm -hmm. And now my neighbors are running a hotel that's unstaffed, and mm -hmm. I didn't ask for that. Mm -hmm. And so they're sort of saying, hey, grandfather me back in, right, into the neighborhood I thought I was moving into. Um, so there's that component. There's the folks, for example, at 77 Hudson who say, hey, you know, our whole kind of amenity space, our whole area has been changed because 70 Green has now become such a large number of short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then there's the impact on the housing. And again, for me, it's 5 to 10% of units downtown that have been turned into short-term rentals, and that's a big number and has a big impact on the neighborhood. So, you know, a uh, phase-out gives people some time to make adjustments. If they own the property, obviously they can still rent uh, the property once the phase-out is over. If they're a lease, it gives them at least some ability to, to exit out of the lease, and if they own, it basically allows them to keep doing what it is they've been doing. Um, so I, I think it's a pretty fair accommodation. I understand, obviously, that it wasn't really legalized, but I would just say, for example, today, we're talking about changing the rules on food truck parking. Mm -hmm. And none of us are saying we need to grandfather in the food trucks. Not right. yet. Right, not yet. <laughs> so you know, this is, this is something that the, the city does when we think it's in, in the best interest of the city as a whole. So that's just my take, and so speaking for myself. So on the phase out yeah. um, versus, I guess, the grandfather, then the phase out ends when? So as drafted, um, the ordinance goes into effect January 1st, 2020, the committee draft. The, anyone who has an existing booking would be able to keep that, no restrictions until the end of 2020, so January 1st, 2021. And then people who have an existing lease where they say this is an explicit short-term rental lease would also be able to continue that until January 1st, 2021. That's as currently drafted. And you said the owners can continue to do what they the owner occupied. Yeah, owner occupied. So if you're living in your home, no, no, you can keep going. Yeah. He just said owner. He didn't. So I just want to clarify. So I know they all listen. It's the same. Owner occupied. They can continue to do the Airbnb. But this is what's the difference that Airbnb call business. So when they people lease the apartment or condo as a purpose of Airbnb business. They usually not do this one years because if we rent to the apartment in Georgia City, when you say long term lease means apartment residential one years, most apartment lease in Georgia City month to month. But people who do Airbnb business, the purpose here is when you lease the apartment because of business, they have a lease for three years or five years. They, that's what they do because why? They have an investment. They have to be putting their furniture. They have to buy plenty of uh, 
uh, uh, other materials and so on so. So those kind of people, when you reach that, their co contract is very simple. You know, maybe first year you pay so much, but second year so much, but third year. So they usually get not one year's contract. So they have three, five years contract. They have those kind of people are going to be having a problem because they revoke the contract. They have some kind of penalty, financial issue going to be raised. Also, so one of the person in Georgia City in the, you know, the some area, she bought it two house, mm -hmm. two house. And uh, one house she leave. And the other house, both houses, she's going to do that. So now, one house she live with, yes, she can do Airbnb, but the other house she's not live there, you know, even though same block, she's not able to do Airbnb, correct? No, she can. She, she can. for up to 60 days and one year period. See, that's what I'm saying, 60 days. <laughs> that is the problem because when she purchased that, not purchase the building, not for only 60 days a year Airbnb. Because 60 days means 12 years a month, 12 months a year, two months Airbnb, 10 months. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna, how are we gonna rent? Usually, when you give a lease of rent, usually one year or there were months to months. So those kind of people actually financial planning to one building, she leave, whatever she do that, that I mean the lease and I mean the Airbnb, the other building she put it next to it for Airbnb. So those kind of people spend hundreds of thousand dollars. But, but then essentially the person is running a business in an area that's zoned for residential, not for commercial. So it also becomes a zoning issue. See, but now, 2015, we all know them to do it. No, I know, but that's the So don't blame them to right. do it. That's I'm, not, I'm not blaming yeah, them. I know, I know. Yes, 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 I know that. So actually, no, that's their yeah, that that yeah. We, we actually cause a problem. But that's the point of correcting the legislation, is so it's very clear what the rules are. Yeah, so that's why, that's what I'm saying. Those people who invest the money, not hundred thousand, hundreds of thousand dollars, give them time to get out. If they want to sell the things one, they're not no longer able to do ownership change and transfer, they're not able mm -hmm. to do that. When they, they sell the house, the building, the house, whatever things one, then they're no longer able to do Airbnb. It's over. So we, simple, we want to, same goals, we want to eliminate Airbnb in Georgia City, but one thing is different, we limited any financial negative impact people who are doing business now. So let me get this straight, Councilman. Yeah. You're saying grandfathered in forever? Or is it no, no, cut no. off date at 2021 as well? No, no, no. See, see, that's what I'm saying. When you purchase the the house or dwelling, it's a real estate, you know that real estate. They purchased the building not short-term financial plan because mortgage is uh, 15, 20 years. Because of that reason, they never expect the city flip that their policy, you know? So they purchased that based on their plan. So if we say no, then there are different financial situations involved there, you know? So very, very, the long story make sure, simple. We're gonna regulate it's the same words what the other people say, but only thing is this one, let them able to give us a time to get out. Meantime, any other issue, we actually current the city building department, fire department, the, the sanitation department, police department, able to control those kind of things. So I asked them, one of the table, they said, oh, Michael, I don't want to Airbnb. So I asked them, why you don't like it? You know what was the answer? I don't like the people carrying the briefcase in the my block. I saw my next question, briefcase bother you? They said, no. Then why are you so mad? I don't really. Well, so what's the time frame? So my, my read on it, Greg, I'm on my right now, is it's, 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 it's My read on it is it's, it's, there, it's allowed to continue up until the point someone would sell, right? Correct? Well, if you own the property, you would be able to continue and yes, be sold. Do and if you lease, so you would be able to continue to lease and re-up the lease. But yes. if but if you if you you know so another person went to the unit, so it's basically allowing the existing operator to operate for as long as they would like, but not allowing an, a, a ne another operator to take over. Is my understanding. Yes. So now this is what it is. Those kind of person, 
I don't like the people in the briefcase. They're not going to help you with our new ordinance because we allow that homeowner operate LLP will be okay. So we're not going to make it satisfied to them. And actually, Councilman James Allen mentioned to them, my, his neighbor, whatever they say, oh, I thought I moved in, moving here as a street residential, and I see that the people carry the luggage. I don't like that. It's a hotel, no. Hotel make a definition very clear step in New Jersey. Have to be more 10 units. Mm -hmm. 10 units. So they're under 10 units, so it's not a hotel. So it's a motel? Not a motel, but by the law, it's a law there. And by state statute, what? state statute, whatever they do by existing ordinance, they do. The state law allow that yes, grandfather in. That's true. State yes, because of, other than that, whole, we're I mean, going to be right. whole society going to hold a mess. So, so I mean, no. Han Hannah spoke to that at the at the committee hearing, but I don't know what? if you guys wanted to speak to that. That you know, her, a state. her her argument was that because it's in our public safety power, then we're allowed to you know the, the city's allowed to do this. It isn't related to the state law around zoning, but. I don't know. We, she she did at the, the committee hearing. She discussed that. Yeah, what's your point? Was that? Because Councilman Waterman was raising this issue of the state law kind of allow this to be sort of grandfathered. Right. Yeah, the state law. The state law. And the and the spoke to that issue. But. So, yeah. I'm not sure, sure what she. What? I'm not sure. I, I think this was the the which pre existing non conforming use and zoning. Okay. Right. Right. And she talked about the public safety power of a city and. No. We, we can, we, we, it's okay. I just wanted. To, we can, we can also have a memo for Councilman Waterman. Just yeah. So what? if I say that, Peter, sure. correct me. Yes. Correct me. What they say by state statute, they say if you if you change your job, then there must be grandfather existing the job. So in other words, if people do Airbnb, it's not change the joint. You know what I'm saying? Because we do by city ordinance to allow to them. To so when them, yeah, go ahead. Because you know, the more he talk, the confused I get. And it's not being funny, Michael, but I'm trying to really understand this. Because I know a lot of people are here hear this. So I'm really trying to get an understanding of this. Because now, is it a state statute that says that they could be grandfather rent as long as, because before we, we did an ordinance and said that they could do Airbnb. All right, now we want to change it, all right? For those that already are doing Airbnb, once we change it, they will be grandfathered in. Is there a state law that says that? Yes. Well, I'm asking the lawyer. You put out a lot of things there. And okay. It, it would be Hannah who researched this is that. Okay. But if Hannah has reviewed, she represents the law department, if she's reviewed the ordinance that's being proposed, mm -hmm. let's call it the non-councilman union one, the administration mm -hmm. one, uh -huh. and it doesn't require a grandfathering in, mm -hmm. I would sit here and say, like I said, she can explain that and send okay. me a memo, that it's not a requirement. We're not going to set forth something that would be challenged and would be right. made illegal, uh, or the ordinance would be null and void because it requires. I don't believe, and I'm sure that she had that discussion, that it's going to Required grandfathering because if the state law said that mm -hmm. we had to grandfather it in because of some, some zoning law, then that would have been no. provided for. That's, it's not Yule, a state statute. Yes, yeah, so. Councilman Yoon's uh, proposal is to grandfather them in, but I don't think that you're saying, Councilman Yoon, that the other ordinance, the administrative or the, uh, the rest of the council, whoever proposed it, ordinance is invalid because it doesn't grandfather in yours. Right. Is, is that your position? Yes. That legally it's invalid because it doesn't grandfather? Yes, the city actually, this one, legally actually is not validated because when they change your zoning, mm -hmm. zoning, you talking zoning? It's a zoning, yeah, because okay. now, because they the, so actually now they're able to do the Airbnb. There's no zoning being changed. This is a permitting. Right. Ordinance. The permitting ordinance does not require any grandfathering. Well, I don't disagree with you yeah. that it was zoning, mm -hmm. but it's not. We're not changing the zoning. So I think it's a little bit. You're, you're getting confused uh, in order to say that well, the um, grandfathering is required. Yes, but I, I trust explain to the media claim that when we grandfather him, she said joining issue. When they she claimed the joining issue, then we must be must be be accept. 
that your uh, 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 grandfather made. There's that's no the zoning issue. That's the point. But, but, no zoning no, issue. Well, listen. It's a permitting issue. What, what I was, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilman, who would part of the, the issue we're talking about is th there's a master plan that calls for residential uses in residential zones, and, and this contradicts that. Now, mm -hmm. it was passed, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a direct contradiction of the sort of you know clear intent of the master plan that we in theory been operating. Sorry. No, it's fine. Any additional no, comments on these no, questions? No, see, my concern is um, you know. because we passed the ordinance in 2015, and uh, we opened up a can of worms, to be perfectly honest, that allow people to come in and begin to do Airbnb. Now, I'm concerned about for your average folks that just bought a second house to do this. So now what will happen is, and they live in the neighborhood, so what will happen is they won't be able to rent out or do Airbnb in that second house. Am I correct? So now if they can't sell it, then they can lose it, correct? And if they lose it, then they can go you know, credit rating go down, then the credit rating well, go down. Well, can they rent it? Yeah, well, they but if they can, the house but if they can, person. that's part of the challenges that I hear too. Well, the high rent is it. I mean, you, you know, can speculate about the different types of housing. Yeah. Okay, if they can Airbnb, it has value. Mm -hmm. You can but rent it. But people Airbnb it out. something for a couple of weeks, you understand, versus because they're here visiting or something like that. But when it comes to permanent residency and the rents down here is like maybe 3500 or 4,000, I'm just saying down here. Sometimes it's hard for people to meet, meet that, and I get those complaints. The rents are high up here. So I'm just saying if, if somebody has some type of, you know, financial invention and this is what they thought that they can make a good living out of, I'm concerned about them. I really am. Because then I, you, you asking me to tell them now they can't rent the second house that we had told them in 2015 it was okay to do. So now, if we don't come up with a good solution, then they have a possibility to lose that house because the rents are high. We can't ignore that. That's probably what forced some people to even do Airbnb. If we do, if we look at, if we look at it and, and find out statistic wise. Well, that's a you know, policy decision. That's what and I'm saying. Don't, I don't know what the numbers are. I don't, I don't so know. I'm going to for two people, right. two hundred people. That's what I'm saying. Okay. But I'm still concerned okay. about. I'm still concerned about that one. Yes. See, I'm the one that's concerned about that one because I, I have I, I know what struggle voice. is in life. So I'm going to add to what the choice you want me to say. Yes. When they get the loan from the bank, your primary resident area, the house, interest. You come home, correct. Because we have so many realty here. Interest rate four percent, five percent. But if we purchase uh, another house, residentially, mm -hmm. with Airbnb or other purpose, that it pay mortgage interest much higher. So those kind of people, when you do that, based on our 2015, they believe they're able to do Airbnb. That's the way calculated incomes, project income, expenses, so and so. That's what they purchased it. Not per they actually invest money to Georgia City. And which is we prove that, maybe you're not. You wasn't that the council person. But suddenly we say, you cannot do law longer. I think that that the only serious cause problem. In all respect, yeah. you, you did that to the people in the neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, see why? So, that so that's what's about. That's why I'm being careful now. We be turning it back. Yeah, we I'm do that. Two thousand fifteen. Let yeah. them do it. <laughs> we cause a problem. Right. We. We did. Yes. So. And who are you gonna blame? We gotta blame ourselves. Yeah, we did it. We misled it at the time. Actually, you believe one of councilwoman? What was it? Candy Sauce one. Yeah. She actually was number one to support it. And the council member Chibo Jano supported that because she, I still remember that what the council member Richie Bojano said, let them what's wrong is that people will just make extra supplemental income oh because water bill high, sewer bill high, property tax high. Right. So we say yes. Right. So we nine to zero, we all pass that. Now people yes. invest all those efforts to build up the Georgia City as a, one of the great places to business. Now, four years later, we say, you out. No. Real estate investment, you gotta 
give you enough time to get out with your financial damage. Councilman Robinson. So, so I hear exactly what you're saying, but I think all of us get the same amount of complaints each and every day with our emails um, that we turn the neighborhoods into, you know, partying machines. I got an email the other day. Still, the same thing that this one person rents the house with a balcony and they leave the door open and have the music on loud all night long at four in the morning. Yes. So, I, I mean, so, I mean, and I think to what you just said, Councilman, is that we did the same thing to the residents who purchased the house to say, this is where I want to live, I want to raise my family, and now the neighborhoods are becoming um, the people Hotels. own the people that bought really in here too. You that's see, right. that's the problem. These people bought a second home. To do it. Second, right. third, fourth, fifth, but sixth, seventh, eighth. Some of them live, they live here. Majority some of them probably here. bought now 10 the homes. Building, I think there's got to be a way we can Can I say one at a time? Councilman Waterman and Councilman Young. Councilman James Robinson Robinson Clay actually wrote. You know why he's going on the culture? If somebody opened the balcony and had to make a noise, then the neighbor right. should take the same action right. to call police, come up so and so. They do. They, they, don't, they don't respond. They don't respond. Right. Listen, it's if there's no response, <laughs> no, 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 no. Then, it's a lot of guns. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, one, one voice, Councilor okay. Pignard. Yes, uh, let me finish. Then you want to go again? Council yes. If, if there's no response, it's not problem of Airbnb guests or host problem, then we, Georgia City Police Department's problem. So in other words, we as taxpayers, we pay tax for municipal service, which include enforcement of police, sanitation, building, whatever you call. Instead we blame the Airbnb host, we should blame the mayor. Because one of the mayors, number one, first job thing, this is very clear. He is an enforced call, something we city council created him. Why he don't do his job? I mean, really, you know, I sometimes scratch my head. Why we blame somebody else is blame themselves. Let me ask you something. Could, could, could you put a stipulation in there like for three to five years? This way, it gives them a chance to sell their home or whatever if they have it. <coughs> it gives them a chance to get out. If they sell home, defer to the law. Well, the only reason why I'm saying that they because some people, right? Because so some people are going to have to sell. You're, 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 you're suggesting putting the effective date. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Uh, would that involve, you know, going, you know, not allowing new right. units? Right. I mean, if that, I mean, that's something that, that's something that the grandfather did. Right. Well, already in. Right. I think, 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 because it would give them a chance to sell. Uh, I they have to sell. It's not easy to sell now. Some places we're in the hottest market in the world. Depends right now. on where you are. Yes. Yes. What we can do is we give them five years. Worst case, we say five years later, yeah. maybe no more. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, no. Just, just to be clear, the, 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 you're suggesting the effective date for 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 what for the leak? for the for the for the phase out for the phase out. So the phase out as it stands now, the effective date is. January 1st, 2020. Right. And then, I would, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor James, the phase out would be until 2021. As drafted, and which applies to certain right. people right now, and you yeah. right. potentially apply some more. Because I'm thinking of people who own property, it has to sell it. Sometimes it don't flip that Listen, quick. I invest in real estate in many years. We're trying to come years. up with a solution here. So no, yeah, we try the solution. Yeah, when you talk about real estate, selling, buying, it's not easy things you make a decision in 10, 15 minutes. months. No. They have involved the capital improvement. The all kind of things is involved. Please, I invest in real estate for 40 years in here and other places, so I know it pretty well. So to me, I don't do any Airbnb business. And look, since 2015 to 2019, you know how many actually, I'm gonna be honest, how many actually I get complained by Airbnb? Four. But if I compare with the other permanent resident complaint, other issue, 
hundreds and hundreds. So please, simple. When I come in this country first time in 40 years of this city, people don't like me. Because why? I'm di a little different than anybody else. So they say, <laughs> thank you very much. You know? So Airbnb things. I ask the people, why you don't like the Airbnb? Oh, I don't like the people carry the briefcase. Do they briefcase bother you? Michael, we don't need to keep no, going yeah. over yeah. 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 We just need to come up so with a solution. You know what that means? And the crime rate, I'm going to tell the crime rate. If you travel to change your land, change your city, you are at least cause a problem. Why? That's a human nature. And not only that, because of Airbnb, make Jersey City a well-known city worldwide, actually. How do I know? Three years ago, when I invited 40 people, college people in Jersey at the Korea, they all stay in the Jersey City downtown Grove and the street, and they eating and shopping in Jersey City, was it? So we get benefit, something there. And also, we have to remember as a and actually, uh, our council, New York City illegal, the Airbnb. Before illegal, there were 15,000. Today, 50,000. <laughs> so even though regulating, even though illegal, still more people participate. And the meantime, New York City, they not get any financial benefit out of the illegal Airbnb or any short term. We're gonna be a same act taken by New York City, like a dumb. We should be a little more smarter, smarter. Last four years, we get four million dollars in revenue. Okay. So we, can we just yes. see how we can do this? <coughs> So, so, How can so I think, I, think I think I can just speak for the uh, I just know myself. I don't, it's, it's a, it's jointly, it's three people have made on the introduction. Right. Is that we can look at the what's there to think, see if there's a way to address the concern and tell you by Wednesday. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah, that's fair. So uh, to address which concern? Council Council and Water. Council. Council. That's my concern. So, we can and, figure and, out a way. I don't have a problem. I can't. With it. Yeah. <laughs> For, for that. Right, and then, because and we just, need to, just to clarify, to address the concern, which, which concern are we talking about? So, so her concern is for people who have made investments, right. giving them more time to find a way out yes. of the investment. They gotta find James, a way out. So, James, so we we got got a I, I don't so I can, the other day. I, well, no. No, no, I don't believe so. No, we're not. But, but can I actually suggest, can I, can I sorry, yeah. Yeah. I probably, can I make a suggestion is that we at least at a minimum see as a council if there's a, a date we can do a special meeting on this and a Robert if you wanted to, but we have, I mean, literally we have 16 ordinances right now for okay. second reading yeah, and, and, and the, uh, the Jersey City Together folks have said the 26th is their next rally as a city council. Well, so if we're, if we're doing short term rentals and all that other stuff, that might be a, a nice. School funding rally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're they're going to keep coming. Yeah. That is, they um, folks, that is Councilman Solomon made it I know, but they still want to. They're coming. Yeah. Councilman Solomon made a oops, recommendation. Robert, absolutely the way to go. Okay. So, we're, 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 what was for your suggestion? He's suggesting a special meeting of City Council to Kate. take up just the short term rental short -term ordinances, rental the two rules in the water. So, the, the, uh, this Wednesday, we're going to be put to the first reading. First reading, yes. And we're going to set up a special meeting day just to talk about the Airbnb. To, to, to vote on the second reading. To vote on it. Vote on the yes. And all the public, public hearings. Yes, do the public hearing and then the vote. But yes. it's going to be a separate night. That's, that's my goal. I don't know if we can find a night, but that's my, that would be my I goal. Second we're, going to get to, we're going to get the extra pay for that? <laughs> no, just so, we're going to put in what? the mileage reimbursement. I'm first. just telling my colleague. Please. We have a same page to try to make the Jersey City better. But we should be hurt to people, trust this council, this city, and the people invest money in Jersey, don't hurt them. It's not the right thing to do. As an elected officer. Allison. All right. Allison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I met with Allison today. Mm -hmm. My main concern is there has to be some enforcement. I had, mm -hmm. I had another Airbnb issue with summons today. This is the six summonses place got with an out of town landlord. And we have to have enforcement and we have to have people that are on premise 
or able to go there and check these houses. Agreed. Instead of leaving them like on uh, one that's mm -hmm. I'm having a problem with. Okay. So, city yeah. should be used to test the voice, set the people. Go ahead. That's the problem. And if we pass it sounds like we need a date for a second reading ordinance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. correct. So, we'll, we'll figure that out on Wednesday? Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. we'll figure it out on Wednesday. We'll look at our calendars and then see if we can. Do you want to look at your calendars? By Wednesday. You're on. There are no dates. That's okay. Any other questions on that? Comments? Just, just a little ground rules. Folks, just a little ground like rules. Is... Folks, we can just get one, one voice cut. We'll need, that, we'll need that decision on Wednesday so I can properly advertise it. We should have that discussion as you suggested on Wednesday. So I'll need the instruction. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Okay, that concludes our Discussion on items 315 and 316. Short term rentals. We're going to continue with the rest of our business. We have yeah, the rest of our agenda. Okay. Good night, folks. There's two doors. Uh, by the way, Golden State is up six points at the half. KD is nope, not playing. He scored 11 in the first half, and he's out. I can't stand the idea of Drake. Drake is happy. Drake got a tech. Ready to start the meeting? Let's get started. Okay. From the top. All right. Folks, we're going to go from the top. Council. All right. 3.1 is the cap ordinance for the calendar year 2019. Folks. Hey. Okay. Sorry, we're resuming the rest of our meeting. From the top, 3.1. Yeah, that's the cap bank ordinance. It's back. It's necessary. Uh, folks, we do this every year. Stop a cap bank. Yep. Okay, any questions? Nope. We did 3.2 with Cunha. 3 is requiring all contractors and subcontractors on construction and infrastructure contracts to participate in the apprentice training program. Any questions on this? Councilman? Yes. Of course, Prince Aries. Yes. Councilman Yun. Yes. So, this one, not much, but which one? Three point three. It say all. Construction infrastructure project are subject to new judge premium wage at all, right? And then 
when I read this one, <coughs> they have no quality. If you read that the Jersey City, the code book, uh -huh. you clean this one, but if they not follow this one, they have no actually financial penalty involved. Mm -hmm. It just so they can walk away. So we gotta have to make sure. Well, I'll check to see if, if we can put in a financial. Yes, a financial penalty. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't know. No, I read it as simple. They have no penalty. Okay. No. So we gotta have to put in the penalty, maybe thousand dollars a day. I'm not, not sure what, what we can put. What I'm saying. So I'll check. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. So without the penalty. Then we just use another paperway to go. Well, the contract wouldn't be awarded if they. The contract would not be awarded, so the penalty would be they wouldn't get, wouldn't get a contract. When you, when you work, then they have to be, have a certain program to run more so. Well, then they if would be not, involved in that contract. No, no, no. If like they're the not working the contract, they're not going to contribute that those uh, are not going to I'll check on that, but yes. to okay. the point, they will not get the contract. So that means that they're not going to get paid and they're not going to get the work. Yeah, they need the fault. It's, 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 it's a material term of yeah. Yeah. winning, being awarded the contract is doing so. Yeah. And, if they fail, and if they fail then to carry that out, once they have the contract, they would be potentially in breach of that contract. Yeah. Yes. But and then we would pull the contract. And, yeah. pull. Yeah. and when you pull the contract, you get there is a, a penalty for every day that you're out of compliance. But not, there's already there, though. That's in our. Uh, that's in the general conditions of rollout contract. But I don't liquidating know. damages for not being in compliance with the contract. So but it's when I say the contract, I mean, the city code, there will no penalties for that. I just told you there is. There's liquidating damages for any non-compliance with the contract. Correct. Or even make a clear that part. But that's a common law. Copy right? the paper yeah. and give it to him. Yes. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And I just um, he, gonna, he has to see it. I, I, I'm convinced. God bless you. I will have it sent Please. to you. That's great. Let me write a note. Right. right. I'll have it sent to you. It's, 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 it's part of the, what the law department prepares as our general contract. Okay. Um, can, I, can I just ask a question, Councilperson? So, um, for for construction and infrastructure contracts, um, are those? Separate and distinct, or are those it has to be a construction and infrastructure? Um, so what I mean is, like, uh, what, what is what, what falls under these definitions? I mean, I could just say, I think the, it, it, it's it, it, it's just it, it's intended to refer generally to. Um, I think the term that was used before was public works, but we wanted to avoid the confusion with Department of Public Works. So construction and infrastructure was used to define essentially it could be a building, it could be roads, it could be you know setting pipes. So, sir, so hypothetically, for example, I'm just I'm just throwing out a hypothetical, which is um, we, we we award a contract to someone to to build a, um, a home that's affordable housing. I don't mean a building, I mean like a home, right? Like, so like a Garden State Episcopal or something like that. Like, would they fall under this uh, this category? I'm just trying to just want to make sure I'm covering it. I mean, it, it, it would seem to fit within the, the boundaries of that. Yes, it's a construction contract. It's, it's very all construction. It just that would um, be. I mean, I, I'm all for this. So, so, I'm that, not so like that's what you're asking. Totally whether all for, construction or construction yeah. related to public works and mm -hmm. infrastructure. Yeah, like if it's a if it's a Okay. Individual home that somebody's building for no affordable yeah, housing it, it, purposes. It's only contracts that are subject to the New Jersey prevailing wage. Yeah. Yeah. So only contract to require New Jersey prevailing wage act. So right. Both contract union? infrastructure. Both infrastructure. Does that mean union? The prevailing wage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just only union contracts. Yes. These would be contracts in no. architecture and engineering uh, awards. Right. Not a third party. So it wouldn't be, you know public housing mm -hmm. projects or affordable housing. You could do that in another way. Oh yeah, way. it falls under purchasing yeah. Yeah. division. You, could, purchase yeah. you could do that in another way. Yeah, yeah, you, course, if you give them a, a deal, an abatement, you could ask them. It's fine. Them. fine. But that's what it's, I was it's confused fine. by that too. Yeah. Infrastructure. It's that's fine. It's under the purchasing. I think yeah, yeah, we're just trying to avoid confusion, but take no. I'm fine. Okay. Do you have a question or? 
No. I'm not I'm talking to counselors. <laughs> <laughs> and the training will be on, I guess, on site training, right? Yeah, in the training program. Correct. Yeah. I mean training program. On site. This also allows for better safety. Well, what do you mean by on site? Yeah, when the job training is being on. built, where the project is being built, or this is going to be like in a classroom no. or both somewhere. I think there are probably classroom components, yeah, but, but I think there's also on site. Exactly, it's a combination of both. If you'd like some clarity on languages, we can check it out, but it'd be on site as well as classroom training. Because it's construction, they both have That's where they are, they're in training. Yeah, so they're in it actually gives people the ability to do apprenticeship on site while they're working as opposed to so they can continue to grow their skills. So do we have a place where we're going to offer the training or the apprenticeship, the classroom stuff? Well, this like the Bethune Center or something like that, or Lincoln Park, like the, what is it, the room in Lincoln Park? We're not, we're not, not the right? city is not administering, oh. this is just an apprenticeship program in general. I, th I think that's administered by the trade union. Correct. So, so, by the trade union. Yeah. So, Council President, if we see that, the, if we read that, they're very clear, the training, classroom training, and the side training, it's stay there. Yeah. 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 I, I thought, I thought we were doing it. I thought we were like, Alright, so it's union prevailing wage, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Not the union prevailing wage. City contract, even though it's a non union, they have to pay $15 an hour. And if they any contract belongs to the New Jersey Prevailing Wage Act, then they have to be able to right. the program. Simple. So can you be non union in conformity with this? Is that the city doesn't award non union? Contracts. Okay, I'm just asking for construction. Yeah. So, as a policy. Okay, so, so let me ask you a different question. Would, would the city hall annex, mm. like that code sort of arrangement to have went through a third party, would that fall under this? Uh, right. That would apply to, by the language here, the, the contractor, any subcontractor shall participate in an apprenticeship training program. Great. Yeah, but it, that was a that was a lease purchase, so no, it would be outside of it. it would be, outside. but they vol in that particular case, as you know, Eric uh, uh, voluntarily right. uh, participated in the city's uh, you know, goal uh, guidelines for yeah. participation in construction. I don't think he has a apprenticeship training program. He wasn't he working with that. Not, not, no. But no. He, he wasn't working. With but he did hire. He did hire minorities and locals. But the, the strict answer would be no, it wouldn't apply to it. Okay. We could make that part of a lease, though. We certainly yeah. could, you know, the next one that's put, for being proposed, the public safety uh, headquarters, um, and we can make it one of the clauses of the lease. Mm -hmm. So. Could I just ask for my own identification? Um, could you provide me a line? Um, Definitions on New Jersey Prevailing Wage Act or, or the code on that? Yeah, I can that is. I mean, how many trains do we need? Still, people who have received the train get out of the job. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the other piece of that is um, all of this stuff around the apprenticeship training program falls under 29 CFR. Mm -hmm. If I could get that yeah. piece just so I can. Understand how that works. All right, next item. Really, 3.4, amending Chapter 27, Defense and Indemnification, limiting the city's obligation to defend and indemnify city employees in case of criminal conduct, discrimination, retaliation, harassment, and intentional torts. Yeah, this is um, this. Posing this partially out of some questions that the council have had, some concerns that they've had about uh, the city's representation and the indemnification of employees who are either found guilty in a criminal context or who are adjudicated to be responsible or liable for discrimination um, or other intentional torts in court. Uh, so simply, it allows the city to uh, deny, there, there, there are two problems. There's defense, there's defense at trial and there's indemnification after a judgment. Defense is whether the city will provide a legal defense for somebody who, an employee who is sued um, under uh, a, a tort claim of some kind. 
I don't uh, think so. You know, hold on, let's let him finish. Yeah, finish, please. Thank you. Um, this allows the city, if, person, if the person is charged with another crime, it allows the city to not defend them uh, in court if they're either charged with a crime or if they commit an offense in another state that would constitute a crime in New Jersey. Um, and if the city starts to represent that person and then it's revealed later that they've committed acts that would constitute a crime, it would allow us to disclaim coverage. As far as the identification, it would allow the city, if there is an adjudication of responsibility for someone who commit an act of discrimination, harassment, or another intentional tort, it would allow the city to not indemnify uh, that person for that individual conduct. Specifically because if a person is commits a tort like that while on the job, while performing their job. It is not part of their job duties. We don't train people to, to commit sexual harassment. We don't allow people to commit acts of discrimination against people. If they do that, they are doing that outside their duties as an employee of the city, and we shouldn't have to come. You wouldn't be defending them? Well, we, 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 would not, we would not be, for instance, a jury could come back and say $100,000 for employee Y who committed, you know, they're, they're, they're one percent responsible for this act of sexual harassment, you know, and that's the judgment. The city would not then have to pay that judgment for that employee. Now, we were mindful of, you know, employees, particularly in the public safety context, who are often accused of excessive force or things of that nature. Uh, this specifically allows, if they are, Unless they commit a specific intentional tort that is not related to their job, if there's an act of discrimination, if there's an act of harassment, that's a completely separate thing. If there's an act, if there's an argument that, it's yeah, not in to the time. exactly, yeah, the, he took me to the ground too hard and I got hurt, and then, uh, right. Uh, let's open it up some questions, Councilman Bogiano. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, this smacks of politics. If you read politically, they're going to cover you. But if you're not, goodbye. Come on, this is a shame. Councilman Bogiano. No, listen. That's what I'm saying. What's up? No, I have nothing. Councilman Solomon. Well, I mean, this came from a close caucus discussion. It was close caucus. I was like, right. I think I was certainly like really shocked that we were paying for the defense of. Of people who of, of, of what people were being, I, you know. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that you guys do this. So, so you saying we wouldn't represent them in court, or we wouldn't be liable to pay their fine? Well, there, 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 there are two parts. There's defense, which is we will have, either the law department will represent you, or we will pay for your attorney. Um, that's the legal defense. What this allows is if the person is. It says the act or remission is one of fraud, actual malice, willful misconduct, or one that would constitute a crime or offense under state law. So, for example, if a city employee is um, if a city employee is charged with theft, that's a crime. That's, depending how much it is, it's a third, it's a fourth, third, second, third crime. We do not then have to provide their legal counsel. Now, in the event, let's say they are charged criminally, and let's say they are. The complaint is dismissed, the indictment is dismissed, or they go to a jury trial and they're found not guilty. At that point, they can make a request for their back counsel fees. Now, that's something that would, it may be subject to disciplinary review, et cetera, but there would be recourse. Indemnification is a separate matter. Indemnification means if you are found to be responsible for this conduct and there's a monetary award, for example, employee A sues employee Z for sexual harassment. A jury finds employee Z responsible for that sexual harassment and says employee Z committed the sexual harassment. We would not have, and awards employee A $100,000, the city would not have to pay that $100,000. That, that employee would be on the hook for his or herself. So, so I, I forget exactly where I came up in you said closed session, um, but um, my concern is the, the presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty, right? So, um, and I actually know the experience of like officers who've mm -hmm. um, have, have not been, I guess, represented, not, so they have to pay out of pocket. And so what, what kind of quality of defense are they gonna have like if, if we choose not to, to cover them? Um, under those sort of circumstances. I think. Um, yeah, there's a union. There's, there's PBA and FOPs and unions that come with them. You know, yeah. Yeah. But they, they, they well, so, so, it's not, so to take it outside of the realm of the, the police union, 
I mean, if you put it in any of the other unions that don't, that don't have like sort of resources um, and they have some sort of like issue, um, again, it's just the presumption of innocence until proven guilty, like uh, you're, you're well, still, for, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with a criminal charge, there's still a probable cause standard that has to be met, whether it is, whether it's a, whether a grand jury finds adequate evidence to indict, or if they're charged by a complaint. So, so there's still a standard that has to be met. So that, that standard has to be met according to this ordinance? Or yes. Or deny the actor, the actor admission was one of fraud, actual malice, willful misconduct, or one that would constitute a crime or offense under NJSA 2C, which is the criminal statute, federal criminal law, or an act committed in another state that would constitute a crime or offense. For example, if they steal, if they're on a business trip in Pennsylvania and they steal five thousand dollars from somewhere, that would be a 2C offense in New Jersey. So let me use another hypothetical, which is, um, um, the, it's already been out there in the public, so I don't think I'm, the, the whole tape gate situation, right? So, um, if one of those um, individuals who's, who was named in that sort of situation, if that person was uh, investigated or so forth, uh, um, whether it be by an outside party or an internal, um, an internal investigation of some sort, would their counsel, or, or whoever is being, um, there, there's not a charge brought against them, but there's a counsel. There's a need for them to have some sort of counsel as an investigation by um, internally or, or externally is brought to bear on them in some, some way. Are we saying that they would not be able to um, be financed by that? Uh, they're not now. They're not now. You would never do that. Right, now, like you said, if, 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 yeah, the investigation is not a charge. I mean, the right to counsel attaches you know, at any time. Um, but that, that's, that's a personal choice if someone wants to essentially retain counsel if they're being investigated. Um, now, if they're formally charged and they are obviously at that point entitled to counsel, that, that would be the point where they would be charged with the crime and the obligation for the city to represent them would not attach. Or it would, it would not be, the city would be allowed to disclaim Legal okay. Council members, any other questions on that? None? Okay. Moving on. Corporation Council will but be addressing simple. three points. Okay. Council Mignon. It's a very simple question I'm going to ask you. Let's say FBI or Prosecutor Office got to be, they have no charge, just in this case, X, Y, Z person, city employee. Then when they investigate, then the person, so when you sit down, investigate, prosecutor office or federal FBI is also, the person needs some, like to have <laughs> lawyers represent together. Mm -hmm. Those kind of case, city have to be provided now? No, if, if the city provided, Council for everybody who was investigated, it would be broke. No one has to sit down with anybody if they're being investigated criminally if they don't want to. Ever. If you're being investigated, that's how you're being investigated. You want to, if you want to sit down and talk to them, that, that would be your choice to hire counsel. The city's not under any obligation for every the, the, the police officers would be any different than any other employee. If the FBI was investigating me tomorrow and they called me to come in. I would say, no, I'm not going to come in. I have no reason to talk to you. But if I decide to go in, I can't come to you and say, could you get me a lawyer because the FBI is investigating me and I want to go talk to them? You would look at me like I had three minutes. Why? Now, if I was being charged with something, let's say I was being charged with sexual, sexual harassment, um, and, I, and I was charged, a complaint was filed against me, or let's say it's something criminal, because criminal is really where it becomes an issue. I was charged with committing a robbery last weekend. It wasn't in the performance of my duties, and I came to you. I was formally charged. Probable cause was established by a grand jury. I was arrested. I made bail. I was really no bail. And I was like, oh, and I came in here and I said, would you provide me with a lawyer? Because I robbed somebody, and um, I like representation. That's not in the performance of my duties. Even if I did it at lunchtime, I went to Sprove and did something. Would, would you provide me a lawyer? Do you think you should provide me a lawyer to defend me in a criminal charge? Because I've done something outside the scope of my duties. That's up to you. If you're willing to do it, <laughs> I'm sure everybody will take it. But at some point in time, there has to be 
I mean, it's, it's different, and you have to make, obviously, you have to make those calls. If you're in the performance of your duty, and you've wrestled with somebody, and the, the person gets hurt, now there's a question there, right? And the prosecutor's office says, well, we're gonna charge you with an aggravated assault. That may be questionable. Just so I wanna make sure. Because there were one time, one of the electrodes in this body or into the body fell level. At the time, city of New Jersey hired outside of the law company, the law firm, to, to respond to all those FBL, not FBL. They request all the documentation. Well, that's different. If they request documents by subpoena, you have, you have to hire somebody. If you don't have the staff to do but, it, I mean, you have to provide that. It's not the same thing. City have to pay for that? Hire the outside of the have to do it. Well, if they say subpoena, of course, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about representation of an individual in a criminal charge, as opposed to if the FBI says, we send you a subpoena and we want all records related to these 10 officers, the so those inquiries would be, well, so you, they, we would have to provide them. Yeah, but that's not providing that, 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 That's not providing counsel to an individual person. If you're getting, if you get a subpoena saying we need these files, that file, that file, that file, that, that point that becomes a city function. Okay. You have to do that. You I guess we'll make sure. That's different than representing someone who's been charged with a crime. Okay. But in, in that, that instance that the council began to point out, if that same investigating body were to like to ask them to come in for, for questions or something to that effect. Yeah, if that person would not be would be entitled to legal counsel or not? If they wanted to hire or if they were in their duties, they would probably go to their I'm saying yeah. we did provide legal I, counsel. I think that, you that can. I don't think you're so, obligated yeah, to. Yeah, if you let's say you have, you have employee A. Employee A is well, we asked. Did. I'm saying we did do that, right? He's, mm -hmm. he's pointing to the idea that the FBI came and asked had inquiries about uh, Bridgegate or whatever mm -hmm. the case was, I don't know right. specifically. And we provided uh, legal counsel um, as a city we did. Um, for, for the administration and other people who were who were being investigated. They weren't charged with anything. Well, we provided counsel. Yeah, but if that's what you're talking about, legal counsel, they weren't charged. You weren't providing legal counsel to them. You were providing counsel to respond to the requests that were being made. Right, I'm saying if they were responding to inquiries around that stuff, so you're saying if, if if they were actually asked to come in for depositions or something, they wouldn't be, like, we wouldn't have to, that legal counsel wouldn't be... Yeah, but being called in for a deposition does not be in charge of the criminal offense. It's, it's the deposition... So you're saying they wouldn't be, they, 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 they you wouldn't have to provide them... If you go in in your capacity, if in my capacity, or let's say it's corporation counsel, they want you to come in to depose you, you would provide counsel to your corporation counsel, because he's going in as his official duty to answer questions on the matter. He's not being charged with the crime. There's distinctions to be made there. You can't say, I'm not going to give you that person to tell the Yeah, but that's not that person not being charged with the crime. That's not what you were in the sense. So I'm just asking if this is going to not yeah. allow that person, oh is that person still entitled to counsel? That's what I'm asking. I'm going to miss it tonight. There's, there's, you would provide it, you would want to provide it. I don't know that you have to provide it, but it's not, I would say it's an entitlement. I'm not getting caught up here in, you know, in, in semantics, but entitlement's a big word. The city would provide that, I would think, because you're responding in your performance as corporation counsel to a deposition that you can't refute in a matter that's being investigated. He is not being charged with a crime. You're not providing him counsel for a crime or any charges against him personally. This is his performance in his duties in an investigation. And you, you can't lump it all together. They're very different and distinct uh, hypotheticals and situations. Okay. That would, this, this ordinance would not have stopped you from providing counsel to Correct. someone who has okay. an answer to a deposition. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Okay, sir. Go on. <clears throat> Six is. An ordinance amending our administrative code to clarify the qualifications for the positions of director and assistant director of public safety. Pardon me, this is another one the law department will handle. It's an ordinance amending chapter three, Department of Law. This I'll put a little more in the content, but it's to allow corporation counsel to catch up with the uh, let's say the threshold of 
his ability to settle cases? Right. The, um, this has been a long time coming. Uh, 1990 was when the original amount of $7,500 was set. Uh, a lot of things have changed since 1990, uh, not, not, not least of which among them is um, the other cities of similar size in New Jersey have very recently increased their amounts as well. Newark recently increased theirs to 40,000. Patterson increased their threshold to 30,000. Uh, Hoboken is over 20,000 at this point. Uh, this will allow us to attempt to resolve cases more quickly. It will allow us to, I would say, engender more goodwill with the bench uh, by virtue of being able to resolve cases quickly, uh, which can be a very good thing. Uh, we can limit council fees on cases that have a fee shifting component by reducing um, essentially the clock that the plaintiff's attorneys will run uh, once they start representing a plaintiff who is entitled to council fees uh, by trying to resolve matters um, more early. And uh, as you'll see, we have four settlements that are on for this agenda, and three of them would fall under this threshold. So, only my case. concern, Council President? Yes, Council My Pettin. only concern is that the uh, risk management setting is a thousand dollars. I think it's a too low because risk management is usually take care of like a car tire damage by car or mm -hmm. car accident. But today, if you just fix the car fender, it costs three thousand dollars. So, when you say thousand dollars, I think it's too low. Mm -hmm. My comfortable feel like I'm maybe. Risk management is at least $3,000. It's on page two, page two, bullet number one. He's talking about a method that increases risk management. Life claim is the value of the thousand dollars can be settled by risk manager with the approval insurance fund. So thousand dollars, really, if we just flat tire, a couple of them, cost a thousand dollars. So I like to have an increase in the thousand dollars as to minimum three thousand dollars. So we don't have to continue about our high rank law department to you know concentrate those things. Because anyhow, even though three thousand dollars, insurance uh, fund the commission to look into case, you know. So. We I think we can do that by way of a separate ordinance if you like. I could talk to you offline and we can uh... Okay. Oh, I have a no, I don't okay. care. Wait. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, we, can, we, we can make a change as. Uh, we, we can we change to $1,000 to $3,000? To $3,000? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys define just liability claim? What does that mean? Is it just towards? Yeah. So, so, I mean, this is a specific question, but uh, for example, if uh, the city council rejected a contract and the contract he was sued the city for paying. Could that then be set up under this claim? Well, be a breach. you'd be talking at that point about a breach of contract for services. Right. Okay. Okay. Would that be a liability and that could be set there? It could be, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I think that's a very unique circumstance, but maybe we can add a clause that says like, you know, Basically, it says not you know rejected, rejected by the city council or something like that. It's late, so I'm not thinking super straight, but I think it's a unique circumstance. But I would want to make sure that if it had come to the council in some way before, it can't get kind of settled through this mechanism without the council knowing about it. That makes sense. Yeah, about the yeah. claims that are right. Like yeah. Bills yeah. yeah. Like it's just like the, the claims that are on our agenda for tonight. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it gets to come to the council before it doesn't, it still comes back to us or something. So, so can I say that? There's but still accountability. Well, right. it comes under that threshold, but never come before the council. That's the point of the threshold. Well, but I feel like if it came, if, well, if the liability, for most of the liability claims are never going to come before the council, but there's a chance that the, the you know, originating mechanism of the liability would come before the council. I mean, the folks, when we do a, when we do any, like, when we do any, um, under a resolution, and we do the um, the claims that were, you know, mm -hmm. not properly done before the council, and then they come to us. Mm -hmm. And then let's say we were, you know, we did that happens more than once. And then let's let's say we chose to reject that. We said, look, you didn't properly mm -hmm. issue that purchasing order or contract. We didn't offer it. We said, we're not going to pay it, even though the vendor is saying, look, I have this email from this person saying I should do this. And then, you know, 
if that were under 40K, we could be settled through this process. Does that make sense? Because then they could sue and yes. say, well, you didn't, you know, that, that's the, the mechanism. Okay. Yeah. So if there's a way to figure that out, I right. appreciate it. Okay. okay. Just we want to make sure that A checks and balance. Three thousand dollars and the other one three thousand one dollars. Okay. Okay. Right. They're going to make an amendment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next item. Three point I'm six. I'm past three point six. I did talk about it. It's clarifying the qualifications for the positions of director and assistant director of public safety. Clarifying the responsibilities of those positions and creating a table of organization for the division of police. Haven't we done that before? Are we, uh, What's up? Haven't we done that before with them? No. no. So, well, this is the division of public safety or the division of police? Public safety. Is public safety. Yeah, the positions within the division of public safety have been created. Can I say something? Okay, one at a time. Councilperson Ridley. Why are we getting rid of the experience requirement? Sam Fisher, my dad. Okay. Councilwoman Ridley? Everybody got the same question. No. Yes. Because you want you. I, I, I'm not really in a position to speak for public safety on that. So I think that might, that would be a question I could, I think that would be a question to reach out to the public safety office. Yeah, can we withdraw our closer hearing? Yes. Thank you so Can't they come on Wednesday? No. 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 We draw, we draw and uh, let it present the coming and the council. Yeah, because we Those would have questions Wednesday night. You don't, you don't want to do it. It's the public time. We should hear from the public. And they should come here tonight and explain why they want it. To be Just a few questions I'm going to repeat it uh, to address. Wait, what can, we, can we let the business administrator so talk I, I, for a I, second? I'm going to write withdrawn, <laughs> but it's really rejected. So <laughs> it's the right word. Okay. Well, I right. just, you know, just to point out, you know, this this is being done after something to, you know, as far as the table of organization goes, this is being done specifically with civil service commission in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as, you know, I don't want to speak for the public safety director, but as far as the qualifications go, the, the idea is that the director of public safety is a, you want to look at it as a, it's a quasi-civilian, it, it really is a civilian position. Uh, you're overseeing public safety, but you're not part of the direct police chain of command or fire chain of command. Is this including the deputy chiefs? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. we should not, we should right. not, yes. we should not withdraw this. So, we, we should. They should be here to answer those the, the issue being, I think, if you had if you had somebody who was an incredibly qualified administrator, you know what, Peter, we don't have a problem. We just need them here to answer questions. <laughs> I, 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 I and out of respect for us, they should be here. We here late at night. They're not here. I understand. We don't understand. I, and I, and I, I agree with you. So that's why we tell them. Tell them next time, send a representative. That's all. Well, let's don't keep doing. We got a lot to still go through. Okay. And should have just told them we'll be on. here at 11 o'clock tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, they could have gone out to dinner and moving on. Just watch the game and now. then come. Oh, it's 88 84 <laughs> Warriors. Okay, it's been Come the on, fourth. Come on. Seven. An ordinance electing to release restricted affordable housing units throughout the city of Jersey City from the applicable affordable. Affordable affordability controls of the uniform housing affordable controls. Can we get the uh, the addresses of the units? Yeah, I mean this. And if we're pushing like yes. towards more affordability, then why do we mm -hmm. try to remove it? That's a good question. That's what. Yes, oh, Pretty was supposed to be here too. Someone from okay. the office was supposed to be here. Okay, just take off. the minimum. Oh, just with more. I, I mean, if they yeah, you know, uh, just to speak that real quick, uh, this past week, uh, the BA sent out an email to all the directors. I, know, I, I don't I know if you saw it. Swipe, that said, if you don't, if you don't provide uh, the council uh, and the council secretary with the uh, responses, that uh, their their uh, legislation might be withdrawn. So okay. He, well, they're, they were under. They've been warned this right. past week in writing. So, so we're gonna. Oh. Serious. Okay. We here. But um, there's a request to withdraw for the administration. Okay. Let's move on. Let's keep moving on. Sure. We did eight. Let's we go to eight. nine. 
Yes, oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Nine is yeah, yeah. yeah, an ordinance yesterday uh, releasing the reverter in the December 28, 2016, conveying land in Sea Caucus, New Jersey, to Hudson County. Who's addressing that? It's correct if the data is it was administration Go ahead. It's too Well, actually, um, I didn't know what it meant, and uh, Nick actually. Educated me. Are we talking about the reverter? Yes. Or am I, am I falling behind? No, we're at reverter. Three nine. This is this is the sea caucus one. Yeah. Probably for Laurel Park. Probably. Yeah. If this piece of property was transferred to sea caucus, okay. you understand it that the stipulated the permits we sold it to them for them to use ever went away and come back to us. Oh. However, now the DOT wants it, or the Turnpike Commission wants it for a road project. So by releasing the reverter, it will allow them to use that land for that particular project. It says Portal Bridge. That's like the, one of the major infrastructure projects. Right. So we can hold it up for, yeah. So they can answer. Amtrak. <laughs> right. We call it, we call it yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Amtrak. I want, I want drink tickets. <laughs> Defend you. Would <laughs> <laughs> you be entitled to defense? Yeah. <laughs> so, not in one hand clap. Uh, uh, okay. Only if he's a host. All right, we did 10. Uh, 11 is a lease agreement between the city and Verizon for property at 71 Madison Avenue. This is um, a lot that we rent uh, and have rented for as long as I'm here. 25 years for use uh, for the West District uh, Police uh, Station. It is right on the corner of Communipaw and the bottom of, uh, or at the top of Monticello. Is it 14,400 a bill? Yeah, yeah. No, it's an empty lot. The number was fixed, I understand. Uh, well, the resolution itself is not fixed. In the, in the fact sheet it is, but. The resolution is still going on. Yeah, there's no one else. That may be when, when, uh, when the agendas went out. If we one? don't have the uh, actual amount of PO, I'll withdraw it on, on Wednesday. Is the whole yeah. And this is, this is on the corner, it's just parking. Yeah. It, uh, they, rent, they have rented it, the police department has rented it from them forever. If you is think of. Is for rescue? Right, uh, yes. That's exactly it. It's got black iron fencing. Yeah. And the Verizon building is, it's parking for Verizon, but they never, they don't use it. Yeah, it's going out of it and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. <laughs> so, so what, what account is this coming out of? This is our the lease account. The lease account? Yeah, we have an account in real estate that pays for all the leases. In real I see, okay. So it's an operating expense. 1200 a month. And we'll have yeah. to figure by Wednesday. We'll have to figure by Wednesday. You'll have the blanks it's, it's filled. It's 14,400 according to the fact sheet. I'm not sure if that's actually what's going to be in the resolution at the final. Yeah, I'll give you the exact number. I don't, I don't remember. I didn't do great eyes because this should say two. I should say one. Okay. Oh, it's a, it should be one? So that's what I think. I think it should be, it should be yeah, one. That's why I was asking what that's the very count good. Is. Very good. I'll check on that too. Okay. okay. We did 12, 13. Amending the administrative code to restructure the Department of Administration and Department of Human Resources. There's no, we didn't do 11. Who's here to talk about this? We didn't do 11. I'm here. This is it. We did 11. Oh, we did 11. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, let's replace all. Okay. I had it twice at the top. 11 is, is the. Uh, yeah, we did that. We're on 13. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're on 13 is. Restructuring the Department of Administration and Human Resources to create a division of finance. Within the division of finance will be the Office of Management and Budget, the CFO, the uh, Accounts and Control, Treasury, and Payroll. Okay. So th this is the only ordinance where somebody reverted or changed their uh, amendment uh, formatting 
whether deletions are by italics and bracketed versus strikeouts. Mm. Can, can we fix, can we change it so it's consistent with the rest of the other ordinances? And because it's confusing as to what's good what's catch. actually being removed. Good and what's catch, Council President. Concerned. That would have been hard to advertise. You know. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so I guess we can't quite can't tell that. Yeah, you're doing the additions in italics instead of. It, they're doing removals, deletions, <coughs> italics, and brackets. Yeah. Just has to be. The formatting just has to be just yeah. Turn back to strike figures. Strike figures. But do other people have questions? I don't know if you were able to make heads or tails of it based on you know, I, I got a lot said there, of questions. You know? A lot of questions. Yes. A lot of questions. Wow. We're at so if I ask the questions, you guys are gonna be stay for like probably twelve in the morning. I don't wanna do that. So now it's a one point game. Okay, so <laughs> So what we're going to do, my recommendation, because it's a, a, the restructure of the business administration office, I think this is the first one by Ryan Flett. Ryan Flett actually doing this one. So he's not here. My suggestion may be withdraw, and when he's coming, she, he should make a, a presentation. Yeah, I, I, I think that this is a long time coming, actually. Right. So, and, and we've, several of us in the BA's office have worked on this. So the idea was to, uh, over the years, there used to be a finance department. We had a department of finance. And so if one administration decided that instead of having that department, they raised another division to be a department and put finance in administration. Then uh, the Philip administration created the Department of uh, uh, Human Resources. So then, sort of like finance became sort of just like a like a stepchild. So now it was okay. How did you organize that so it's one one uh, coaching office? And that's all this does. There's no all these people still work for us. They are all they're all you know doing the same function still. Now they're in one place. Uh, with uh, under one division, and it it just makes more sense operational. But it's not there's nothing controversial about it. It's what is your substantive be, question? Why don't you yeah, okay, give so me an idea yeah, about what what so your what you would your so question page, be? Page five. Uh huh. Uh, there's a fee number four. Persons age of 65 or older shall be exempted from the fees, you know, uh, specified under. Subsection C1 also. I like to print there. Is it new? Is that new? It's a new. At least new in the sense that it, they, they, it's under. Is it somewhere? It might have always been. It's just in another section. It was moved there. Yeah, but it's all underlined, so it's new in that section. Yeah, but it's not new. It's not new. So then. So it's, it's not to, new. Yes. Well, we, well, we don't know it's new. So we need like. I, I don't know. So I don't have a. I don't, I don't, I don't mean, so, so well, it should. It should be. This right. goes back to what the council president was saying. It should be marked in such a way that you can tell whether it's totally new Correct. or being moved. So we we don't know. So so in this case, I like to put the uh, war veterans and the whole military service. They should be waived the fee. You know, not only age to sixty five. War veterans and the military service, you know, they should get away with it. When you have a military service, they probably out of country like EU, so they have some behind the text, something happened. They should be, you know, those kind of things. Also, so you want you want to be completely uh, way way yeah. It might that might be state law. War veterans and the military service, and also uh, page eight, all the way bottom three dash sixty dash eleven, office of affordable housing functions. 
actually similar function is they're operating now community development because most affordable housing right. they subsidize the government subsidizes so already the community development they doing that so I don't know why we have to create a new separate and the uh, affordable page, page A. I just follow up. We have immediately withdrawn. We had proposed the idea of the, the affordable housing office that mm -hmm. was connected to the inclusionary zoning. And I just wanted right. someone to explain to me what this mm -hmm. office of affordable housing right. is going to do that seems like it's under the BA versus the office that was proposed, which I thought was going to be in GCP. Right. Yeah, so that's right. And so, and just like what, what's each one doing? What's their responsibilities? Yeah, so. so so why are this two? yeah why is it two mm -hmm. uh, that was my question actually to the PA. so the, the idea is this one that's in administration is connected to tax collection because it's connected to any abatements that would be awarded to somebody who has who promised the city that they would do affordable housing and this group would make sure that that affordable housing component um, was being uh, done correctly forever, you know, for the length of that abatement. So these these are compliance officers, really, to watch the abatement to make sure that the affordable housing part of it is being done correctly. The other side, in HEDC, they, they're more brick and mortar and, and looking at the project itself or helping people to. get into it. Right, they don't want to. So they're separate, they're yeah. separate uh, this is financial uh, yeah. auditing. Um, yeah. That's what. That's why they're in the tax office. There's a lot going on there. It's just. It is a lot. Um, All right, well, you know. Uh, it seems like you could. I think it's worth it like a full like presentation on this whole thing. It's a. Uh, it like I mean, you're, you're, you're by my read and um, you're creating a kind of bringing down managing the budget down to an office as opposed to a division, right? Um, so that's one one particular. Amendment. Then you've got this uh, um, the tax collection, uh, the office of collections. Um, I guess you're consolidating tax abatements, compliance along with uh, the collections. Well, the, the, the tax abatement is currently in collections. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a division right of collections currently, and then um, well, we have yeah, we have the tax tax abatement management. The tax collection. Right, and the tax abatement collectors are in the tax office right now. Thank you. So also page 12, 3-1-3, Office of Risk Management. And we have already risk of management office there. And uh, if you see the job description, this is more close to the employee benefit. You mean the work, work and compensation, benefits, and claims? Is that what you're looking yeah, at? No, the, the risk manager also handles all of the, uh, all of the uh, workers' compensation claims. Then they're, they're, I'm confused because this is in the human resources department. That's where it's being moved to, human resources. All those things should involve the division of the employees of benefit. Works, compensation, benefit, plan for city employees, those things should go uh, uh, because you know there's so many there's so much going on. Yes, yeah, so, so I don't know which one is brand new or which one is well it's only first reading, so oh, you're the first, yeah, so it's only your first reading. So but what you said is it's about employee benefits, it's in HR. Right now it's in administration. Can we get the strike through version? Yes. Four yes. Yes. Thanks. Anyone else have particular questions? I'm hoping not. Just I don't know this is. I don't know if I have actual questions. Right. Yeah. And then I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, I don't know. I mean, if, if they want to move forward to second reading, it's just a question of then, then the affordable housing stuff for me is, doesn't make sense. It's just really that all. Right. Yeah. Maybe they need to word it if, right. It can be confusing. Sure. Okay. What are we going to do? Okay. What are we going to do? Robert, we're moving on to second reading. Yeah, the rate is when 103 to 97. Okay. Warriors are going to Let's go through second readings. 
Uh, any questions on second reading? Okay. Just on um, on four one. Just when when is the ceremony for that? That's what I'd like to know. The street name. I'll let you know. Yeah. And then uh, the seventh grade. Council members, I, I don't want to um, just I don't want to drag this out, but um, on the yeah. on the ordinances related to the inclusionary zoning. Um, was previously discussed, asked that you consider uh, tabling both ordinances. Hold and that allow the committee to uh, move forward and then uh, doing some sort of reconciliation and figuring this out at a later Yes, time. please. And this okay. was tabled before public comment, correct? Tabled before public before. comment. Thank you. Ever, ever, the inclusionary zonings, which would be uh, 4.2 and 4.4. Uh, Four and, and five is 4. the five. five is the housing, so we are five. going to table five. Okay. Table. Four five. Okay. So all right. So it's two. Excuse me. Two, four, and five. And and I should add for four seven, which is about installation of poles. I asked somebody to look into it, and I have to read their email, and so I may email you, know, you guys okay. a question tomorrow. The law department of John is working on it tomorrow morning, and I'll tell people. But if there's something that's worth thinking about. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to resolutions. Sir. Yes, sir. Let me get there. One is an emergency temporary appropriation. We did two, three, and four. Five is authorizing a lien against properties for the cost of removing brush, weeds, dead and dying trees, stumps, roots, noxious growths. Filth, garbage, litter, debris, and consonant with statutes and code. Six, authorizing the payment of a claim submitted by Constellation New Jersey Incorporated for electric generation services. That's withdrawn. That's withdrawn. Sorry, sir. Which one? Ten six. Ten six. Ten six. Ten seven. Authorizing the settlement, we have a, a series of them. Seven through ten authorizing settlements of lawsuits. I believe the memos have been brought down. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah we got you. Okay. Seven through ten, it's Charles A. Boyd, Hick, Hector Ivan Mejias, Magdiel Ortiz Martinez. And Davis v. the City of Jersey City. Eleven. Through fifteen, all authorized the business administrator to execute discharge is of mortgages for properties at 551 Bram Hall, 95 Jefferson, 528 Martin Luther King Drive, 1209 Summit Avenue, and 211 Terrace Avenue. 16 authorizes the BA to execute a partial mortgage discharge for property at 100 EE Avenue. 17 is approving a transfer, removing a restriction from the deed of conveyance and retaining a right of reversion at 57 Virginia Avenue. Those are one why they give to so many years. I mean, I wonder, you know? As I said before, those houses, the building, you know, they purchased it 1982 June. Um, I could, yes. Councilman, this is uh, this was a circumstance. <coughs> we, we worked on this for some time. Mm -hmm. um, this was a property that had was purchased. I believe it was at Sheriff's. Mm -hmm. I, was it Sheriff's? No, it's yeah. a city. And, 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 at any rate, um, the original owner acquired it with encumbrances on it that required him to bring it up to code before he could uh, sell it. Um, the, the long and the short of it, at some point, the original owner passed away. His son acquired the property through his estate. However, the property should not transfer to his son through the estate simply because the um, obligations have not been met on that property. So. The son was trapped. The son was stuck, for lack of a better term, with this property that was um, encumbered by these obligations to bring up to code, etc., through no fault of his own. 
Okay. Uh, there was a buyer for the property. Uh, the agreement was made that if the prospective buyer does not restore it to the coded, the necessary, meet the necessary code provisions within 180 days, then it will refer. So. Okay. So they're going to cause the, I mean, the, solve the problem they have. Okay. Yes. Okay. There was a paperwork snafu well before any of us were involved in city government. Okay. okay. 1018 is a replacement resolution authorizing the execution of a fellowship partner agreement with Leadership for Educational Equity, a not for profit corporation in connection with the Leadership for Educational Equity Public Policy Fellows Program. That's uh, come before us multiple times. This is just uh, assuming that uh, something is missing from information. Brian's coming back to us. We did 19 through 26, 27 through 29 are all license agreements between the city, public schools, and the city of Jersey City for 166 Davenport, 93 Grand, and 198 Plainfield Avenue. 30 is withdrawn, 31 was done. Which one? 30? 30 was withdrawn. 31 was done. 32 is authorized in agreement with some of class associates. That was done. That was done. Uh, sorry. That one I might have been out of the room for. We did up to 36. 37 might have been a Steve. We did it. Yep. 37 for Steve Miller. April 1. 38 we did it for Steve Miller. 39. 40 is gone. 41 is gone. 42, renewal of an agreement with West Interactive Services for provide website posting. We did this. We did it. Sorry. I'm waiting for Council Young to say something because this game has got a minute to go. 43 is a resolution referring a proposed amendment to Chapter 345. So now this will be related to the Airbnb. Say it in council. So now that's what I'm saying. Before our corporation council say talk about the joining, not the joining issue, committing issue. But now we put to the joining issue over here. So we contradict ourselves. We what? Airbnb issue was a committing issue, not joining issue. But we printed the resolution to try to look at the joining issue. I mean, what, what, what is the right? 43, 10, 43. I mean, corporate and council say it's not the joining issue, it's a permitting issue. But now we talk of 43, try to change the joining issue. I mean, what, what, which one is true? So councilwoman Mira say, right, it's a joining issue. When it's a joining issue by state statute, we have to be grandfathered in. Look at 43. Get yes, back to 1043. Yes. I will get back to you tomorrow on that issue. 47 would be the next. So can, can I just mm -hmm. briefly on 47? Um, I'll, I'll just, I'm sorry, just to go back to um, Councilman Young. The amendment in Ordinance 3.15 that refers to the zoning matter is the deletion of uh, uh, language on short-term rental right. um, in Chapter 345 of the ordinance. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's what that's referencing. So, so they tried to change a joining. This is not going to change the zoning. It's this is not the change about me. No, it's going to send it to the planning board. Yeah, planning board to study there. I mean, if it's not the, not the joining issue, why we ask the, the planning department to study the joining issue. Okay. Uh, so that doesn't mean you're changing it. And I, I don't have the full answer for you, but I, I stand by what I said before. It's not the, the one that's being put forth from the administration does not require um, grandfather as you continue to set forth. And because you're deleting something doesn't mean that you're necessarily making 
uh, we change or we ask for a study, you're not making the change. And I am going to speak to uh, Hannah, who did the research on this, and the administration, but it does not, it does not require grandfathering. The, the proposed ordinance does not require that people be grandfathered. The law doesn't require, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Okay, please. So I have a, 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 an issue, for lack of a better word. A um, uh, representative from this firm was here in our closed caucus on the police union contract. Mm -hmm. um, this was in February. And at the time, I will we'll keep it vague because you're close, but like, I requested a certain piece of information. Mm -hmm. My recollection is he made a verbal commitment to provide that information. Did, did not do so before the vote, changed my vote for lack of getting the information. And I've since requested it, and I'd be frank, I've sent some strongly worded emails saying I want this information, and it still hasn't been returned, and it's June. And so I'd ask for the council's indulgence to delay on this until they send the information. I think it was a pretty reasonable request. I wasn't asking, it wasn't for, very I wasn't asking for anything crazy, and mm -hmm. you know, he claims that he didn't commit to it, but you know, we had a vote on Thursday. I don't know what he, like, I, I, Distinctly remember a verbal commitment, um, and you know it's June, so, so I just ask that we I, wait until we get the information. Since that contract has been ratified, I would assume the closed session uh, minutes and everything as the records are available, right? As is that accurate? Or we had, we had a closed session of the police contract. We've since ratified that, so I assume that the well, the, I mean, the, close, the the contents of the closed session are still. I mean. Yeah, the, the discussion is there. It's not public per se, but it is still it, it's still a public meeting as anything would be, uh, whether it's closed session or open session. Um, I can talk to you offline. But I don't know. I was not at that closed session. No, so. understood. I mean, and I can tell you offline when it's not yeah. public what I requested and forward you the email chain hey, so you can, can see it. I mean, my request would be that we not pass a contract for them until they provide the information. I, I didn't think I, I thought what I requested was very reasonable and. So and and, and, I, don't, I, 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 and I, don't, I don't, you know, I, we can speak to why they didn't respond. I don't know. Yeah, what is it, the various union negotiation? What is that? They, uh, in the, this firm is, the lead, they serve as lead negotiating counsel for the city um, with regard to, I don't know if it's every um, union that the city employs members of, but it's nearly all of them. And they've gotten fantastic results for us across the board as far as getting mutually agreeable contracts, public safety unions, the uh, public workers. Um, and it, it's been money very well spent um, in my regard. And um, it's like a more like a union country negotiation. Essentially, yes. yes. Exactly what it is. So it's worth to spend the three hundred seventy five thousand over the three years. And I think it, it, the, the, I'd say the financial savings they have gotten us through that expense has been, it, it would dwarf that expense. And the special increase negotiation, we can save a lot of dollars regarding the saving the health insurance. Yes. So I but we want to table this and do easy this thing. Because he was I, I'm happy to forward the Corporation okay. Council the email, but okay. if this comes up on Wednesday for vote, okay. I would ask that we not put it, we not vote okay. in favor until the information is returned. Right. No can matter. You share, can you share that with me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you'll, see, yeah. you'll see me write angry emails mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would concede that there, there, might, there might have been a reason why that is. Why that is. I mean, I, I, just for the record, I recall the exchange. I don't recall the specifics, but I recall there was a commitment to provide the information. Let's, let's move forward. Yeah. Okay, Folks. we're on 48. Well, can I get the spend down on the, all these account, these contracts uh, for, for the law? Thank you. So 47, 48. Yep. Okay. We're at 49 then. A contract renewal with Periscope Holdings. <coughs> for online bidding services. And yeah, that Bill was here. Did he cover this? I might have been out of the room. Yeah, me too. I, I was in here. He I did not recall him, but the meeting, I stepped out briefly too. But no, we, we couldn't all miss Peter. Uh, we all miss Peter. No well, way. Peter left out. He left. He yeah, I mean, he was only here till 10 o'clock. Right, he left. He didn't sit. 
he did. I'll speak to Peter and I'll send an email out to everyone. But he was here. He was here. Right. But he was here, though. He was here. He was here for four hours. Mine was in service. I don't know what that's why. We used to we use bit. We used to use BitSync. We still this is this probably BitSync. this is BitSync. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll. Uh, that's fine. I'll send every uh, everyone an email tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I think we had, just so you know, uh, Greg, at the last yeah. meeting, BitSync had been on the agenda, mm -hmm. and I think the council president had sent some questions, and I had some questions. Yeah. It was related to BitSync's ability for us to collect data to understand the diversity of bidders and, and contract winners. And the BA had said there might be some state law here, and we were just sort of asking for clarification. And then, not, and then, all right, well, obviously I was, I'll, I'll see what I can get data on, on uh, diversity of bidders and bidders. winners. Bidders and winners. I'll send you my questions. Okay. Okay. Send in the questions that we sent over to regarding this last time. Yeah. 1050, license agreement with the Katara Constructing LLC for 365 Summit Avenue. Councilman Baggiano is not with us. He, he is mentioning this, yeah. but this basically provides us parking for the municipal court. It basically sounds like we're letting them go onto the parking. We're, three, we're letting them on the property to do their construction on different property. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not about the municipal court. Okay. It's, it's real close to it. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. We're at 56. We did 51 through 55 with Joe Cunha. Uh, 56 is a contract with the Hudson County School of Technology for rental of 10 buses for recreation. This is a late item? Yes, sir. This is a late item? It is. Okay. 10.57, closed session, two weeks from today at 4.30 p.m. to discuss pending litigation. This was a, I, I, I apologize, I had a chance to speak to many of you before the meeting tonight. I didn't have a chance to grab all of you before. Uh, but this is regarding, there was another closed session that the HEDC director and I had with you a couple months ago, this is just a further update as to that project, and uh, wanted to bring the council up to speed. So great. Uh, it, it's the uh, ongoing uh, settlement negotiations and uh, with regard to litigation for a downtown development project. Okay. So great. You don't know. Thank you. We show 1055. Right? 1055. Hiring, we spent $343,000 hiring architect, something we're going to be hiring architect, something we're going to be funded for. No, 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 we're going to do this. Because as I, as I pointed out, you don't borrow all the money until you're ready to do the project. But I will do this. Um, I, I will put sorry. together a proposal, I will put together a presentation to talk about some of the other issues we talked about, which was the two firehouses. Mm -hmm. The city will right. actually save money by not proceeding on Halliday and Marina Ball. There was also a request for information on, in relation to that regarding uh, FEMA money and that um, it was committed to us and mm -hmm. provided yeah. some evidence of that, that information and some other stuff. Could I ask a question? Is there any way we can limit these ordinances? These what? Ordinances. We got 50, we have 15 this time. Ordinances? Yeah, we have to limit it. I mean, look, we, we don't have to hear if the council members want to remove anything from the agenda. You can, okay. Any council member can make a motion to remove it, and okay. uh, we can't stop it from being added to the agenda unless we change the, the rules, which we can. Okay, let's we maybe we need to have a meeting on how we can change these numbers. rules. I'm on like that, that mindset. Yeah. Apparently, there, there is no cap, so. So we can have. I defer to the law department. Okay, so. Wait, we're not done. Okay. Could you see what lane? Could you see now? And then just think of public hearing. How long are we gonna be here? Well, that's why we're gonna put 
the Airbnb on another night, yeah. and you guys will chat amongst yourselves, talk to Marlene about that. It has to be at least, let's say, at least two weeks from Wednesday. Does it or ten days? Well, it has to be within. T yeah. yeah, we. I don't think we'd want to jump the gun and do it on a Monday night. No, I agree. So. No, no, no. It's just saying. You're not my boss. This guy was your boss. We were talking. But I just think we need to figure out a bit more. Okay, we're moving on. Yeah, we do. We have. Do you get a motion to adjourn? Not yet, sir. Uh, we have fifth. I know. Uh, a big controversy here. Services agreement to uh, Carol Lester. We paid a claim at the last meeting to make to try to make her whole. This is to continue our services moving forward. Okay. Uh, it's still today. It's still today at 11:56. That's it. We got uh, I have Councilwoman Prince Airy. Councilman, I think I have to hear the first. Who made the first? Okay. To adjourn by all in attendance. Thank you, Councilman Bajiano Absent. See you. In a, see you tomorrow in about three minutes. Bye.